What's up, guys? It's yo boy on the sensei back with, reborn as Tabarama's student with World of Warcraft system. Full movie. This is a remastered version of the Isekate into Naruto with World of Warcraft series. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. My name, my name how many stories start like that oh well, my name is or was Aaron. I was a programmer working for the government, and I died because of it, the how or why, I don't know, but I guess that's beyond the point, I died, and that is the end of the story or so I thought. After being shot in the head, I expected well, nothingness, I expected my life and consciousness to fade, but alas I was wrong. I remained, my mind remained, and for a while, all I could do was wonder where I was going next. Surprisingly this question was answered rather quickly, though not in the manner I or anyone would expect. Analyzing. Status. Dead updating. Welcome to the Resurrection Atlas, the state of the art in resurrection affairs. You are a very lucky individual, for you have been selected to have a second chance in life. Befuddlement was one of the many emotions I felt, I mean, how the hell was I supposed to react? Well, church or other people describe dying. So I kind of expected little angels guiding me to heaven or hell, preferably heaven, not this. You must be confused. So allow me to explain. Thanks for the resurrection atlas you. You will be resurrected in a new world, or perhaps even reality. Why? Well, every few billion years, the atlas selects one individual to enjoy once again the wonderful journey organic beings call life. I was speechless, what was I supposed to say or do could I even talk without a body, I so I can talk, should have tried that earlier, I muttered, so I get to live again? Precisely. Now. Onto the world selection. Please know the atlas doesn't select anything for you, nor will you. Instead, it lets a random algorithm select the world you will be placed in. Now wait a moment while our computer processes this request was I excited I was getting a second chance? I wasn't really sure, in fact, I wasn't even sad I died was that normal? Or it was something dead people felt you have been selected to be reincarnated in the world of Terra X 12679DN, also known as the Shinobi world, better known as the world of Naruto. Oh, then I choose death, I chuckled, there was no way I was going to fight fire-breathing assholes or coexist with them. Plus it was a world with a frankly frankly low mortality rate, where one had literally written actual books on the many, many creative ways a person could die. Your compliance isn't a factor. But don't worry. Here in Atlas, we know some worlds can raise some concerns and make sure you have all the tools you need to grow and be safe. My compliance it's not a fucking great. So what then? We have analyzed your life and, based on the information we have acquired, given you the power to overcome the challenges this world might throw at you. That doesn't exactly explain anything. I cited the almost comically vague description. Sounded like something off a lame motivational poster. My apologies. Allow me to explain. Based on your life, you dedicated a massive amount of time to online games, especially the one known as World of Warcraft. Thus, Atlas has given you something akin to a game system to acquire the powers and skills from that game. Please note this system is not an AI, but a mere insert of the World of Warcraft system into your soul, giving you the ability to do what everyone in the World of Warcraft can do. I suppose that's better than being thrown into the fray without knowing what to do, also, on another note, I'm a bit ashamed a fourth dimensional being knows I played video games most of my life, so what now I didn't get to finish my sentence, because, in the blink of an eye, I wasn't dead anymore. I mean, there was no transition, teleportation, flash of light or even some kind of segue. 
One moment I was speaking with what might as well be God, and the next I was standing in the middle of a big room with dozens of beds. Well that was trippy, I muttered to myself, immediately noticing my voice being different. First and last message. You have been reincarnated into the world known simply as Naruto. Also known as the world of Shinobi. Also known as Terra X 12679 DN, thanks to Atlas. Now before you go to explore this fabulous world, we need to clarify some points. Here in Atlas. We know how hard and embarrassing it is for a sentient adult to be back in their baby stage, so we conveniently help our customers skip that part, hence why you are currently 5 years old. Through countless testing we've deduced this is the optimal age to adapt and learn about your environment. So that is probably why you are now wondering things like why is my voice different? Why is my hand smaller? Why is my dick so small? And more. Now with that little question out of the way, onto the next. Here in Atlas, we know how hard it is to fit in and replace loved ones once you die, so once again, we have conveniently helped. Making you our customer an orphan. No family, no need to explain or replace loved ones. Last but not least. The power we have given you is like everything made in Atlas, the best of the best. Why did we give you this power? Well, Based on your life and the amount of time you gave this game, our computers calculated you would be more comfortable with something you are already familiar with. As for the power it is a bit different from what you remember. There are no class limitations, you have access to all the skills in the game, though you'll need the proper level to access them. In simpler terms it means you are a warlock, warrior, mage, priest, paladin, monk, demon hunter, death knight, hunter, rogue, druid and shaman at the same time. Now with all of this said. Enjoy. Needless to say, I was once again, speechless, well, at least I don't have to be a baby, I chuckled, taking a deep breath as I let the situation sink in. Though, if I was being honest, internally I was jumping and cheering like a proper five-year-old on his first sugar rush. After two hours where I totally didn't cry over my situation, I accepted I had no other choice and started playing with the World of Warcraft user interface I had embedded in my brain. Just like the Atlas thing had said, I had all the starting skills for each class, talk about versatility. With the exclusion of two classes, the Demon Hunter and the Death Knight, possibly because in World of Warcraft, they start at a higher level than all the other classes. Though not a huge loss, still more than enough to work with. I also noticed my name wasn't well, my name anymore. Now the obvious solution would be to simply change that only when I tried to remember my name, I just came up with a blank. Part of me wanted to consider that disconcerting, but also new identity so new name made sense. Plus it seemed like Atlas was a fan of Metal Gear since my new name, according to my embedded user interface was, Raiden no surname because, you know orphan. Looks like Atlas is a fan of irony. Go figure. Looking things over further, I also noticed I had an odd patch of knowledge in my head I didn't have before. For example, I knew where I was, who the matron of the orphanage was, who the current hokage was, and how to navigate the village. It was strange knowing something you didn't know a few seconds ago, but welcomed considering my situation. Plus it's not like the actual Naruto series provided any of that information. Time to explore. That came with less enthusiasm than I wanted, though it didn't seem I attracted any attention either. I think it was high noon in Kanoha when I decided to finally explore the not-so-fictional place that I had been shoved in. The streets were busy, booming with people and ninja alike. It was shocking, to say the least, not that the streets were busy, that was to be expected, but that it felt so real. I think up to that point I was waiting for all of this to feel like a dream, or a video game, not like this. However, as the all-powerful being or PC, had said, I had no other choice, but to make the best out of it. All right, I muttered under my breath, you can do this, I mean how hard can it be? Eno and Sakura, the definition of useless, survived this world, if they can, anyone can. At this moment was when I realized I wasn't on the timeline I originally supposed I was. 
When I was sent here, basic information about my surroundings was burned into my brain. Now in my panic, I overlooked some of the information, but as soon as I said Eno and Sakura, my brain cordially reminded me, they were yet to be born, heck, even their parents weren't around yet well the good side of this, is that every second of my current existence is a gift, I chuckled under my breath, I had already died, this was supposed to be a gift. Okay so if my info is correct, then Tabarama Senju is the Hokage. Okay, while that at least gave me a timeline to work with that also meant war was on the horizon probably. Truth is I only watched about half of Shippuden, and I barely remembered a quarter of that. Not like I was exactly a super fan or anything. With trepidation and a greater sense of fear, I swallowed my uncertainty and continued to explore the place where I had been sent. It was big, granted I was essentially a preschooler, so everything looked big by default. Thankfully it was also pretty quiet as there didn't seem to be anyone around at the moment, the only source of noise being people outside. I was thankful for the peace since it gave me some more time to collect my thoughts. And that left me with one single question. What did I want? What would I do now in this world? Did I want to be a ninja? Risking my life in the field, or did I want to be a civilian, avoiding unnecessary danger? On one hand, if I became a ninja, I'd most likely get crazy strong, thanks to my boon on top of all the cool ninja stuff I could learn. Though that would also mean risking my life constantly and essentially agreeing to become a soldier. So guess it came down to whether I wanted cool ninja powers or chose a safe quiet life as an everyday person. Haha, <laughs> that's a stupid question, I don't have much of a choice, I muttered, walking past the Kanoha market. Sure on paper being a civilian seemed logical, since I wouldn't be sent on life or death missions and likely avoid a lot of conflict. However, one thing I did remember about Naruto was the world was pretty much in perpetual war, this era especially. Meaning it was very likely for civilians to be attacked or simply caught in the crossfire. So, unless I had some level of strength to protect myself, any peaceful civilian life I'd have would likely be very brief. So ultimately, there really was no choice. In this world it was either get strong or die. Now the question was, how to enroll in the academy. According to the embedded memories I was a civilian orphan, meaning I lacked both the means and knowledge on how to enroll in the academy. Meh, I'll just ask the first ninja I see, I sighed, as my eyes caught a ninja buying some fruit from the market, well, that was easy, excuse me, sir, I said, tugging his shirt with no care for the possible anger it might invoke. I was a kid, and I was going to exploit the powers that came with it. I have a question. The yet-to-be-named ninja looked at me and smiled. Sure, kiddo, what's the question? He inquired, ruffling my hair as one would expect. How do I enroll in the academy? I asked the guy, who blinked in surprise for a brief moment. Are you sure you want to enroll? No, I am not, but in a world where Voldemort is attracted to kids, one has to learn how to fight. Granted that particular snake in the grass was likely still in diapers right now, but he was hardly the only threat out there. Yes, I nodded, giving him a fake eager smile and playing up my childish innocence. Very well, the ninja chuckled. All you have to do is walk to the academy, ask to be tested, and if you pass then you'll be enrolled. It's as easy as that. Huh, I always thought kids needed an adult to sign something, a permission of sorts, or at least pay some kind of entrance fee. I guess kids here can become killers without adult supervision, neat world. Thanks sir. With the information I had acquired I headed towards the academy, which by the way, was like 10 miles away from the fucking market. Which was obviously even more of a challenge when you have stubby kitty legs. Still, I took the time to get accustomed to the place. Probably most important was having memories that didn't belong to me in my brain and making those memories mine, which was what I was doing. Another, slightly more interesting time waster was checking my skill list. Once again, to get a better feeling and understanding of what I had and how powerful I was. I had played World of Warcraft all my life, it was the one game that stuck with me, and now I had powers from that world, powers I needed to get accustomed to. In an entirely different level, skills, I muttered to myself, 
and in front of me the World of Warcraft user interface appeared showing me the skills I had so far. Great in skill list slam level 1 equals slams an opponent, with or without weapon, causing 35% of strength, physical damage. 0 sec cooldown cost. 20 rage melee range instant cast. Crusader Strike level 1 equals strike the target for 76.5% of strength, physical damage. Generates 1 holy power. 4.5 sec cooldown cost. 3% of chakra melee range instant cast. Steady shot level 1 equals a steady shot that causes 60% of agility, physical damage. 1.75 sec cast 0 sec cooldown no cost range. 40 yards. Sinister Strike Level 1 equals Viciously Strike an Enemy, causing 21.762% of Agility, Physical Damage. 0 Sec Cooldown Cost. 45 Energy Melee Range Instant Cast. Smite Level 1 equals Smites an Enemy for 47% of Intelligence, Holy Damage. 1.5 Sec Cast 0 Sec Cooldown Cost. 0.2% of Chakra Range. 40 Yards. Lightning Bolt Level 1 equals hurls a bolt of lightning at the target, dealing 95% of intelligence, nature damage. 2.5 sec cast 0 sec cooldown cost. 1% of chakra range. 40 yards. Frost Bolt Level 1 equals launches a bolt of frost at the enemy, causing 51.1% of intelligence, frost damage, and slowing movement speed by 50% for 8 sec. 2 sec cast 0 sec cooldown cost. 2% of chakra range. 40 yards. Shadow bolt level 1 equals sends a shadowy bolt at the enemy, causing 39% of intelligence, shadow damage. 2 sec cast 0 sec cooldown cost. 2% of chakra range. 40 yards. Tiger palm level 1 equals strike with the palm of your hand, dealing 27.027% of agility physical damage. 0 sec cooldown cost. 50 energy melee range instant cast. Well, that was a vast array of attacks and energy bars I need to keep track of. Fury, I wonder how does that work in this world, I mumbled, going over my warrior skill stats. Name equals rate and level equals 1 HP. 600 out of 600 chakra. 960 out of 960 energy. 400 out of 400 fury. 0 out of 200 experience equals 0 out of 250. Stats intelligence equals 30. Strength equals 30. Agility equals 30. Stamina equals 30. That's good, I suppose, I don't have much to compare it to, but I suppose it will do. Welcome to the academy, I read the sign outside the school. Here goes nothing, as I entered the academy, I noticed a bunch of kids running around, some sitting, others fighting, and very few, reading. Hello there, someone greeted me, startling the heck out of me. Someone should put bells on these ninjas oh right that's not until Kakashi. Hello, I greeted, trying to act cool and play off my sudden jolt. I am here to enroll in the academy, I told the speaker who immediately looked a bit confused and also disappointed with my response. Hate to tell you this, kid, but the enrollment period ended a month ago. So I walked 10 miles for nothing, it's like college all over again. Sighing loudly enough to be heard by any passerby I turned to leave when the ninja I was speaking to touched my shoulder and looked at me with a smile. Probably should mention this, we don't turn away eager kids, he said with an even more glowing smile that reminded me all too well of an army recruiter ad. Eager future assassins, you mean. Obviously, I kept that thought to myself and put on an eager smile. Really? Of course. So how about we go inside and test your levels? If you're good enough, you might get in, even though it is quite late. Yeah, somehow I'm pretty confident in my chances. Thanks sir. Despite what the anime would have you believe, the test was surprisingly easy. They measured my chakra with a scroll, then made me run through an obstacle course and finally take a written test. I was a bit nervous about that last part, but thankfully the implanted knowledge helped clear that last hurdle. Honestly, though, throughout the whole affair I was a little surprised. The whole thing felt so mundane, but I won't complain. 
plus, I am only 5, so it's not like there was a whole lot I could do anyway. Congratulations, you passed. As of today, you are now a part of class A. The ninja who had tested me said, and I wasn't really sure why, but I felt class A was different from other classes. When I passed the test, I assumed they were going to let me go, you know, give me some time to get my affairs in order, alas I was outstandingly wrong. As soon as I passed the test, the ninja dragged me to my classroom. Like he gave me no time to process shit, it was a test, and then class, again just like college class, we have a new student today I know he's starting late, but his tests show he is more than ready to be in the class. What that hell did those test shows, I did nothing out of the ordinary, and that is coming from me, a guy whose life prior to this was sedentary as fuck. Now, go ahead and introduce yourself to the class, the teacher ordered, with a tone of finality. My name is Raiden, I have no last name, and I like reading books. This is what happens when you don't give a man type to prepare before shoving him to class. An awkward introduction followed by an equally awkward silence. Outstanding first day. Perfect, now Raiden, take a seat beside Jureya, we are about to start the class. And right when I heard that name, I immediately had a revelation. Oh I knew there was a reason I felt this class meant trouble, yeah, all too ready to start my first day of ninja school, I immediately took my seat, immediately earning the attention of my white-haired neighbor. Said future Sanon seemed excited by the company. Hey, wanna see something cool? Knowing the character from the show, I fully expected him to show me something like an erotic drawing, or something along those lines. Then I remember he's around the same age as me, namely 5, so I highly doubted he'd be a massive horn dog even this early on. Surprisingly, it seemed my thoughts were confirmed when instead of something perverted like a pair of panties or a porn book, he instead pulled out what appeared to be some kind of comic. The pint-sized future pervert immediately flipped the pages in the book to reveal the image of some kind of female barbarian, clad in a fur jacket and shirt which showed off her rather full and muscular physique. Jurea's eyes focused solely on the woman's image seemingly entranced despite the fact that except for the woman having a slightly noticeable bust, she was otherwise completely clothed. Huh, so you're really into this book I take it? My voice managed to snap the looking ninja out of his brief pause, nodding in acknowledgement of the question. Kind of, the story isn't anything to write home about, but the art is awesome. Especially this picture, there's something about it that makes me want to look at it for hours. Can't figure out why though. Wait a few years for your hormones to kick in, you'll get it then. I thought but didn't vocalize. Always kind of funny how something seemingly so innocent would eventually lead to a life of debauchery. Well, well. Look who's still got his face stuck in those crappy comics. I don't see how you can enjoy that garbage. Both mine and Jureya's eyes immediately shot up at the sound of a rather snide and rude female voice, Jureya in particular looking especially annoyed, having likely expected such a thing. Shows what you know. You're just jealous that the characters in these books are way better girls than you'll ever be, you flat-faced ogre. Jureya's insult earned an immediate roar of anger from their insulter, a short girl with amber eyes and light blonde hair. Ironically enough her rage-fueled face actually helped her match Jureya's description of her. Though that was clearly not an especially good thing, given she was stomping over to the pair with murder in her eyes. What did you say to me, you dumb toad? How about I shove your face into that book, give you a real nice close-up look? Thankfully, before a fight could break out, the rather angry blonde finally noticed me. Oh, hey there. Names Tsunade send you, and word to the wise, stay away from this weirdo. She pointed at the visibly offended future sage. He's going to be trouble in the future, mark my words on that. Well, I didn't sit here because I wanted to, I replied, eyeing the teacher who was patiently waiting for us to finish our conversation, while also sweating mentally at the fact that Sanon, famous for her short temper and violent attitude, was standing right in front of me. True, Tsunade sighed, going back to her seat, thankfully not aiming to start a fight. Thank you for returning back to your seat, Tsunade the teacher sighed, I will have a talk with your great uncle after class. 
Please try to refrain from any more arguments for the moment. Despite the situation it was a fairly enjoyable situation to watch when considering who these two children would eventually become. Then again, I guess you could say that about any famous figure. Now, back to class, the teacher side, going back to the board. To start things off we have a new student with us today, Raiden. I expect all of you to treat him properly. Immediately all eyes were on me, making me wish I knew the replacement technique to avoid all the eyes. Thankfully the sound of the teacher writing on the chalkboard gained everyone's attention. Now then, for today we are going to learn how the village was founded, and how that impacted the political tides of other nations. Quest acquired. So you entered the academy answer 3 question in class. 0 out of 3 questions answered. Description. So you entered the academy, eh? Well, good for you, it's the start of a new journey adventurer, now it's time to show your genius, answer the questions your teacher will ask about Kanoha, and show the class you are the bee's knees. You will receive Drine racial traits, racial traits quest line. You will also receive 400 XP and 500 Ryo alright, who here knows who founded the village? The teacher asked, and the entire class raised their hands, except me. I was too occupied reading the quest. Unfortunately as over a decade of school has taught me, not raising your hand in class is essentially the equivalent to putting a massive bullseye above your head. Raiden, are you paying attention? I am, I was not, but I was hoping maybe I could bullshit my way out. Then answer the question, if you don't mind, the teacher said with a smile, and what a condescending smile it was. It was one that said, I know you weren't paying attention, and now you're gonna pay for it. Well Naruto wiki, don't fail me now. Well, I guess that question has two answers. Or one, the main ones responsible behind the founding of the village were Senju Hashirama, the first Hokage, and Ichiha Madara. Though if you want to be more specific with who it was, it was both the Senju clan and the Achiha clan founded the village, not just their leaders. One out of three questions answered. Very good, the teacher nodded, with a satisfied smile. Now, can you tell me how many chakra natures there are? So still asking me? Can't say I'm a fan of the attention, but this one is way easier. There are five in total. They are earth, fire, wind, water, and lightning, I answered, with a smirk, happy to get another over on the teacher. Two-thirds questions answered. Good, the teacher nodded, looking just a little less smug. Now. Who here knows what chakra nature the first Hokage had? All of them? I answered, not entirely sure of my answer. Three-thirds questions answered. Quest completed. Level up. Drina racial traits unlocked. Racial traits quest line unlocked. New skills have been added to your skill book. After the little starting interrogation, classes were pretty normal, there was history, language, math and geography. Granted you normally don't start learning this kind of thing until middle school, but a different world, a different system. Really the most unusual thing was the Tajutsu class. While we weren't learning anything crazy like what might guy might pull off, it was basic hand-to-hand -hand training. And sadly for my classmates, I decided to use the time to practice my warrior skills to essentially slam my opponent all over the ground. Turns out the class proved useful in yielding some new information. Every time I introduced my opponent to the ground my display read out 12 p or 12 points of damage. Yep, turns out the world really had become one big video game, health bars included, which seemed to be about 100 p per the average student. Suddenly this felt less like Naruto and more like Pokemon. That isn't to say I was complaining about this I mean, World of Warcraft had that feature, and surprise surprise, I could, and surprisingly my horsepower was higher than most in the class, except for Tsunade Senju, and the all too familiar pale face of Arachimaru. Turns out, Tsunade had a whooping 1200 HP, and Arachimaru had 900 HP, after that, I was the one with the biggest health pool, followed by Jiraiya of course. Bigger surprise, besides their HP and chakra bars, I could also see their levels. Granted everyone was still pretty low level with Jiraiya being 4, Tsunade 7, and Arachimaru 8, while everyone else in the class was between level 1 and 2. 
If nothing else gave me a nice little measuring stick to work towards. Still though, I had so much to learn about the user interface in my brain that I had no idea where to begin. Thankfully, I'd have some time to figure it out since class was ending. Well that's all for today's class. Remember to be here tomorrow before 6 o'clock. And with that, my first day of ninja school ended. Hooray. When I arrived back at the orphanage, the matron of the place had already been informed of my situation and that I was going to be attending the academy from now on. It was quite a proactive move from the school, needless to say, though the matron simply brushed it off, said she had no say in shinobi business. It was for the best I suppose, less questions and less hassle. It also helped, I was given a private room. Turns out that's actually a pretty common practice, since academy students are given weapons, poisons and other things to practice, things that should not be within reach of civilian kids. Granted I'd only get to keep the room until my graduation, after which I would have to rent my own shit, according to the matron. Thankfully I literally had about a decade before I had to worry about that so for now, I had my own private workspace to practice and develop my new skills. Well, looks like things are getting better for dear old Raiden. Now let's see what skills I got. Truth was, despite the somewhat cocky attitude, I was a bit worried. With how many abilities there were in World of Warcraft, I figured I'd lose track of the skills I was getting. If I recall correctly, all classes would get one skill per level, meaning I would have tons of skills until level 10. Skills. I muttered, going over whatever new abilities I had. I will create a doc will the list of all the skills he has charge level 1 equals charge to an enemy, dealing, 11.466% of strength, physical damage, rooting it for 1 sec. 20 sec cooldown no cost range. 0 25 yards instant cast. Shield of the righteous level 1 equals slams enemies in front of you with a shield made out of chakra, causing, 42.5% of strength, holy damage. 1 sec cooldown cost. 3 holy power melee range instant cast. Arcane shot level 1 equals a quick shot that causes, 57% of agility, arcane damage. 0 sec cooldown cost. 40 energy range. 40 yards. Instant cast. Eviscerate level 1 equals finishing move, 1 point. 17.6% of agility, 1 damage 2 points. 17.6% of agility, 2 damage 3 points. 17.6% of agility, 3 damage 4 points. 17.6% of agility, 4 damage 5 points. 17.6% of agility, 5 damage 0 sec cooldown no cost melee range instant cast. Shadow word? Pain level 1 equals a word of darkness that causes 12.92% of intelligence, shadow damage instantly, and an additional 57.528% of intelligence, shadow damage over 12 sec. 0 sec cooldown 0.3% of chakra range. 40 yards instant cast. Primal strike level 1 equals an instant weapon strike that causes 34% of strength, physical damage. 12 sec cooldown 9.4% of chakra melee range instant cast. Fire blast level 1 equals blasts the enemy for 79.2% of intelligence, fire damage. 12 sec cooldown 1% of chakra range. 40 yards instant cast. Corruption level 1 equals corrupts the target, causing 12% of spell intelligence, shadow damage, and an additional 78.75% of intelligence, shadow damage over 14 sec. No cooldown 1% of chakra range. 40 yards, 2 sec cast. Blackout kick level 1 equals kick with a blast of energy, dealing 84.7% of agility, physical damage. 3 sec cooldown cost. 3 energy melee range instant cast. Moonfire level 1 equals a quick beam of lunar light burns the enemy for 20% of intelligence, arcane damage, and then an additional 104.4% of intelligence, arcane damage over 12 sec. No cooldown 9% of chakra range. 40 yards instant cast. Racial traits drain a traits gift of the Naru. 
Heals the target for 20% of the caster's total health over 5 sec. Heroic Presence Passive. Increases your strength, agility, and intellect by 10% gem cutting passive. Jewel Crafting Skill Increased by 10. Shadow Resistance Passive. Reduces shadow damage taken by 1%. Well, that's a lot of shit to work with, I might need to make a journal or something to keep track of them all. Now let's see how much my stats increased. Stats. Name. Rate in level 2. HP. 680 680ths. Chakra. 1197 out of 1197. Energy. 400 out of 400. Fury. 0 out of 200. Experience equals 150 out of 655. Stats. Intelligence equals 37. Strength equals 37. Stamina equals 34. Well shit, that a nice increase, I chuckled, perhaps this power would be enough to keep me out of trouble. Still paid to be cautious since I didn't know too much about this particular era. Now, let's check how can I unlock the other racial traits, opening my quest menu. I immediately noticed I had actually 22 individual quests, one for each race, and had their respective traits listed. Fuck. That was going to take a while to finish, and some were worth the time more than others. Well I suppose the question now, is which one of these babies, I want to do first, after a long process of deliberation. I opted to take the gnome trait quest, gnome worry, be happy, why did I pick that out of all the other possible skills and quests? Well, in a world where everyone can basically stun or trap you, either physically or with Jinjutsu, then having the active trade escape artist would pretty much be a divine blessing. The quest itself actually didn't seem too difficult. I had to help at least 20 people with their technological problems, things like fixing their radios assuming they even had radios. Naruto was always very weird about what kind of technology they had. Computers and phones weren't a thing, but TVs, radios and AC were? It was complete madness. Regardless, all I needed to do was help 20 or so people, the only catch being it had to be completely free. Really should be simple enough. And as it turned out, there were more than a few people in need of some tech support around the orphanage. Nothing too crazy, a few clocks, some light fixtures, along with one or two toys. By the time I was done I'd managed to help around 8 people, which was when my display decided to chime in. No worry, be happy fix 20 gadgets, be it a chair or a gun, everything it's a gadget in the hands of a gnome 820 20th's gadgets fixed. Description. So you want to be a gnome well, show us you have the genius needed to be part of our people. Help the citizens with your high intellect. You will receive. Gnome racial traits. You will also receive. 500 XP and 500 Ryo part of me wanted to keep going until I was at least halfway done, but a quick glance outside showing night had already fallen, plus my rumbling stomach stopped me in my tracks. Right, still a 5 year old, meaning I've still got the constitution of one. Ah, the joys of biology, until I aged up a bit there was only so much energy I could expand before my still weak body gave out on me. So for now, I just need to pace myself. A, hey, no big deal, I can work on it tomorrow after class. After all, I've got plenty of time. For weeks, I continued doing the trait quests I had been giving while attending the academy, mostly because no other quest had appeared since day one, and in the process had leveled up to level three, all while little by little, I had come to accept my bizarre situation in this new world, taking it with a grain of salt, of course. In class, none of the kids really stood up or were even worth mentioning, their names didn't ring any bells, or anything for that matter, with the exception of the big three, Arachimaru, Tsunade and Jiraiya. As for the academy itself, the classes were becoming gradually more and more difficult, each week a student or two would just not come back to class, probably meaning they had been dropped from the academy altogether, and how could they not, Classes were becoming ridiculously hard to pass, war tactics, tojutsu classes, ninjutsu classes, interrogation classes. Pain management where they basically tortured you and taught you how to handle pain, emotion control, jinjutsu theory, jinjutsu application, 
and more those were just a few of the classes I was seeing now, and when I started the curriculum was that of a normal school, that lasted for about a week, heck, I already knew how to walk in walls and water, that's how hard the training was. Arachimaru was at the top of the class, with his grades being outstandingly good in every subject, everything the teacher said he would take it and learn it with such ease that scared me, especially knowing what he would become in the distant future. Tsunade was like Arachimaru, but to a lesser extent, a genius in her own ways. She would understand all subjects with relative ease, but would struggle every now and then, putting her in second place in the class. Then there was me, the third best student of the class, surprisingly, not gonna lie I didn't expect to be in the rankings at all, heck I fully expected to be dead last, the subjects were legitimately hard, and because of that, I would be forced to read and research for hours to no end just to pass. There was no way Naruto had any of these courses no way in hell they had to deal with any of this. This brings up the question, how the hell was Jiraiya still in class, he was the dead last of the class, having the worst grades, and no because he was mentally disabled like Naruto, the kid by no means was stupid. He simply preferred to spend his time doing things, yet he was still here, perhaps they were kicking those that they considered had no talent for the shinobi career, instead of those with bad grades. As for my quests, I had only finished two trait quests, the gnome one that I had already started a while ago, and the human one, and was currently doing the troll racial quest, which was hunting 100 chakra rats yep chakra rats were a thing, a terrifying thing, a nightmare provoking thing they were as big as a cat, and as fast as air at on coke, but no natural abomination would stop me. Raiden, Tsunade approached me, wanna spar? Something that had surprised me was how friendly Tsunade was, I mean with Jiraiya she was the same as she was in the show, but without the pervert in the picture, she was very chill and quite helpful when I didn't understand a subject. Sure, I nodded, sparing was a good way to burn time during recess, and it was like a repetitive quest, it didn't give me much exp, but anything it's better than nothing, and it was good practice. And talking about exp, because I was level 3, I was able to summon an imp, which I did the little guy was confused and burned my bed in his confusion, but like in Warcraft, he obeyed my commands without a question, I initially tested his obedience with small orders, like fetch this, do that wait here, and as expected he did everything, then I upped my commands. And asked him to kill himself, and the little imp didn't even question my order, and would have carried it out if it wasn't because I stopped him. I also learned I can command my pets or summons mentally, which was cool, I didn't want to be the first Pokemon master here. Ready? Tsunade asked, and I nodded. After a long day of class, and a long recess where Tsunade almost fractured my skull thank god I can heal myself I went back to what I was doing before, hunting rats that for some reason had chakra, Remy I know you want to cook me some ratatouille come out, I will let you get on my head and puppet me, without a single care for any health regulatai on, I I like to goof around. Especially when hunting sometimes I'm lucky if I find one rat, so I do stupid shit to burn the time. As I continued to walk, I heard a loud squeak, followed by a dozen or more mini squeaks taking a deep breath, I followed the sound, which led me to a rat's nest, where many rats had given birth, ah, they are cute it would be morally questionable to kill newborns, it would. But I have a quest, and that overrules cuteness and whatever moral hang up I have, so time to burn, babies. And burn they did, all thanks to fire blast a spell strong enough to kill over 50 newborn rats in a single hit. It took me a while, but in the end, I had managed to finish my quest. The hard part was to kill the angry rat mothers that seemed to be angry at me barbecuing her babies, but all's well that ends well, and I got my troll racial traits. Meaning I now regenerated HP faster than ever, which was my goal, I wanted to be as unkillable as possible. Now, which one should I get next? I hummed as I opened the quest tab. The Zandalari troll looked like a hefty bounty, their traits were quite good you want to be one of us brotha? Then show us what you got. And kill them rats brotha. 0 out of 200 chakra rats killed. Description. So you want to be part of the tribe, eh? Well, good for you.
But first you must prove yourself, kill them rats, and show us why you got. You will receive. Zandalari troll traits. You will also receive. 600 XP and 500 Ryo fuck after a few minutes to gather my shit, after finding out I would still have to hunt more fucking rats, I decided to check on my stats, to see if the quest I was about to embark on would level me up, stats, name, rate in level 3, HP, 760 of 760, chakra, 1344 of 1344, energy, 400 of 400, Fury. 89 of 100. Experience equals 817 of 1265. Stats intelligence equals 42. Strength equals 42. Agility equals 42. Stamina equals 38. I inwardly chuckled at the sight of my fury. It had probably gone up because of my unyielding rage at the quest. All right time to practice with my spells. Should I call them spells they use chakra? Jutsus, time to practice with my Jutsus before leaving on the quest, as I trained my skills, I focused on seeing which ones would be useful for me, and which ones I was going to never use, for example, primal strike from the shaman tree was not good, a single use would take out 10% of my chakra, and the result was less than desirable, the attack dealt almost no damage. Compared to my other powers that is, and the cost to use it, was rather high, meaning it was very useless. Next morning, after killing 100 fucking rats, I trotted to the academy, wondering what kind of academical torture I was going to battle today. On the way, I found Tsunade waiting for me at the edge of the Senju bridge, I mean, at least I assumed that, cause she smiled when she saw me coming, Tsunade, hey, I waved at her, stopping at the edge of the bridge. Ready for the graduation exam? Say what now? I looked at her, perplexed at what she had said, Tsunade, I just started the academy, the exams for the graduation class it's in two weeks, but anyone can take it, and all we need to learn it's the three basic jutsus, to pass Tsunade grinned, I already know them, and I can teach you, why would I want to graduate early though? I mean seriously, why would I want to start doing ninja shit before it was intended? Come on, we are the best in the class, even the perverted freak of Jiraiya will take the test well, without counting Orochimaru, yes we were the best. I suppose, but you would still have to teach me three jutsus we haven't covered in two weeks, I rolled my eyes, I don't think you can. So, and here right here, that was my mistake, challenging Tsunade. 120 rats later, after finishing the Zandler troll trait quest and surviving two weeks of torture with Tsunade, I was ready to take the exam, but the mental scars the five-year-old girl had delivered upon me were too big, I fear the poor soul you have to teach in the future, I shuddered, and Tsunade giggled. I told you I could teach you the three academy jutsu in under two weeks, Tsunade puffed her chest with pride. So you too also, want to take the exam, the teacher sighed, it seemed Arachimaru and Jiraiya had already taken the exam, intriguing. Quest acquired. Graduate early. Do the three academy jutsus without failing. Zero three academy jutsus completed. So you want to be a full-fledged ninja of Konoha, eh? Well, prove you have the skills to deliver and show us what you got. You will receive 10,000 XP. 10,000 Ryo bonus objective. Ace the written test reward. Unknown, 5,000 XP that was a tasty reward, heck it would level me up a few levels, yes we are, maybe graduating wasn't so bad, I mean Jen and don't do anything dangerous, so there is that. Level 4 experience equals 54 2085 alright, follow me, the teacher instructed us, and we followed him to an empty classroom, now, the graduation test is both a practical and written test. First you will answer the written test that counts for 30% of your grade and then the practical test that counts for 70% of your graduation grade. It took me two hours to finish the written test and I honestly think I aced the motherfucker. reading was actually paying off, but I might be overselling my own genius, I might have calculated so stuff incorrectly, either way I passed that one. Very good Raiden, you scored a 87%, the teacher congratulated me, well I guess there goes the bonus objective, as always Tsunade, you got a 100%, easy.
Tsunade grinned. Easy, I mocked under my breath. Now the practical part, the teacher chuckled, Raiden, please perform a clone jutsu, on it, I did as I was told, creating a clone. One third academy jutsu completed sup, the clone waved. Good, the teacher nodded, marking something on a piece of paper he was holding, now, please demonstrate a body replacement technique, can I do it with anything? R I asked. Sure, as long as the technique is done properly, I don't mind, the teacher nodded, well that was easy enough. Taking a deep breath, I did as I was told, switched with a block of wood, Tata, I chuckled. Two thirds academy jutsu completed, very good, the teacher smiled, now, please perform the transformation technique, easy enough, I transformed into Tsunade with a poof of smoke, where is Jiraiya? For some reason I want to beat him up, I chuckled, using Tsunade's voice. Three thirds academy jutsu completed bonus objective completed. Level up. Level up. Level up. Haha, <laughs> Tsunade snorted. Alright, the teacher, who had been also laughing at my Tsunade impression smiled, you pass, he said, giving me the famous Kanoha headband, before he turned to Tsunade, now your turn Tsunade, graduation came with its perks, but it also came with its downs, and the downs were massive, for as soon as I graduated. New information about the political situation of the village was made known to me. Before becoming a genin, classes about that were more to the point, avoiding most sensitive areas, but now that I was a genin, I was technically part of the village military, meaning they had to let us know more about things. What were those things? Well, the village was at the brink of war, with basically everyone, which is why the second Hokage was out of the village most of the time, he was trying to stop the war before it began, or rather before it began affecting Kanoha. And here I was recently graduated, I should have ignored Tsunade, they don't send academy students to war, your sensei will arrive in few with your teammates, to say I was stressed, was to say Naruto was kinda stupid, I was overwhelmed, I was not ready for war, maybe I would in a few years, but not now relax Raiden, for all you know you won't be sent to war heck the war hasn't even started. So stop freaking out, Raiden. I turned around to see a level 25 Jounin, standing behind me, I'll be your teacher, the name is Akimichi Tarifu, he wasn't as fat as I imagined the Akimichis to be, he was still fat though, follow me, Tarifu Akimichi level 25 nodding, I followed my sensei through the roofs of Konoha to one of its many training grounds. Introduce yourself to your teammates kid, sitting on a bench, there were two prepubescent kids, around 12 years old each, Karu Sugo level 4 Amirikai level 4 well, things were already looking bad for me, how the fuck was I the strongest kid in the team? My name is Raiden, no last name should probably fix that. It feels a bit depressing saying that every time I introduce myself anyway, a pleasure to meet you too, he's a baby, Kuro sighed, how can we be a team, if we have to babysit? Excuse me bitch. He graduated early, he is obviously a prodigy, Ami defended, and just liked that she was my favorite person in the team. He is, Tarifu nodded, now, you will all spar I want to see what I'm working with, Kuro, how about you fight Raiden, with pleasure, Kuro smirked confidently. Cool, cool. None of you introduced yourselves, but that doesn't matter I chuckled, sure, I can fight this soon to be depressed boy, I will kick your ass back to the academy. Kuro growled. Okay, I shrugged, I was pretty confident this fight was going to be easy. Kuro Sugo LEVEL 4 HP. 250 250ths, Chakra. 190 190th start, Tarifu side, giving us the order to start the fight. And as Kuro rushed at me, eager to beat a 5 year old like a psychopath, I smiled time to test one of my favorite skills in World of Warcraft as a warlock, fear, casting fear on his poor mind. I forced the previously brave Kuro into a frenzy, where he ran aimlessly like a chicken in despair. It's that Jinjutsu? Ami inquired, and Tarifu nodded. Alright, now to finish him off, I announced, grabbing a pellet from the ground and throwing it at him, knocking him out, Tata, I bowed. Impressive level of Jinjutsu, Tarifu complimented, 
his entire chakra was disturbed by whatever you made him see, I guess, I actually had no idea what people saw under the effects of fear, perhaps their greatest fears, or something else. Tsunade Senju POV Raiden was different, and not in a Rachimaru way, he was cool, and I think it's possible I have a crush on him, not sure mom says I am not supposed to know about that yet, but I think I like him, he's smart, and pretty strong. Which is why I wanted him to graduate with me, I was certain he would get in the same team with me, but I was wrong, not only I didn't get to be in a team with him, but the sensei that is supposed to teach us, it's out of the country, and we will have to wait, maybe I should have let Raiden graduate at his own time, I pouted under my pillow. I love you. Nawaki babbled with a sweet smile. I love you too. I giggled, tackling my little baby brother into a hug. Raiden POV after my first day with a Jounin teacher, I knew what was coming for me, and White Tsunade hadn't gotten a teacher yet, I was in the eyes of Konoha, expendable, Tsunade was not, what I meant by this was, I had a feeling I would be fighting in the upcoming war, while Tsunade stayed in the village. I need to get strong, that much was certain, only strength would grant me freedom here, a world where every idiot can breathe fire. Hi young man, could you please help me out? An old man asked, a golden exclamation point over his head I what? Was my user interface updating or something? I need help with something, I will pay you for your time, the old man reassured, and I reluctantly nodded, I needed the money to rent my own apartment. So, today I discovered a new thing about my powers, I can get quests from the people of Konoha, the quest though worked separately from the people, like I get two rewards at times, one from the quest, and one from whoever I am helping, usually the quests give me more than whatever the person is giving. But yeah, I now get quests by the people of Konoha. And for the looks of it, most of them are repeatable, too bad they give ridiculously tiny amounts of exp, I would have to do hundreds of them to get a single level, but I suppose they give a good amount of extra Ryo, Ryo I will need to rent my own apartment. Apartment for rent 1500 Ryo a month talking about apartment, well, I suppose this is what people call opportunity. The apartment I had found on my way to the orphanage was very small, but sufficient, it had one small bedroom, one very small bathroom, and a kitchen, the owners were a pair of old people that wanted some extra money on this side, so. Taking the apartment as a sign from the heavens, I took it. I mean, I already had enough Ryo to pay for more than an entire year, so it was well within my budget, now to move my shit here, I have no shit, I'm an orphan. All I have is disappointment and sad introductions in hindsight, I don't have awkward family moments, so I guess that's a plus. Now that I had my base of operations, it was time to get me a battle pet, and the best possible place was. The Inuzuka well, they declined my intent to buy one of their pups, shame, so I guess is plan B, the forest of death, which is where I was, I have a feeling everything inside this place has a level higher than me, I sighed. Looking at the massive fence that was there to stop stupid kids from venturing inside the place, that and to keep the beasts from laying waste to Konoha. But life it's nothing without a little bit of risk. I was optimistic, and so with a big smile I climbed the massive wall and entered the forest of death, my objective? To get a pet. For hours I walked the dense forest, always feeling like someone was watching me, hunting me, gauging me up. Until all of the sudden a massive wolf that towered over most buildings in Kanoha jumped in front of me, surprisingly it was my level. The chakra beast growled menacingly at me, bearing its massive teeth out, promising a world of pain and suffering soon enough, I could feel it, in his eyes the beast craved blood and carnage. It was time to tame, Wu is a good boy? Wu is a good dog guo, Wu is the goodiest boy in the entire forest. And so I acquired a pet, much to my dismay, like in World of Warcraft, the beast lost a big part of its size, but it was still big I suppose. Learning new things about my World of Warcraft system was a common occurrence by now, with me learning a week ago normal citizens gave quests, and stuff like that, I expected to learn weird stuff, and today after doing some D missions with my new team, I discovered I also had the reputation system of WoW. Neat little thing, if you ask me. 
reputation, I muttered under my breath. Kanoha friendly 4600 6000 XP Tsunade honored 11547 12000 XP Tarifu Akamichi friendly 126000 XP Amiri Kai neutral minus 2789 3000 XP Arachimara neutral 0 3000 XP Juria unfriendly 0 3000 XP Kuro Sugo hostile 10 3000 XP Mora orphan matron Hated 0 36,000 XP Iwagakur Hated 0 36,000 XP Kumagakur Hostel 0 3,000 XP Sunagakur Hostel 0 3,000 XP Karigakur Hostel 0 3,000 XP Lovely I am hated by 80% of the world And for some reason the matron of the orphanage A very troubling thing considering she was supposed to take care of me Well, that a problem I don't have to fix Her opinion of me is irrelevant I sighed. What really troubled me was that my reputation as a Kanoha Nin with the other villages was hostile or worse. Meaning at any moment the fucking war would start. And I wasn't ready for war, but then again, who really is? DeAndre come, I sighed, summoning my wolf into my room. DeAndre was a special wolf. Not only did he have predator's thirst that gave me and him a 10% buff of lifesteal, but he also had endurance training which gave us a 10% HP boost. In World of Warcraft something like that was impossible, but I suppose this is not World of Warcraft, and some things will be different. Like my pet having the abilities and buffs of both the ferocity pets and tenacity pets. Next morning, my fears came true as a quest pop up in front of me, with no way to reject it. Mandatory quest. You have been called to help with the raging war in the elemental nations, defend your home and allies from invasion, while ensuring your own survival. Show them what Kanoha Nin are made of. Objective survive the first Shinobi World War without Kanoha being destroyed. You will get. Plus 700,000 E XP E R I E N C E. Plus 10,000 reputation with Kanahagakur, war veteran title. Bonus objectives get a moniker so that the enemies fear the name of your dance. Fear was one of the emotions I felt after I read the mandatory quest, how else was I supposed to react? One thing was killing rats, but another was to kill a human being, was I truly ready to take a life? Perhaps not, and the worst part was, I would have no choice, for if I didn't kill I would be killed. As I walked to meet with my team, I could already notice my sensei was tense, probably trying to figure out how to break the news to us, hello, I waved at them, getting a happy smile from Ami, and a glare from Kuro. Now that we are all here I have something to tell you, Tarifu sensei sighed, there is no easy way to say this, but, we have been called to serve and defend Kanoha we are at war, Ami gasped, but we are Genin. We are soldiers of Kanoha nothing more and nothing less, and we have to defend our people, Tarifu replied. It's an honor. Kuro nodded, idiot he was. When are we leaving? I asked. Today, we are needed in the front lines I'll be honest this is going to be very hard, and is very likely you will all die. But no Kanoha will fight with you side by side, you will never be alone out there not even in death. At this Ami started to cry, while Kuro grinned excitedly, very well I chuckled, at least Sensei was being honest. Soon I'd send you POV today, like every day, I was training with my team, albeit we had no Sensei yet, that was no excuse to procrastinate, Sensei or not, I was not gonna be left behind by Raiden. Soon I'd. Raiden greeted, as he ran towards the training ground we were using. Great, the lovable idiot, it's here, Jiraiya mumbled under his breath, and I immediately punched his head through a tree. Raiden. How has training been? I asked with a smile, and he chuckled. Good good, I've been learning new things every day, Raiden sighed, but that's not why I came here, I actually have something to tell you at this my heart skipped a beat, was this really happening? Was he like in those romance novels Grandma Mito was gonna proclaim his love for me? I've been called for war, and well wanted to say goodbye before leaving, Raiden smiled, a sad smile. War no I did this, I forced him to graduate early, I pushed him into this I'm sorry. I struggled but failed to cry. Well this is awkward Raiden chuckled, giving me a handkerchief, look it's not your fault I would have probably graduated with or without your help, 
and don't worry, I won't die ain't nobody out there that can take out the mighty god of thunder, unless Shao Kahn it's out there, I snorted, who the fuck is Shao Kahn? Someone I just invented, Raiden winked, now don't worry, worry about how much stronger than you I will be when I come back, now that is something to worry about. I chuckled, as if. Raiden POV well I said my goodbyes, and now it's time to be mentally scarred forever, sometimes I wish the World of Warcraft system had the gamer mind, easier to kill when you don't feel shit about anything. Are you guys ready? Tarifu sensei inquired, and we all nodded, Ami with tears in her eyes, Kuro with excitement on his, and me well, I don't know, I was afraid, worried and more, then let's go, before that I interrupted him, summon. Imp. I channeled the demonic forces to summon my imp, summon. Pet, this time, I called DeAndre my trusty mutant wolf, I'm ready, what the fuck is that? Kuro asked, pointing to my imp. One of my summons I replied. Well that is new, Tarifu sensei sighed, are you sure you want to have your summons with you right now? We won't see any enemies for a few days, not until we reach the border, I rather have an extra set of eyes, six eyes were better than two, that much was true. As we skipped through the vast field of trees that apparently encased the entire fire country, I focused on the road ahead, wondering how would I deal with the fact that I would have to kill soon, the idea alone was terrifying, and the worst part was, I had no choice, I either killed or got killed. We should be getting to where we are supposed to go in about an hour, Tarifu sensei informed, when all of a sudden, he shouted, look out. Barely blocking an incoming attack. Enemies already? Fuck, cursing under my breath, I flickered from where I was, to a tree nearby sensei, commanding my imp and wolf, to be cover my back as I did so, as a trio of ninja charged at us, full speed. Quickly I assessed the situation, one of the ninjas was level 20, the other two were level 13, sensei what do w it was here when I realized, of my team, I had been the only one to react on time, Kuro had his throat open, and Ami was laying on the floor, drowning on her own blood, I didn't even notice. Focus. Tarifu sensei snapped me out of my shock, I will take them on, so I need you to run and ask for backup, the base in a few miles from here, once you get within range without me. The sensors will approach you, run. Could I really run? No I couldn't. They would chase me as soon as they killed him, running was not an option, if we play it like that, there is a big chance you will die, and soon after, I would end up following you to the afterlife. I'm sorry, Tarifu sensei sighed, his eyes on the enemy, I failed to protect them, and now you, I don't pretend to die just yet, I declared, my hands and body betraying my conviction. I was scared, to the bone I could feel my body shaking, but I was going to fight. Very well, I will take two of them don't die until I finish them off, Tarifu sensei ordered, lunging at the Jounin and one of the Chunin. Let's play brat. The ninja that I was going to fight laughed, throwing a flurry of shurikens at me. Unsure what to do, I dodged his attack and threw three arcane shots at the ninja. But the bastard dodged the incoming projectiles with ease, flickering behind me with a poof of smoke, ready to deliver a killing blow, at the nick of time, I dodged and kicked the bastard as hard as I could on his abdomen, as I jumped backwards to take some distance. Scrambling into a better position, I ordered my pets to attack, as I marked the ninja with Hunter's Mark. Grinning devilishly my imp, started to harass the ninja with one fireball after the other, while DeAndre followed the ninja through the trees, in an attempt to sink his fangs on him. Well if I can't lose your pets. Then I will kill you. The ninja growled, blasting towards me. Great, I muttered. Taking a defensive stance, I dodged the assault again and landed corruption and a fire blast on the ninja, who cried in pain for a brief moment, swinging his arm at me. But I leapt out of the way as it swung his arm at me. Hitting the tree instead with such force it splintered the tree. Getting behind him, I used Frost Nova, freezing him in place, as DeAndre locked its fangs on his leg. Ah, you little shit. The ninja growled, stabbing DeAndre on the skull with a kunai, killing my pet in a single shot. Angry at this development, I used Wing Clip on him, slowing him down, and then casted Moonfire, blasting him to the ground with the power of the moon, eat shit. 
I growled under my breath. You little shit the ninja snarled, he still had half of his horsepower left. With a somewhat pained battle cry, the ninja rushed at me but immediately noticed, his speed had been severely cut, why am I so slow? That is because of me, I smiled, charging a frostbolt that hit him right on the chest, followed by a fireball from my imp, that dropped his HP to the single digits. Not bad, but you die with me, grinning like a madman the ninja flickered behind me, his body covered with explosive tags, the bastard was going to explode himself just to take me out, come to hell with me. With barely any time to react, I jumped as far as I could, but the man exploded a sec after, and the explosion moved faster than me, catching me in a flaming inferno of pain. Level up. When I opened my eyes, I was on the ground bleeding, missing an arm and a leg, and an unimaginable amounts of pain as my HP rapidly dropped, regenerating. Using my Zandalari troll trait, I started to channel my chakra, regenerating what I had lost faster than I had lost it, god am I glad I killed those rats, you. How it's not important, I'm glad you're okay. Tarifu sensei who apparently had only finished his fight arrived, got just in time to see me regenerate my arm and leg, I didn't know you knew medical ninjutsu, though I am not sure if this classifies as such, I'm a kid full of surprises, I smiled weakly, my eyes laying on the corpses of those who were my teammates, and now were nothing but a memory, I might have no loved them. Or even liked them, but they didn't deserve to die like sheep, how far away is the base? I asked as I stood up. A few miles, Tarifu sensei answered, his HP bar around the middle. Well, then let's eat first, I sighed, conjuring some refreshments to heal his HP and chakra, take this they will heal you up, and replenish your chakra we both need to be at our best, who knows what else will we find ahead, Tarifu sensei eyed the food I had conjured with confusion before he started to eat, and as soon as he took the first bite, his eyes opened wide, this is amazing, I can feel my chakra filling up how how did you do this? Kid full of surprises, remember? And that's a technique I learned from my imp, I lied, sometimes it was best to lie when no answer was good enough. As soon as we arrived at the camp, I was led to an interrogation room, and how could I blame them? They wanted to know why I was suddenly able to do what I do, being able to regenerate limbs, restore chakra at an alarming rate, and use the ice element. And of course, I didn't have a satisfactory answer for any of their questions, so they threw me in a cell, until they decided what to do with me. You must be Raiden, a fair-skinned man with silver, shaggy hair and dark-colored eyes, said as he entered the cell. Under his eyes and chin, he thin red markings, there was no doubt, this man was Tabarama. Tabarama send you level 55 Hokage-sama, I bowed, trying to be as respectful as possible. The reports say a lot about you, Tabarama said, third of your class, great understanding of the ninja ways, but nothing in this report sells you as something great, I looked at him, detailing him, from head to toe, he was wearing his blue battle armor, adorned with his distinctive white fur collar over a simple black suit underneath. His armor was constructed from numerous metal plates that looked considerably heavy, that formed multiple protective guards around his body. Yet, today you not only demonstrated the ability to use the rare element that is ice release, but other rather strange abilities, Tabarama continued, frowning ever so lightly, according to your captain, you regenerated your arm and leg, in under a minute, then proceeded to create what he called super chakra food that restored his chakra, and healed his wounds now. Can you understand why do we have you here? I do, I nodded. In the ninja world, secrecy is key for victory. But not with your allies I can understand if you want to keep your technique secret, even if the how you manage to learn said techniques eludes me, but not letting your team know what you are capable of can lead to catastrophic results, Tabarama stated. Had your teacher known you had the ability to heal your teammates, the formation would have been different had he had known anything about your skills even a summary of them, and perhaps your team would have been alive, but we will never know that, they died faster than I could react. I muttered, I didn't even see them. Until their bodies fell into the ground I didn't like them, but I didn't hate them and their faces haunt me, 
Heck even the face of the man I killed every time I close my eyes, I see him I see his corpse, you haven't technically violated any rules, and the Yamanaka report shows you are not a spy, but from now on keep your captain aware of your capabilities, Taburama sighed. And I blinked in shock, I wasn't in trouble? Whatever you have it's most likely a bloodline of some sort, which would also explain why the Yamanaka couldn't enter your mindscape, but only know if you were lying or not, I see, that was a relief, for a moment there I thought they had mind raped me. Now, about that chakra food you can make, is there a limit to how much you can make, and how does it work? Tabarama asked. I can make maybe 300 rations before I need to take a break, and how they work well, you have to be out of combat to consume them, they heal all wounds and restore chakra, and exist as long as I exist, I answered. Who taught you that technique? Tabarama asked. I learned it with my summons apparently I'm the only one that can summon them, perhaps it has to do with my bloodline? I answered, lying through my teeth. Try again, Tabarama glared, flaring his chakra with such intensity I was having trouble breathing. I made the technique, I answered, that was the closest thing to the truth I could get, and if the pressure from his chakra dropping was anything to go by, he believed me. There is no shame in being a genius, by your age I had developed many techniques, I still use to this day, Tabarama stated, is it safe to assume all your techniques are original then? Yes, I nodded. Brilliant, Tabarama smiled under his breath, you are free to return to your teacher, I have much to think about, I okay, I nodded, leaving the tent, and letting out a breath I didn't know I was holding, god that man was suffocating, his presence was like a knife to my throat. Tabarama sends you POV one hour earlier Raiden, the reports about him said nothing special, he was bright, but not overly so, he was strong, but not overly so, and yet, he had shown more than he was supposed to be. I can't access his mindscape Hokage Sama, Romu Yamanaka's side, his head is protected by a shining beacon of light, that every time that I try to go through it blinds me away, surprisingly the light it's soothing but also threatening, he's a box full of surprises, isn't he? I muttered, reading his file one more time, so there is no way to know if he's a spy without torture? That's the thing, I was able to use my other jutsus on him, just not the one that enables me to walk on his mindscape and he is clean, he isn't a spy or a sleeping agent, Romu assured me, just a kid that failed to report his capabilities to his superiors, that is hardly a sin, but it can lead to troublesome developments, I sighed, I will take it from here, I want to meet the kid myself. Very well, Romu nodded, I will leave my report on your desk then, tell his teacher, the kid will be with him in a few minutes, I ordered Romu, I don't think this will take long, as you wish, Romu nodded, flickering out of the room with a poof of smoke. Let's see how many mysteries I can unfold with a simple conversation, I chuckled. After my interrogation, I went back to my sensei, this, however, didn't last long for I was placed under a different team within a week, the reasons behind this were never disclosed, but I had a feeling it was because Tarifu sensei felt guilty about losing his first gen in team so quickly, I couldn't really blame him, the images of them were stuck in my head, as a reminder, I was weak. And so were they. Or perhaps he was freaked out about my abilities, who knows. Under my new team, my captain was cold and very militaristic, a shinobi that followed every rule, and carried every mission if he had to die for it, and my abilities to heal and create food were highly appreciated, so under this assault team, I had a support role, and I was glad, most of the enemies we would see were 10 or more levels ahead of me, so I stayed behind and helped only when needed. Surprisingly this approach gave me tons of exp, the system probably assumed my squad was something like a party or a raid, and every shinobi they killed would give me some exp, not as much as a solo kill, but enough to steadily level up as I helped my squad. As of now, I was level 11, not that high but good enough to survive, heck I already had resurrection, a very useful priest skill to resurrect people when they die, though unlike in World of Warcraft, this technique had a few limitations, for one, you can resurrect anyone that has been dead for over an hour, cause apparently, that's what it takes for a soul to ascend to the pure world. Nor I can resurrect under combat. Had yet to try this though, 
Not sure how will I explain I am able to resurrect people, also, can't imagine how will they exploit me if they find out, I mean, Tabarama already has me producing rations for the troops every time I am not on a mission, I can't imagine what would he do if I start pulling a Jesus. Though, I know this power will eventually be known for the moment one of my teammates dies, I will resurrect him or her, Raiden, can you make some rations? I blinked out of my train of thought, looking at my captain, sure, I still have plenty of chakra, I nodded, with a smile. Then please do, the captain ordered, and I nodded once again, processing to summon the rations, it was an easy job. I will send DeAndre with the rations, I informed him, and he nodded an understanding, going back to his post. From a programmer to a food dispenser, life sure takes funny turns, DeAndre, please take this to the captain I ordered my pet, putting the rations on top of him, DeAndre happily barked running to deliver the food. It was a peaceful post, the support of a veteran team, however, this came to an abrupt end, for even with my various skills, I would soon see, the true meaning of war, the terror behind the bloodshed. A few months after, on my sixth birthday, my team and I were tasked to kill one Suna ninja, known as the Puppet Master, the Puppet Master was apparently a force to be reckoned with, having killed an entire squadron of Konoha Nin single-handedly. This mission was placed under our team, by the Jonin commander, when it was normally Tabarama who would decide what tasks were under us, however, my captain accepted, and so the hunt began. It was deep in the night, with the moon over halfway down in the western sky, and I was feeling rather troubled, something about the mission had me on edge, and I wasn't sure what or why. Along the way, Captain Yamamoto had given me more responsibilities, letting me fight some of the ninjas we would fight on our way, not sure why, before my role was to be the healer, but now, I was taking a more offensive role, and I was glad you don't win wars by not bathing in blood. But even then, I felt something was wrong, the title itself the ninja we had to kill had, was scary, forcing a strong feeling inside of me, that this ninja was going to be something straight out of a horror movie. My suspicion was confirmed when we finally arrived at the clearing where the puppet master was going to be, at least according to our sources that is. The grass here was low, covered by a thin layer of sand, making an almost circular field that had a peculiar smell covering the area, the smell of blood and acid, in the middle of the creepy place, there was a small puppet sitting on a tree, which was casting ghastly shadows on the ground in the moonlight, shadows that laughed and giggled in mad delight. Creepy, one of my teammates muttered, speaking what I was thinking out loud. He knew we were coming, the captain growled, be ready, taking a deep breath, I studied the scene in front of me again. This time, instead of one puppet, there were five. The how or the when they appeared was a mystery, but they there were, sitting on a tree, laughing. Taking deep breaths, my senses on high alert, I grabbed one of my kunai and positioned myself behind the team, I knew this mission was out of my pay range, and that my sole objective was to help my team out. But as I walked to my position, a cold air invaded my spine, sending shivers of fear through my entire body. Turning around purely out of instinct, I witnessed something evil taking form in front of me, accompanied by a fair bit of faint tread smoke. At first, the person in front of me looked like a kid, maybe in his teen years. But as it materialized a bit more, I could see that his bony face was whiter than a person's could be, it looked like a doll, locked in a permanent expression of delirious joy, his lidless eyes white and bulging shining under the moonlight, as if they were about to pop out of his head, his wide mouth gaping, showing jagged teeth that dripped melting poison into the ground. That ate away the very vegetation that underneath him. In shock, I took a step back in horror, I had seen Naruto and never had seen something so terrifying, it felt like something out of a Stephen King novel. New playmates? Come play with me, we will all have fun he screeched, as my team moved to intercept him. Puppet Master level 30 The Puppet Master looked at me and cackled. You wanna play with me? He grinned, as fast as lightning, his hand shot forward and something flew at me. Piercing right through me the projectile ended up lodged diagonally on the ground, melting it with the same substance his teeth were dripping. The projectile was a needle, as large as my arm. 
Coughing blood, I drop to the floor with a loud thud, struggling to keep myself conscious, as the puppet master walked past me, probably assuming I was already done for. The pain was beyond anything I had experienced, it was blinding, keeping me in a state of perpetual agony, as my HP dropped. It didn't take me long to figure out, I had been poisoned, biting a piece of cloth, I casted Gift of the Naru, healing the hole the needle had left in my chest, but I was still poisoned, and according to my status, the poison would remain for an hour in my system, and it would kill me in an hour or so, if I didn't find a cure to it. Standing up from the ground, I flickered with a poof of smoke to one of the nearby trees, trying to get as far away from the puppet master as possible, I had to position myself better to help my team, but as I skipped through the trees, the puppet master stopped me, you're alive that means we can play, Raiden. Disengage. My captain shouted, struggling against one of the puppets the doll master was remotely handling. I knew I had to disengage, but how the puppet master was faster, stronger, and had a weird interest in me, I had to fight, if I was going to die, I might as well, die trying, fire blast. Needing my chakra I blasted the puppet master with a quick but powerful explosion of raging fire. At this, the puppet master laughed, flickering behind me, dodging my attack, with ease, nice reaction time, he whispered into my ear. In shock, I turned around as fast as I could, but as I did so, I was kicked away into the ground, by the laughing puppet master, let's play some more. He cacked, as I cursed under my breath, that kick had taken a little over 10% of my HP. Raiden. We need some help. One of my squadmates shouted, and I thought, no shit Sherlock, I need help too. Time to die the puppet master screamed, throwing another needle at me, then another, and another, creating an endless chain of attacks, but this time, his attacks were slow, not like his first one, this time I was able to see them and react accordingly. Ducking under the projectiles. I continued to dodge his relentless throws, wondering why were his attacks getting slower, there had to be a reason behind it. Die I said. He screamed, even his mental state was changing. Taking a step back, I blocked one of the needles with a kunai, and summoned my pets into the battle, positioning DeAndre behind the puppet master, and my void walker in front of me to tank the attacks, should the necessity ever come. You are not supposed to dodge. You are not supposed to be alive. He screeched and suddenly his two hands shot out, stretching beyond the limits of what human body is capable, much to my shock, ducking. I avoided one of his arms as it passed past me, while the other was stopped by my void walker, who tanked the entire hit, dropping his HP to a third. Die using the arm I had dodge, he grabbed the ground and pulled himself closer to me with great speed, stabbing me in the chest, while doing so. In pain, my vision blurred as my health dropped to less than a third, growling DeAndre lunged at the puppet master, biting him of the arm buying me enough time to heal myself with flash heal, I can only take two hits I muttered, realizing if he managed to connect to attacks, I would die. Turning around, I saw my squad struggling against the puppets which brought up the question, how was the puppet master controlling the puppets and fighting me at the same time? Was that the reason behind his decrease in speed? How are you still alive you trickster? Kicking DeAndre to the ground, the puppet master growled, before throwing his arms at me, once again, I dodged, as I dismissed my void walker, summoning my imp into battle, what I needed was not a tank, but extra damage. Cackling with delight, my imp started to spam fireballs at him, much to the dismay of the puppet master. Grabbing a kunai from my pouch, I took the opportunity to stab him in the arms, but a terrible realization struck me. His arms took no damage, you can't make wood bleed. The puppet master cackled, and this made no sense, he flinched when DeAndre bit him. Which means, not all his arm is made out of wood, the fucker is partially a puppet. Using the body replacement technique, I left a clone behind with the sole objective to buy me some time, I knew I was not going to win if I didn't change my strategy, so I summoned DeAndre to my side and muttered, I am sorry buddy, but... I think this is the only way, DeAndre whined, understanding what I was about to do, I was taking a page from the first enemy I encountered. It was time to go out with a bang, 
Covering DeAndre with all the explosive tags I had in my possession, I ordered him to hide, as I waited to be out of combat to use stealth, knowing this extended to my active pets. Where are you? The puppet master shouted, as I activated stealth he had already killed my imp and clone, so this suicidal plan was my last resort, for I knew he would see me as soon as I was within 30 meters of him, but that's all I needed, for him to not know where I was for a bit, while DeAndre prowled behind him, there you are. As I had predicted, he saw me the moment I reached a 30 meter radius of him. Fuck, I cursed, as the puppet master grabbed by the arm, any last words? The puppet master inquired, licking my cheek in delight. I nodded, seeing how my wolf was within striking distance, DeAndre play dead, cutting my arm with chakra-powered kunai, I blinked, as DeAndre lunged at the puppet master, swallowing him in a massive explosion. The explosion expanded rapidly, blasting me out of the way, even though I had blinked a few meters away, the raging fire of the explosion caught me, setting me ablaze, ignoring the pain that seethed within me, I casted Regeneratin, healing all my wounds. No. I can't lose, the puppet master surprisingly had survived, though barely, he had lost his prosthetic puppet arms, and his legs in the explosion, his face was burned beyond repair, and so was the rest of his body, he was clinging to life out of sheer force of will. Taking a deep breath, I stood up from the ground, seeing how the arm I had cut was almost done regenerating, I'll be honest, I don't know how I won this by all means, you should have killed me, but I won, and this is the end, walking towards him, I pulled a kunai out of my pouch, and using arcane shot, I pierced his skull killing him. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Level up. Five levels? Impressive, turning around, I saw my team, some on the floor dead, others clinging to life, Raiden good job, my captain muttered, and I chuckled good job. I had barely survived this ordeal, had my plan failed, I would have died, of that there was no doubt. I fucking lucked my way through that fight, I sighed, looking over the corpses of my team, I guess it was time to show my newest skill, resurrection. Some fights are like that, the captain reassured me, if you can heal us up, we finished our assignment, with fewer losses than I expected, let's try no losses, I chuckled, knowing very well that the moment I showed the world I was able to resurrect people, my life would change forever. What? One of my squadmates muttered, confused by my statement, as I approached one of my fallen teammates. As I approached and tried to cast resurrection, I noticed I couldn't for I was still in combat, thanks to the poison in my bloodstream, well cleansed toxins, but that had an easy solution, thanks to one of my recently acquired paladin skills. That gave me the ability to erase any poison on my body with ease, now that I was out of combat, I started to resurrect my teammates, one by one, done, how I they were confused, and I couldn't blame them, you did this, but how? I've been tinkering with that jutsu for a while, I lied, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work. I lied again, but it did, you will have to report this to the Hokage, the captain ordered, his tone colder than I expected it to be, one would think they would be happy I resurrected their fallen allies, but I guess is human nature to fear what you don't understand. Tabarama send you POV in war, spies and traitors were a common occurrence, but to have a traitor in a commanding role, maybe I was slipping perhaps age was making me dull in the ways of the shinobi for I still couldn't understand how I didn't foresee Kuroko betraying me, but that didn't matter, at least not anymore, I had killed him. After the Yamanaka confirmed my suspicions he was working with the sand, betraying the village for a position of power in the sand, despicable. His objective, to kill Raiden, there was no secret, Raiden was very valuable, his unique set skills that seemed ever-changing, made him a wild card in our favor, and Kuroko knew that which is why he ordered the team where Raiden was to go on a suicide mission without backup, knowing the captain would not question the order with Raiden out of the picture, things would change for the sand. But his plans backfired, not only I discovered his betrayal, but Raiden had survived, killing the famous puppet master of the sand, but that was the least impressive of his accomplishments today for he had done something I had failed to do, he had created a perfect resurrection jutsu, it shocked me to see such genius, at such a young age, this was without precedent. 
His jutsu, however, had a bunch of pretty specific limitations. For one, anyone that has been dead for over an hour can't be resurrected. Two, he can't resurrect while in combat. This rule was rather tricky for what did it really meant being out of combat. But regardless of the limitations of his justice, he had done what I failed to accomplish with my technique, summoning. Impure world reincarnation. From a common ninja to Kanoha's most valuable asset, in less than a year, the kid was more than I originally thought, perhaps even more than I know thought, Yamamoto, I called the captain of the Raven squad, Raiden won't be under your care any longer, if I might ask where do you plan on putting him? Yamamoto asked, with a hint of worry. I plan on tutoring the kid myself, I answered his question, before dismissing him. A genius like Raiden under my wing, only time would tell how far would the kid go, but first I had to make sure, the will of fire was strong within him, otherwise I would be creating a weapon, that by the looks of it, no one will be able to stop. Raiden POV is expected, people started to treat me differently as the news of my power spread, I couldn't blame them though, I did what by all means should be impossible, I violated the laws of nature without breaking a sweat, and now I was seen as some kind of savior, or demon, depending on the perspective of the beholder. Raiden, Tabarama approached me, first, I would like formally apologize for not noticing a traitor amongst our midst, for that mistake you and your team almost your lives, also, I want to congratulate you for your outstanding work, both in defeating the puppet master and keeping your teammates alive, thanks, Hokage Sama, I bowed, a bit surprised at all the praise I was getting. I kinda assumed he was colder in this regard. Also, from this day forward, you are no longer part of the Raven assassination squad, Tabarama informed me. Where is my new post? I asked, not really surprised he had reassigned me. Under my command, Tabarama stated, the Leaf Strike team, also known as the Escort Unit, the team consists of Hamura Mitakato, Hiruzen Saratobi, Danzo Shimura, Kagami Achiha, Kahara Yudatane, and now you, from this day forward, I'll be your teacher and direct commander, I say what now I okay. Unsure of what to say, I nodded. Perfect, now go by the supply tent and pick up your armor, Tabarama ordered, also congrats on your promotion to Chunin, it was well earned, and with that Tabarama flickered out of sight, leaving me in a state of shock. Under Tabarama Senju, my assignments changed, no longer I was tasked with assassination missions, now the missions I was part of, were more in the front lines, with Tabarama teaching me at every turn the various aspects of the shinobi life. With him, I learned I had all chakra natures in sync, odd but not unexpected. The point was, he was actually teaching me while we fought the war, it was strange to say something, having the hokage as your teacher. He was smart, cold and very intuitive, making his classes surprisingly easy which was to say a lot considering we were at war, and all of his teachings took place on the battlefield. Once again, I was the designated healer of my team, having a support role in the Leaf Strike team. Talking about them, each of them had an array of different reactions to my addition to the team. Here is in level 46, he was very welcoming, and was always eager to help. Heck the guy had teached me a few useful techniques with the staff, when Tabarama sensei was otherwise occupied. Danzo level 32, his reaction to my addition, was I don't know how to describe it, but in short, he had no real opinion about my addition to the team, he simply nodded, that was all he gave a nod to my existence. Now, the rest they had strong opinions, Kaharu level 21 was not happy at all with me, the why I couldn't understand. Hamura level 22 was also angry with my addition to the team, for reasons I had yet to discover. Oh, well I almost forgot, Kagami Achiha level 35, he was very chill, and had no real strong opinion about me being on the team with them, he was distant yet approachable, the one thing I knew about him, was that his love for the village was massive. Raiden, Tabarama sensei, who had ordered me to call him sensei greeted, today we are going to focus on your tojutsu, he informed me. Okay, I nodded. It's painfully obvious it's the skill you need to work the most, Tabarama being painfully honest, I both liked and hated that about him, but when he was right, he was right, you will spar with me, and here is in 6 hours a day with each one, 
something about Tabarama was that his training fluctuated between things that can break someone down, to easy stuff, okay so only to jutsu? Or I can use ninjutsu while sparring? For now, I want you to focus solely on to jutsu, dear ninjutsu skill it's very good, but you lack the speed and finesse of a trained body to make it worth, Tabarama stated, his eyes on me, fix that, and you will be a shinobi feared and respected amongst the elemental countries, will do, I nodded, a smile on my face. Very well, let's get started, Tabarama got into position, and the sparring match started. I liked this training without having to kill, it was easy to deal with. Not because I wasn't used to killing by now, no that was the sad part, killing had become mundane for me, a chore and this, simply training without casualties, brought a sense of normality to my life I didn't know I was missing. Tabarama Senju POV my training with Raiden had proven to be effective, he learned what he was taught without much difficulties, at times he would struggle every now and then, but he would quickly adapt and learn whatever was slowing him down. Of his genius there was no doubt, of his will of fire, that I had some, he was depressed, according to the Yamanaka exams, angry at the situation he was facing, having to kill for the sake of killing, sickened him. It reminded me of Hashirama, he never really had the heart to be a shinobi, yet he was the best of us. What worried me about this was what if his depression turned into hate, hate to the village for what he was forced to do, I had to make sure that never happened, so I started doing less missions, for the sake of his mental health, giving him one-on-one -on -one time every time I could. And it was working, having intervals between killing was helping his mental state. That, or he was growing accustomed to the tides of war, I couldn't really tell, his mind being impenetrable, made most physiological assessments inaccurate, all I could tell is that he was improving, and that with time, he will of fire would burn as bright as Hashirama himself, of that I would make sure. Tabarama sensei, here is an entered my tent, I was talking with Raiden, and I couldn't help but notice he has no last name, and no one to go back to, so I was thinking, in maybe adopting him into the clan? I eyed Hiruzen for a moment, before I sighed, he had a point, while by shinobi standards Raiden was already an adult, he was a kid, and giving him a sense of belonging would help him, and perhaps even help my goal to instill the love for the village, an interesting idea, but I think Senju Raiden has a better ring to it, don't you think? You plan on adopting him, Hiruzen gasped and I sighed into the clan, not as my son, but the Senju clan, it's all about family, and with us he will find a family, and a reason to love the village. Oh, well as long as the kid has a place to call home, I approve, Hiruzen smiled, giving me the thumbs up, though I feel the Saratobi name has a sexy ring to it, at this I smacked him on the head. You are incorrigible annoying, I smiled, leaving my tent to see how Raiden was doing against my clone. Incorrigibly sexy you mean. Hiruzen grinned, flickering out of sight to avoid another smack. Sometimes it amazes me he is my best student so far, maybe Raiden will claim that place and free me from the curse of having to deal with this. I continued to train under Tabarama, improving my Tijutsu skill exponentially, to the point I was winning spars against Hamura and Kaharu with relative ease, not that this was a great accomplishment, they were surprisingly weak but they were Jonan, and I was a recently promoted Chunin, so it felt like an accomplishment, also under his teachings, I had also learned the shadow clone technique. And various water style jutsu that helped me during missions, as for the missions themselves, I would go with the leaf strike team to support the front lines, and because most of the enemies we would take were, incredibly strong, I would get a ton of X per battle, it was frankly a paradise for leveling. I wanted to talk to you about something, Tabarama said, stopping our daily spar, it has come to my attention you are an orphan, rude, but true, so, I have an offer for you, as the head of the Senju clan, I would like to cordially invite to my clan, I looked at Tabarama sensei in shock, I did not expect that at all he wanted to adopt me. Him the coldest person I know? You want to adopt me? Is that even legal, I mean I'm an adult by shinobi standards right? You are, Tabarama nodded, and is not so much me adopting you, it's more the clan adopting you, it's a common practice in the Senju clan, it's how we became what we are, 
By creating bonds with all kinds of shinobi, how was I supposed to react to such an offer, I mean for one part. It would solve the problem of having to come up with the last name, something I had yet failed to make, but it kinda felt weird, being adopted when my mentally it's not that of a child, you don't have to answer today, nor accept my offer, it's merely a concern I had, and thought I, as your sensei could offer you a solution, having a samsart family however distant they are. Can be truly beneficial, and now, that even though we are not related, the senju will always stand by you, should you need it, whether you accept the offer or not, well, that was surprisingly warm coming from him, I accept, senju raid and it has a nice ring to it, I chuckled, and Tabarama smiled ever so lightly. I will handle the paperwork then, Tabarama stated, flickering out of sight. I guess that's training for today, I muttered, going over here isn't to continue with my weapons training, he was a beast when it came to weapons and most other things. A week after the offer from Tabarama Sensei, I was known as Raiden Senju, news sure spread fast, but what really got my attention was not that, was that I apparently had an entry on the bingo book, I was under the submission of the sand and the rock, an S-class ninja, with orders to be taken alive or dead. Not even Danzo has an entry, Hiruzen whistled, looking over my entry. Hiruzen also had an entry, the wild monkey of the leaf, I wonder how will that change to the professor. If a shinobi is known, they are doing their job wrong, Danzo who had been listening growled under his breath, I am not known, because I never leave someone alive to tell the tale, but we are in the same group though. That would mean no one is alive to tell our tale, so that logic doesn't apply, I mean Seru has an entry too I replied, and Danzo growled before flickering out of sight. Have I told you how glad I am you are in this team? Here is in snickered, oh boy, Danzo will be sulking for weeks over that, priceless, and you are supposed to be the second in command when Tabarama sensei it's not around, I chuckled, sad really, ouch, that stabbed me where it hurts, here is in chuckled. Here is an Tabarama who had appeared in front of us with a poof of smoke spoke, gather the team, we have a mission in Kumo territory, as you wish Tabarama sensei, here is an nodded, flickering out of sight. Kumo territory, that's quite far away, I muttered, and Tabarama nodded. However, this mission is of great importance in our pursuit to stop this war, once and for all, Tabarama stated, his eyes full of resolve, get ready, put on your battle armor, and meet us at the war tent, on it, I smiled, flickering to my tent. Soon I'd send you POV it has been a little over a year since I saw Raiden, I knew he was alive, he was sending letters every now and then, but I still worried, I wish I could be there doing something helping him, helping my great uncle. On the bright side, Raiden, was now part of the Senju clan, meaning I would get to spend more time with him when he came back. Tsunade Tsunade Chan. Jiraiya sang, do you want to go on a date with me? No, a million times no stop bothering me, you perverted freak of nature, I hissed, smacking him on the head, why did he have to bother me every day with the same thing over and over again, he knew I liked Raiden. I know the concept is hard to grasp for you, but have some dignity Jiraiya, Arachimaru remarked, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, and expecting a different result. It is more than clear Tsunade Haim likes Raiden, not you, not only her body language around him demonstrates said fact, but she has explicitly said so herself multiple times, it is frankly sad, you continue on your pursuit of the impossible after all of that, shut up Arachi team. Jiraiya growled, true love never surrenders, besides, I am 1000 times better than that freak. He is a chunin already, Arachimaru chuckled, I'm afraid his results speak for themselves, that's it, you and me. Right now. Jiraiya growled, I will beat you up. Once again, you need to stop chasing the impossible, you won't get the heart of the princess, nor you will defeat me, Arachimaru sighed, as Jiraiya raged. As soon as we reached Kumo, we separated into two groups to scout the zone, Tabarama, Danzo and Hiruzen would go ahead, clearing the enemies in their path, while Hamura, Kaharu and I walked behind them, clearing whatever escaped their grasp, which was nothing, for the moment being. That was, at least until someone intercepted us, with a loud explosion, you must be the support team of the Hokage, too bad I found you, 
The random ninja barked with a laugh, pointing with the crescent glaive in his hand at us. Tarok level 31 Kinkaku force unfortunately, for you we are, Kaharu said, narrowing her eyes at him. Where the fuck did her confidence came from? She was nearly useless in battle. Oh, and the kid that everyone has been talking about, Tarok whistled, his glaive resting on his shoulder. Well, today I am hitting the jackpot. As soon as he finished that sentence, I made a quick dash towards him, creating a clone in the process as I unsheathed my tanto. Tarok eager to start the fight smiled, throwing a barrage of lighting attacks, each one stronger than the last, but right before they reached me, I vanished into thin air. Flickering behind him. Tarok however had anticipated the move, and he spun around, lifting his glaive to counter my attack. Obviously, after training with Tabarama sensei for so long, I had also expected this counter-strike, and I made no attempt to hit him, but used the momentum to leapt backwards dodging his attack, all while throwing a smoke bomb to obscure his vision, facilitating the next part of my strategy, Kaharu. Hamura, go and find Tabarama I will hold him off. They were useless in battle, and would only slow me down, I had long surpassed them. How noble of you, by all means go ahead, they don't really matter, Tarok grinned, swinging his glaive around for emphasis. I know, I grinned as the smoke vanished, summoning my Void Walker and DeAndre into the battle, Void, keep Kaharu and Hamura safe, I had to ensure they delivered the message, and my Void Walker was tanky enough to help them escape any other ambush. Very well, Hamura nodded, and without hesitation left with Kaharu and my Void Walker. Finally, let's have some fun. Tarok chuckled, rushing at me. Shukarin shadow clone technique. I announced, throwing a single shuriken at him that multiplied into the hundreds. Tarok dodged the projectiles, which buried themselves into the ground and trees around, then charging his glaive with lightning chakra, he cried with delight, die. Throwing his massive weapon at me. The weapon flew out of his hand like a bird of prey piercing the trees as if they were made out of paper. No thank you, I replied, ducking low as weapon whisked over me through the air in a linear trajectory, DeAndre, attack. At my command, my wolf jumped at Tarok like a feral beast, chasing him around the trees, biting and thrashing the trees around. I was level 20, he was level 31, I had to play this safe and outsmart him, which is why he was fighting a shadow clone. I had switched places immediately after my first attack had failed, to assess my situation, not bad kid, Tarok grinned dodging one of DeAndre's attacks, but not good enough. Flickering behind me. As he was ready to attack, I grinned, how about this then, with a smile, I revealed the explosive tags under my vest, blasting everything in a 20 meter radius, leaving nothing behind, which was the problem. Had that worked, not likely considering there was no blood behind, not bad, didn't think that was a clone, but now I know who's the real you, I eyed him from the hiding spot I had been hiding, you sure talk a lot, I sighed, coming out of my hiding spot. His speed, strength and level, if this battle prolonged I was going to lose, sorry Kaharu, Hamura I need my demons with me, summon. Felguard. This was the first time I summoned this particular demon, and boy was he big, 3 meters tall, having a menacing look, and even more menacing axe on his claws. Tarok whistled, that looks fun. Let's make it even more fun then, I muttered, curse of exhaustion. Pushing my chakra into his system, I cursed Tarok to be 50% slower than before, giving me and my fell guard, some needed advantage. The fuck? Tarok muttered, perplexed at the change on his body. Now, go wild, I ordered my Felguard, who roared in delight, blasting his way to Tarok like a natural disaster, I don't remember Felguards being this scary and wow, I chuckled, seeing how the demon destroyed everything on his wake. Struggling to adjust to his new speed, Tarok flickered to where his weapon had landed, and started to clash with my Felguard, who seemed to be superior in the physical aspect of the battle, pushing Tarok back with each swing of his battle axe. All while DeAndre assisted the demonic entity in battle. How many fucking summons you have? Tarok growled, barely keeping up with the endless assault DeAndre and my demon were delivering, was this actually being easy? 
Had I been slowing my s just in case the bastard thought of any funny ideas. I didn't sign up for this shit. Tarok growled, lightning style. Light eraser. As soon as he said this, a blinding explosion covered the area, and I realized he wanted to escape. Unfortunately for him, that was impossible to accomplish. How can they still see me? Tarok growled as I slowly recuperated my vision, seeing my three pets, basically bullying the Kumo ninja. Just for that, more summons, I declared, apocalypse. Using my strongest death knight skill, I summoned forth an army of undead warriors, shocking the ninja. You you're a monster a demon, Tarok, the once confident ninja, stammered, looking over the horde of undead with fear. In war, everyone is a monster, I replied, seconds before the horde started to rip him apart, limb by limb. I stared at the bloody corpse of Tarok, seeing how his blood and innards decorated the scenery with a grim undertone that quaked in gore, well, time to regroup. With no enemies left to fight, I had to let Tabarama Sensei know what had happened. Perhaps he would know what the Kankaku force was and why they seemed to know we were coming. All of the sudden, a pair of massive chakra signatures landed with a loud boom behind me. The fact I was able to sense them, having no sensory skills, was a statement to the sheer amount of chakra they had, what in the world? I muttered, jumping back. Kinkaku, the brat the rakage wants it's here, and he killed Tarok amongst the debris their landing had caused, one of the two shadows that had landed behind me laughed, kicking the corpse of their fallen ally, or what little remained. I see that Kinkaku, the other shadow chuckled at this. One thought invaded my mind, a single, but simple thought, I had to run, fear was the one constant of my state, fear like never before. My body knew I was outmatched and was screaming at me to run. Whoever those two were, were beyond my capabilities to take on. Kicking the tree beneath my feet, I blasted off, but faster than I could react one of the two shadows blurred past me, kicking me in the head, the impact was painful and effective. Hey brat, where do you think you are going? A silvered-haired shinobi cackled, and there it hit me, escape was not an option. I had to fight or submit, at this, a duality came to me, my mind wanted to fight, but my body wanted to submit, fear was pushing me to one side, and my will to another. The question was, what was stronger, fear or will? Ginkaku level 39 Ginkaku, be gentle the kid will break if we play too rough, a blonde similar looking shinobi chuckled, the difference between them was minimal, beyond hair color, and overall height, they looked the same. Kinkaku level 41 fear or will, living like a coward or dying on my own terms, the old me would have taken the chance to survive at any cost, I suppose I am no longer that person, f fuck why you. I shivered, as I crouched down, I kicked at the ground as hard as I could. Soon enough, my body danced into the air and flipped upside down. For a brief moment, I held my arms to my chest, and then as quick as I could, I shot them out to both sides, as 20 flashes of light scattered in 8 directions. THK. 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 The sound echoed all around the area as I landed. The sharp blades covered in explosive tags that I had launched, pierced the trees, in every conceivable direction, release. Releasing the chakra hold I had forced upon them, the tags exploded, creating a big cloud of debris, my intention to buy as much time as possible, only Tabarama Sensei or Hiruzen could fight these two, my hopes for this battle were to survive. Neat little parlor trick. Ginkaku flickered behind me, slamming my head into the ground. Blood spilling out of my mouth, I summoned my fell guard and mentally ordered my demon to attack Ginkaku, as I healed my wounds, they were faster than me, stronger than me, meaning I only had one option, outsmarting them, if I was lucky I would be smarter than them. Using Blink, I teleported a few meters away from Ginkaku, as my fell guard entertained him, while I kept my eyes on Ginkaku, who was sitting on a tree, idly watching everything, as if it was a mere form of entertainment. They were underestimating me, I had to take advantage of that. The question was how, how could I take advantage of this situation, as things were I was pushing my body to move through pure determination, fear shackled my soul, binding me to an everlasting state of fright, 
And even though I was fighting it even though I was pushing myself to act through this fear, I was still afraid. This creature is fun, Ginkaku cackled, clashing with my fell guard, in a playful manner, if he wanted, he could kill my summon with ease, but he was enjoying this, for him all of this was giving me a false sense of hope, he most surely wanted to crush, to add extra despair into my very soul. Shadow clone technique, I muttered under my breath, creating four clones, I had to test a few things before I formulated a plan, for one did these two monsters have sensory skills? If so, what type? Chakra sensing? Smell? Or summon? Then, after knowing this, I would figure out how to play one step ahead of them, pulling a bunch of smoke bombs out of my pouch. Me and every single one of my clones threw them into the ground, creating a massive cloud of dust. In the process, I marked Kinkaku with my hunter's mark, something within me, knew I had to keep an eye on him, at all times. Ginkaku, the kid will escape you, and you know the rules if you can't play with your toy, I will Ginkaku grinned. Taking a deep breath, I ordered my clones to scattered, as I hit a top of a tree, if they had sensing chakra sensing abilities, they would notice I was above them immediately, any other sensing would take a bit more, and taking into considering they are playing with me, like a cat with a mouse, if they found me, they would not kill me, they had no reason to not yet, I was no threat to them. And they knew that. Hell no. Ginkaku shouted, cutting my fell guard in two with his weird looking blade, he's my toy. Don't barge in. Not yet. Sure, but hurry Kinkaku sighed, as the cloud of smoke dissipated. He scattered in four different directions, which means. Ginkaku hummed for a moment, but then his face was adorned with a wicked smile, fuck it, I will destroy the entire forest, the kid resurrects people, he will probably live right here, I realized why my body was urging me to run, why my body was trembling in fear, the reason behind all of this, was the red cloak of chakra that now covered the silver-haired shinobi. The chakra was repulsive, full of hate and utter madness, it was terrifying. It reminded me of Naruto when he fought Sasuke Orochimaru. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Ginkaku laughed, jumping out of the way, as Ginkaku created a small, but powerful ball of chakra, that slowly formed close to his mouth. Die, brat. With a battle cry filled with delight and madness, Ginkaku shot the ball into the horizon, and deep down I knew that even though the attack was shot far away from me, I would be caught in the explosion, but before the attack hit something, a blur of blue appeared and disappeared, taking the ball with it. The fuck was that? Ginkaku growled. For a moment, I felt as if my heart had stopped beating, and soon after a massive explosion was heard, a few miles away from where I was, the explosion was massive and terrifying, cementing the fact I would have died if that attack had hit where it was intended to hit. Water release. Water colliding wave. That voice, it was Sensei. Ginkaku. Look out. Ginkaku shouted as a massive tsunami of water swallowed everything in its wake towards him. Let's go, Tabarama whispered, grabbing my arm. I had no idea how he had appeared behind me, but I didn't care, for the first time since these two monsters had appeared, I had hope. I had no idea how, but Tabarama sensei had saved me, from what I could gather while he carried me away. He had some sort of teletransportation technique with a decent range, each use would take us a few miles away from the demon brothers, giving me a time to breathe. I had survived, albeit barely, no that was a lie, yes the brothers overpowered me, but that clouded my judgment. I had various skills to help me survive, even that attacked Ginkaku shot, but I was afraid, and it almost cost my life. Had I used divine shield, I would have survived, sorry Tabarama sensei, I muttered, not really knowing why I was apologizing, in the end, even if I prolonged the battle, they would have won, eventually. But somehow my inability to think during that frightful situation made me feel guilty. For what? Tabarama inquired. I was afraid I admitted, and he chuckled. Fear is a natural reaction when faced with what seems to be imminent doom, Tabarama sighed, patting me in the head, had you not been afraid of them, the result would have been different, remember Raiden, feeling anger fear, or any other emotion it's okay, letting them affect you it's not. 
that's the thing, I let it affect me, I muttered, my head low. I was too afraid to think properly, and while I managed to survive, I could have done so many things better but I couldn't, perhaps your judgment was clouded by the overwhelming gap between you and them, but you still managed to survive two monsters, alone Taburama smiled, as he dropped me on a tree branch, those two are monsters Raiden, the last time I fought them, I almost died. Granted I was alone, but they still managed to push me to the brink of death, an accomplishment not many shinobi have so, be proud you survived them, and now that I am proud you did, I smiled, some way that made me feel better, where is the team? A few miles ahead, Taburama informed me, we need to tell them about the situation, so let's move, with nothing more to say, Taburama sensei flickered out of sight, with me following him close behind. Taburama Senju POV Raiden had survived the Gold and Silver Brothers, an accomplishment very few shinobi could brag about, even if they were playing with him, he had managed to keep them entertained long enough for me to arrive. I was proud of him, of the shinobi he was becoming. Taburama Sensei. Hiruzen greeted with a smile that conveyed his relief. Hey, Raiden waved at Hiruzen, who hugged him without giving him time to process or dot a sight to behold laughs amongst comrades, I never thought this one would be my last, reunion is over, we have much to discuss, right, Hiruzen and Raiden nodded. Raiden encountered the Ginkaku squad and killed one of their members, I informed them, soon after, Raiden fought the gold and silver brothers, they are still alive, aren't they? Hiruzen inquired, his tone low. Yes, the entire area where Raiden was fighting them was surrounded by them, if I have to take an educated guess, it was in case if Raiden managed to escape the brothers, also from what I managed to feel, they had a squad of over 20 shinobis all with Jounin chakra levels, I nodded, at the pace, they were following me when I rescued Raiden, they will catch up to us in a few hours at most. A group that big with those two, our chances of winning are very low, Kagami sighed. Which means, one of us has to stay behind to buy the rest some time, Hamura gulped, his hands shaking. At this, Danzo tensed up as if he was trying to say something, but once again Hiruzen beat him to the punch, I will, Hiruzen stated, I will stay behind and buy us some time, Hiruzen. I was about to offer myself. Danzo growled. Hiruzen and Danzo, always competing, like foolish children, I will miss this, nonsense. I will be the decoy obviously, I stated, you are the young flames that will continue to protect the village with your will of fire, and as I long as I breathe, I will protect you all, you can't. You're the hokage. Danzo shook his head, there's no greater shinobi in the village than you. You are sacrificing your life, for the mistake of a brat Kaharu exclaimed, pointing at Raiden. I glared at her with enough intensity to make her lower her head, Raiden performed admirably and by no means should be blamed for this, the Ginkaku force is most likely after us, which is why they were here, to begin with, even though our intel said they would be at Kiri, killing us, would not only get rid of the Hokage, but the strongest squad in the leaf. It's very obvious objective when you think about it, Kagami sighed. Then let me stay, if they kill you, I can bring you back I can hide, and wait for them to leave, and resurrect you, Raiden said, and I smiled. I am afraid this is a mission I must complete on my own, I patted Raiden on the head, taking a deep breath I stood up, and looked at Hiruzen, Seru protect those who love the village and those who believe in you. And take care of those whom you will entrust the next generation to. Starting tomorrow, you will become the Hokage, Hiruzen took a step back, looking at me in shock, what a foolish child, I, me. I nodded, Seru, I'm leaving Kanoha to you, yes sir. Hiruzen nodded. Before I leave to face the enemy, one last order. I smiled, looking at Raiden, for your implacable skill, I, Taburama Senju, promote you, Raiden Senju, to Jonan, thanks, Taburama Sensei, Raiden smiled, fighting the tears forming up his eyes. Protect Kanoha, and nurture the future generation for me, I hugged Raiden, an action that surprised even me, age was really getting to me, when did I become so sentimental, if Hashirama were alive, he would laugh at me and for a good reason, even though he was always the most sentimental of all of us. 
I will, Raiden nodded, and right there, on his eyes, I knew I had done, somehow, I had managed to ignite the will of fire within his heart, good. I can die at peace. Goodbye. At this, I teleported to one of my seal markers, waiting for the Ginkaku force to arrive, for my death to arrive, did I have any regrets, no, maybe dying without seeing the peace big brother dreamed about, but that beyond me now, that dream is now in the shoulders of the next generation, I did my part, it's now their turn. Ginkaku. Look. Ginkaku shouted, stopping a few trees ahead of me, it's the second Hokage. Brilliant observation, I scoffed. Dying for your teammates? That's a stupid plan for a man famous for his intelligence, Ginkaku cackled. It's what a true shinobi would do, I grinned, getting into position, not that is something you can understand, weeks had passed since Tabarama sensei had died, and the guilt was eating on the inside. Had I been stronger, I could have saved him. Perhaps it wasn't my fault, perhaps it was completely out of my hands to save him, perhaps it was destiny. But when has logic stopped sentimental guilt? All I could do now was keep moving forward, fighting for what he believed in, fighting for what he made me believe in. A foolish thought perhaps, but it was the wind under my wings. Needless to say, his death didn't stop the war, on the contrary, many sought this opportunity as a way to destroy Konoha once and for all, so in response, Hiruzen disbanded the Leaf Strike team, Perhaps it was his way to cope with everything, our sensei's death, his new charge, I didn't blame him, I would have done the same. Hamura and Kaharu were sent to Konoha to deal with some missions that required their political expertise, while Kagami and I remained on the front lines. My new squad was not exactly happy with me commanding them, but still followed my orders, I suppose I can understand them, it's not easy being an adult, following orders from a six-year-old. My squad specialization was frontal assault, killing as many enemies as possible, without dying in the process, a rather gory task, but one we were good at. Jonan at the age of 6, two promotions within a year, I think it's safe to assume no one will ever break my record. Something to be proud of I guess. Captain, Yumi Yamanaka, one of the many Chunins under my command saluted, the squad was wondering if you wanted to train with us. I looked at her and nodded, in a minute, start without me, I told her. Understood, Yumi nodded diligently, and as she left, I couldn't help but wonder, how did they feel I was the one supervising their training, some of them were old enough to be my parents, funny developments life takes I guess. Saratobi here is in POV being the Hokage was something I always had wanted, just not like this, not at the cost of Sensei's life. But I was going to make him proud. Perhaps I wasn't ready, but I was going to do my very best. But first, those two brothers had to die. And die they would, of that I would personally make sure of. Here is an anger is clouding your judgment, and mistated, I know you want to avenge your sensei, but this entire plan you are scheming, sounds dangerous, I glared at Enma, my summon and sighed, I know, I admitted, my hand gripping the edges of my desk with such force, the wood was giving in under the pressure, but I need to make sure they die I can't focus on peace. When those two still breath, and sighed, rubbing the back of his head, but why do you need the kid? Raiden wants to see them dead as much as I do, maybe even more Tabarama sensei connected with him more than anyone, almost like a father would with his son, I explained, remembering how much time Tabarama would spend with Raiden, he needs closure, and so do I their deaths will give us that, you are a crazy brat here is an Enma sighed, but you count with me just don't let the kid die because of this, I won't, and besides at the pace Raiden is improving, he won't need my protection, those two monsters will, I stated, looking over the mission files of Raiden, and how the enemy forces were calling him, the walking calamity, a fitting name I supposed. Raiden send you POV training with my squad was an easy task, at least for me, for them, it was hard, they were weak, I was not. Well, maybe I was being unfair with them, they weren't weak, they were average, and I was not, though I wasn't sure if I could said I was strong, defeating a squad of 10 chunin and some jonin without breaking a sweat was hardly a big accomplishment. But it was good training, especially when I put handicaps on me, making the entire ordeal all the more interesting, your attacks are too predictable, 
you have to make them less direct, I commented as I dodged their combined efforts to take me down. Any tips? One of the Chunin inquired, and I hummed. I would say try to avoid patterns, because they can be translated to rhythm, and once the enemy understands your rhythm you lost, I answered, remembering what Taburama sensei used to say, so mix it up, keep them on their toes, or they will take yours, I have a kid his age, this is creepy, one of the jonin muttered in the back. Perhaps it is, I chuckled, startling the jonin, but in war, age is but a number to fill the deceased questionnaire. The question is how big do you want that number to be? With that said, I flickered back to my tent, where I started to go over Taburama Sensei's notes and the list of things he had last taught me. I already knew them, but they gave me a sense of I don't know, nostalgia? Bitter happiness? I couldn't really tell, I promise you Sensei, next time I see them, I will be ready for them, I promised under my breath, tears threatening to damp my scrolls. At this, DeAndre whined, as if saying, don't worry we will bite those fuckers soon, it's okay buddy, I'm not sad, at this my mutant wolf looked at me, his eyes conveying a clear message, one that said, you are not fooling me, alright maybe I'm sad, but I think I deserve to be, you do, Kagami nodded, as he entered my tent. Kagami I thought you were in Kiri, I greeted him. I was, but I finished my assignment earlier than expected, Kagami nodded. I heard what you did in Iowa, and the title you got sometimes I forget you are 6 years old, sometimes I forget too, I sighed. The walking calamity, quite a fearsome title they even updated your bingo entry, to kill on sight, Kagami added, and I chuckled. I want to see them try, I replied, leaving my tent. Yumi Yamanaka POV Raiden was different from other captains we had before, he was young for one but extremely efficient, most of us assumed it was because he learned under the second Hokage, who was known as the technician during his lifetime, others simply accepted the fact he was a genius, a prodigy, and that because of that he was different, me. I didn't know what to think, not that it mattered, he was my captain, and had more experience than me, age was nothing but a number, one that in war didn't matter. We have an assignment in Kiri, Raiden who had flickered to our tent announced, we leave in 10, so hurry up, at this he flickered out of the room, leaving us to rush, a mission in Kiri was a bit out of our zone of comfort, normally we would be sent to Iowa based on our elemental advantage, or to Suna, but Kiri was unexpectedly new, but I wasn't afraid, if anyone could protect us. It was our captain. Did anyone get my kunes I need my kunes. Bumo the ceiling specialist of our team cried out. I'll give you some. But hurry, we don't want to make our captain wait for us, Suri, our medic Nin, shuddered, I still have the memory of the day he got his first moniker. By killing an army of 1000 Iwa ninjas, in the most ironic way possible, by bringing one mountain down on their heads, Kuro chuckled, that kid is terrifying am I right? We all nodded. Yumi Yamanaka POV the road to Kiri was rather uneventful, but we all knew what this meant, soon something would go wrong, it always did, when this type of silence happened. As we skipped through the misty vegetation of Kiri, I felt a massive chakra enter my detection range, there is an enemy incoming a very strong one. I informed my captain who studied me for a second, before he nodded. Any details? Raiden inquired. It's a male his chakra feels like it, he's excited, and maybe a bit angry too? I answered, trying to get a better reading of the chakra approaching. I see, Raiden nodded, once he arrives, I want you all to scatter and let me handle him, I have a feeling whoever is coming, is well beyond your pay grade, he was of that there was no doubt, but we were a team, leaving him alone felt wrong. We could help. Maybe, but let me assess that, Raiden ordered. Soon after, the massive chakra signature I had felt arrived with a loud boom. It was a man of tall and slender physique. He had blonde hair, almost white, and a triangular goatee, accompanied by a thin mustache, the man had no eyebrows, and his eyes promised death itself. Who among you is the so-called walking calamity? The man asked, his tone carefree as if our presence was unimportant. Mir Aiden answered, his eyes focused on the target ahead. Holy crap, I knew you were young, but fuck, not this. 
Young congrats I guess, the name is Jinjetsu Hazuki, and I have to unfortunately kill you, Jinjetsu Hazuki the C second Mizu Mizukich. We have to run, there is no way we can beat this guy. I understand, Raiden nodded, would you mind letting my squad scatter and leave? Or are you against that idea? A shinobi that cares for his teammates, you have my respect I won't kill them just for that, Jinjetsu smiled. Scatter, I will deal with him alone, Raiden ordered, but a quick flick of his hands said otherwise, that small but important movement sent a message that said, hide and let me know anything you catch from him, he wanted us to observe and share with him through the mind-body transmission. Understood. I nodded, scattering with the rest of the team away. Raiden send you POV, tell me, began Jinjetsu, are you ready to die? At this, I quickly devised several possible answers. Who knows how about you? Ha ha ha. Fun. Jinjetu laughed. I looked at him arms crossed and said nothing, he was 10 levels ahead of me, meaning he had the advantage, but I planned to change that. With a smile, I took a step forward as I uncrossed my arms, my legs parted slightly for better support, as I waited for my opponent to start. Jinjetsu noticed this and with a smile attacked, his speed was worthy of praise, but not mine, using power word. Shield to add some power, I parried his attack easily with one hand, and attacked with the other, using slam. Jinjetsu dodged the attack and turn by pivoting on itself. With great speed, he grabbed my hand and sent me flying into the air, using the momentum of his move. Using a clone to stabilize, I easily maneuvered back into the ground, just in time to see Jinjetsu pouncing on me again. But I was ready for this, and used Hammer of Justice to stun the Mizukage into place, as I casted Rain of Fire. Breaking out of my stun, Jinjetsu cursed under his breath summoning a giant clam that blocked my Rain of Fire. Impressive didn't think you would have Jinjutsu in your arsenal, so Hammer of Justice is considered a Jinjutsu, interesting, I will admit it brat, you are very strong, but this ends now, we'll see I retorted by casting Soul Stone on myself, just in case. Looking at the clam, I casted Hunter's Mark on it, because something didn't feel right. My reasoning behind this action was simple, a summon like that had no real battle applications, meaning it was a support type of summon, and those types of summons were the worst kind to deal with. Let's see how you deal with this. Demonic illusion. Steaming multi-storied building. As if on cue, the clam started to expel vapor from its shell, covering the entire area in a deep thick mist. As it did this, the clam started to move without making a sound, hiding as it continued to expel his heavy charge chakra vapors. Two can play this, I announced, summoning my Felguard and Deandre into battle, ordering them to go after the clam. Noticing this, the now hidden Mizukage chuckled, so you can see through the mist, very few understand the nature of my jutsu, and the few that do, die before they can do something about it, in reality, I still didn't understand what was the point of his jutsu, the hidden mist technique was very common in Kiri, but never with the summon. Which led me to believe this mist was different to the others. Now the question is, will your summons defeat my clam first or will you die under my illusion? Ah, an illusionary mist, now I understood, meaning the clam was my main priority now. What a frightening technique. Captain. This mist is dangerous I can feel it affecting your chakra paths. A bit too late Yumi, but still appreciated, I inwardly thought as I ran towards the clam, with no doubt the Mizukage behind. Using Bestial Wrath I empowered DeAndre, increasing his damage output to the massive clam, as I barely parried an attack from the Mizukage that managed to cut my arm deep. Cursing under my breath I realized the Mizukage was not going to let me get his summon that easily, which means I would have to change my approach, using Spectral Sight, I caught sight of the Mizukage and jumped at him, much to his shock. How can you? In disbelief, the Mizukage lowered his guard for a brief second, giving me enough time to close the distance gap between us. Once in front of him, I unsheathed my tanto and swung my blade at him, snapping out his initial shock. He responded by parrying my blows with a kunai, you are more dangerous than I initially realized, I've been told that, I muttered, jumping back transforming into my flight form. Not so fast. 
Jinjetsu shouted, steaming danger tyranny. At this the vapor around the Mizukage started to gather in one place, creating a defective looking clone, but considering he was the Mizukage I doubted that thing was defective. Looking over where the clam was to check the process of my summons, I noticed it was about to die, thanks to the combined damage my Felguard and DeAndre were dealing. Faster than I could see, the defective looking clone blurred out of sight appearing in front of me, the creature was fast faster than the Mizukage, Dai Jinjetsu smiled from the ground, as the strange looking clone morphed his arm into an axe bringing it down on me. In the nick of time, I switched between forms into my guardian form, tanking the attack, losing an arm in the process. The attack however had brought me back into the ground, where the illusionary mist started to cloud my senses. Aren't you full of surprises Jinjetsu's voice echoed around the mist, seemingly coming from every direction. Turning back into a human, I casted Flash Heal, regenerating my recently cut arm, as Yumi informed me via the mind link, the Mizukage was moving towards his clam, while the clone moved towards me. It was clear the Mizukage wanted to keep the mist active, as it would give him an edge over this battle too strong to ignore. Using Blink just when the clone was about to strike, I teleported past the clone, and used Aspect of the Cheetah and Sprint, increasing my movement speed exponentially, within a second, I reached the second Mizukage, and with a smile I looked over the clam and used Shadow Step, teleporting behind the clam, game over, with a winning grin, I used Execute on the clam, breaking the summon in half. You little bastard. Jinjetsu growled, as the mist dissipated. I am both little and a bastard, so I guess you are right on both accounts, I retorted, summing my water elemental into the battle. You really know how to push my buttons just like that bastard of Mewu, the Mizukage hissed, his weird looking clone hovering behind him. After I killed the massive clam, the battle rhythm changed, the Mizukage was faster, and so was his clone, at this rate I was going to lose within a few minutes, using the mind link Yumi and I had. I ordered my squad to run back to the base, my priority no longer was to kill the Mizukage, because I doubted I had the power necessary to do so, but to save my teammates. As expected Yumi tried to refute, but I quickly explained to her I had a plan, and she reluctantly accepted, leaving with the team. If I had to be honest, I never intended to win I had hopes for this encounter, but not certainty which is why I had activated my soul stone, in case the tide of this battle resulted as I expected. Do you have any idea how long will it take me to grow another clam? Jinjetsu bellowed in anger, six months. Six. That didn't sound as bad as he make it sound, but who am I to judge, Chaos Bolt? With finesse the Mizukage dodged my attack, and blasted me into the ground with a powerful kick to the chest. Seeing my chakra bar, I knew I was running out of cards, not that it mattered, all I was waiting was for my team to be out of his reach, while he had said he would let them live, I lived by Taburama's principle of never trusting another shinobi, unless that shinobi it's you comrade, and he was not. I have to admit kid, you are strong frighteningly so, but you are a few years too early to kill me, the Mizukage boasted, what was with people boasting before winning a battle? it was almost like a requirement they had to fulfill. Fire release. Great fireball technique. Cutting him short from his monologue, I blasted him with a great fireball, one he dodged by jumping over the attack. Steaming danger tyranny exploding barrage. Doing some quick hand signs, he created five more clones that cornered me. Die. Soon after he said that, the five clones exploded, engulfing me in a steamy skin ripping prison of agony that destroyed my body bit by bit. Jinjetsu Hazuki POV the brat was stronger than I had expected, six years old, and he had managed to kill my precious clam and pushed me to fight him seriously, me a cage fighting a six-year-old shinobi seriously, that alone was a testament to his strength. I shudder to think what would have become had I let him alive. Well, you for it well brat, but I was better, I said to no one in particular, looking at the blood steaming puddle that used to be him, his innards scattered all around the area, painting the very image of death. With that said and done, I flickered out of sight, there was no point in staying here any longer, in my rage I had destroyed the kid's brain and body, 
making any information he had a lost cause. When I casted Soul Stone, I wasn't sure how the spell worked, I mean I had never died before, well, I did. Before coming to this world, but that's beyond the point, the point was I didn't know how my spell worked, how it would react after my death, and now I did. After I died, there was nothing for a very brief moment that is, after that, I was floating above my own remains, it was a weird feeling, with a sense of continuance that I didn't expect, one moment I was alive, and the next I was seeing my own corpse or whatever remained of it, all in the span of a blink. It was a somewhat disorientating feeling. Then all I had to do was wait for the Mizukage to leave, which didn't take long. The rest came naturally, as breathing would come, I knew how to force the laws of nature to bring me back to life in my disembodied state, and so I did. That was weird, I muttered under my breath, opening my eyes, once again with the same feeling of continuance, a blink, and I was awake, tired and maybe a bit groggy but awake. Time to go back, explaining people I could resurrect others was hard, explaining them I can resurrect myself was even harder, not like I planned to do so. But Yumi had felt when my chakra vanished, she had felt my sudden and violent death, and well, I had to explain, I didn't go much into detail, but I explained my squad the basics of what I had done. And the simple shrugged it off as one of the many weird times I do. Raiden, Kagami, who had been also sent to the Kiri post greeted, I have good news for you, curious, I looked at him, and asked, you do? The gold and silver brothers tried to attack the third Hokage on his mission in Kumo, and he killed them, I stopped dead in my tracks at this Saratobi had killed those two. According to the report I was sent, the second Hokage had managed to kill their entire squad before dying, which left Hiruzen to destroy those two alone, making the whole ordeal all the more easy, Kagami added, and I cursed under my breath. This wasn't what Hiruzen had promised me, he told me I was going to be with him when they died he promised. In anger, I flared my chakra up, breaking the very ground I was standing up, until Kagami put a hand on my shoulder, and said, you are scaring your squad, at this I blinked in realization, stopping what I was doing. I apologize, I was angry, not at what Hiruzen accomplished, but that he did so without me there. I wanted to see those two draw their last breaths under my presence, I wanted to see their lives slowly vanish from their eyes, I wanted to kill them, myself. Surviving the Mizukage gave me some unwanted attention, they had even updated my moniker from the Calamity to the Immortal in Kiri, and the Undead Calamity in Iwa, it was strange to say something. Reputation, I sighed, opening my reputation tab. It had been a while since I opened most of my tabs, and it was time to check them. Kanoha revered 75 17 21,000 XP Tsunade exalted 1200 10,000 XP here is in exalted 871 10,000 XP Kagami honored 977 12,000 XP Nawaki honored 120 12,000 XP Mito Yuzumaki honored 78 12,000 XP Arachimaru neutral 0 3,000 XP Jiraiya Neutral 0 3000 XP Danzo, Neutral 0 3000 XP Kaharu Unfriendly 0 3000 XP Hamura Hostile 28 99 3000 XP Mora Orphan Matron Hated 0 36000 XP Iwagakur. Feared 0 120000 XP Mew Hostile 21 3000 XP Inoki Hated 0 36000 XP Kumagakur Hated 0 36000 XP A Hostile 0 3000 XP B Hostile 0 3000 XP Sun Agakur Hated 0 36000 XP Karigakur Hated 0 36000 XP Jinjetsu Hazuki Hated 0 36000 XP Blinking the tab out, I had to admit I was surprised Tsunade's little brother had such a good opinion of me. And what was more impressive was that Tsunade still had such a good opinion of me, even though we haven't seen each other in almost two years. Raiden, Hiruzen shouted comically as he entered my room, startling the crap out of me. I really need to see if I can acquire some sensing abilities, I have good news. Jesus fuck, I breathed out, glaring at him with the burning hate of 1000 suns, knock next time. You are six I still don't have to knock, Hiruzen winked and I groaned. What is the good news? Did the war end? Taking a deep breath, I asked. 
Almost right now, Kumo and Suna are keeping the war on rails because they have enough supplies to outlast us or they will. Here is an elaborated as he took a seat in my bed, two supply shipments are going to each command point respectively in a week, one shipment for Suna and one for Kumo. If we stop them, we can force them to sign a peace treaty, brilliant, I muttered in realization. Exactly, so how about we do one last mission, I will take the Kumo shipment, while you and Kagami take the Suna one. The mission parameters are simple destroy the shipment and leave no survivors, any questions? That was a lot to unpack, but it didn't matter, as long as this pointless bloodshed ended, I was in. I nodded, when do I leave? Transforming into my druid flight form, a peregrine falcon, I soared through the skies approaching Suna alone, with my speed it took me 5 hours to get there, where I started to scout the area, locating the supplies that I was tasked to destroy. 1, 10, 20, 40 enemies were guarding the caravan going to the command post in Suna, now the question was did I wait for Kagami and my squad that were about 10 hours away, or do I try to nuke the caravan out of existence? None of the enemies guarding the caravan was exceptionally strong, their levels varied between 15 and 20, meaning I could easily take them, then again, in numbers I could be overwhelmed. Time to experiment, shadow clone technique. Creating 15 clones, I landed on the ground, with each one of my clones in a different corner, successfully encasing the enemy ninja, metamorphosis. My clones and I said with a single voice, transforming into hellish demonic creatures, blade dance. And so the carnage begun, me and my 15 demonic clones started to cut the entire enemy squad into slices, leaving nothing behind, but the bloody reminder of a massacre that the sand would soon wash away, I should really start using the multi-shadow clones more often. If only they didn't take so much chakra, in reality they were only useful if you were fighting against weaker enemies, because you didn't have to save your chakra with them. The good thing about clones was that the skills they used were based on the chakra they had, percentage-wise, meaning it didn't affect me at all using lots of powerful spells at a time. Joining my hands together I grinned, rain of fire, soon alongside with my clones, we painted the sky of red, as flames destroyed the last hope of Suna. With the mission completed I returned to my squad and informed them I had go ahead with the mission without them, some of them whined, while Kagami simply shrugged saying, less paperwork for me, what a strange man he was. Now, all that was left to do was what I like to call, the waiting game with the Suna supply line destroyed, and here is in destroying the Kumo one, sooner or later all the villages would be forced to sign a peace treaty, not because they want to. But because the feudal lords will force them to, after all a war without winners, it's rather expensive. It will take weeks before we hear from Saratobi, Kagami side, approaching me with a cup of sake, want some? He offered noticing I was seeing his cup. I'm six, I chuckled. And? Old enough to kill, old enough to drink, Kagami snorted, besides, civilian rules don't apply to shinobi, you are legally an adult by shinobi rules, never thought about that, I sighed, taking a sip of the drink, is it bad I kinda like it? The drink? Kagami asked and I nodded, only if you make it bad anything is bad without moderation. Fair enough, I chuckled, I can't wait to go back to the village I kin to miss doing D missions, all this fighting, it's getting exhausting, it is, Kagami nodded, so. D missions huh? Didn't do many I think two or three, I would have to ask Saru, he has my file, he ought to know better than me, I nodded. Only if he can find the paper you haven't seen his office yet, Kagami laughed. I can see how that would be a problem, I snorted. I doubt you will be making any D missions, with all the money this war has made us I will take a year off, I need it Kagami sighed, taking a sip of his sake, before passing it out to me. Under the risk of sounding stupid and humiliating myself, I have to say I assumed we were fighting without pay, like you know, I chuckled, in all honesty I had no idea I was getting paid, that shit was never disclosed to me. Of course we are getting paid, you must have even more money saved in your account than I do, Kagami chuckled, I mean, you have done more S-ranking missions than me, well shit, I'm taking a vacation then, I chuckled, wondering how much money I had. 
A few weeks after my mission in Suna, the war came to an end as Saratobi had predicted. I found out about this while I was on a mission in Iowa destroying their bases, mid-battle, I got a summon from Hirazin saying that the five cages were meeting in the land of iron to sign an armistice treaty which would last for a minimum of 20 years, enforced by the feudal lords of each nation, I was happy to say the least, peace while momentary was finally here. It seems this is our last mission raid in Taicho, Yumi smiled. I looked at her for a moment before I started to laugh, I sure hope so, we all deserve a nice vacation, oh yeah, Yumi giggled, rolling her eyes, I will probably disappear in the hot springs, never to be seen again, that sounds pleasant, I chuckled, wondering what I would do after all of this. I really had no idea, war defined me, changed me, morphed me into a different type of man, and while I craved peace, I had no idea what I would do with it. For now, I will wait. The moment Hirazin gives me the green light to go back to Kanoha, there I would figure out what to do next, maybe do some quests. War, while productive in the exp game, had no real quests for me. As I waited for Hirazin to come back from his trip to the land of iron with the signed treaty, I trained and experimented with my techniques, mixing them, trying new combos, and different ways to apply them in battle, like how mixing Rain of Fire with Blizzard created a very odd but powerful combination. Or how having multiple clones spamming the same ability increased the damage output I had in battle, in short, I was testing what I never did before. Stats, I muttered, taking a deep breath, curious to see if my training was yielding any increase on my stats. Name. Raiden send you level 34 HP. 5700 5700, Chakra. 85 49 11968, Energy. 400 400 Fury. 0 200 experience equals 49571 55 460 stats intelligence equals 374 strength equals 314 agility equals 351 stamina equals 285 none it used to be easy to increase those bastards now my training regime is making no progress whatsoever oh well i guess i'll up my training a notch when i go back to kanoha the fuck is that, I mumbled, seeing a small furry creature running towards me, the closer it got, the closer the image became, it was a monkey, a small but fast one at that. Are you Raiden? The monkey inquired, and I nodded, by now realizing this monkey belonged to Seru, alright then, the peace treaty was a success, you and your squad are free to leave to Kanoha, if you don't want, as expected, my squad eagerly accepted to come to Kanoha with me. And so I created a portal, a skill Hirazin doesn't know about, mostly because so far it has no battle applications, as it only works by creating a portal to a city I am welcomed at. You can create portals? Yumi inquired, her eyes shining with excitement. Yes, but only to Kanoha, and only if I'm out of combat, I nodded as I walked through the portal that connected directly to the center of Kanoha. On the other side, a squad of around 20 Anbu was waiting, Heck the moment I stepped out of the portal, I had one of them, pointing at my throat with a tanto. Raiden? The masked individual muttered, his tanto still lightly touching my throat. Put that toothpick back in its sheath, I'm one of you, I chuckled, I kinda understood why they were so jumpy, maybe I should have sent a raven or something to let them know I had this power, so they would expect me suddenly popping in the center of Kanoha. His chakra signature matches, one of the Anbu informed. I apologize, one can never be too careful, the Anbu in front of me sighed, sheathing his blade, how many more are coming? He inquired. Only my squad, I answered, and soon after my squad started to walk through the portal, one by one. Oh. We should have let them know. Yumi whispered, and I sighed, how right she was. Soon I'd send you POV today was like any other day, I was shopping for some food in the market, a few essential things, nothing much, and then I saw him, Raiden, he was back, he was alive, this meant so many things, the war ended, and I got my friend back. I stared at him for so long trying to process all of this, as an array of indescribable emotions washed over me. I just wanted to stare and study every feature on his tired face, trying to see if anything else had changed, and if so memorize it. It was overwhelming, what to say, 
What to do I waited so long for this war to end, and now, I was unprepared. Should I say hi? Hug him? Wait for him to come to me? What was the right course of action? Sunaid? That voice, it was still the same, but it carried a weight I couldn't fully comprehend, with trepidation I turned around giving him my brightest smile, or at least trying so, I'm back, with a faint smile, Raiden extended his arms, hugging me. Good, I smiled, hugging him back. I knew he had some scars, I could feel it, and now that he was here, I was going to help him he was family after all. So are we cousins now? Raiden chuckled into my ear. Nope, I snorted. I had asked Grandma Mito about that, for reasons. Well, bad for you, cause I am awesome, Raiden grinned, breaking the hug. Joan and I heard, I smiled, not bad as expected of my first student, humble much? Raiden laughed, how I miss this. After my reunion with Tsunade, things continued, it was good a sense of continuance I needed, it was as if I never left the village, as if I hadn't killed thousands. It made me feel, for a moment once again, normal. Though, if I have to be honest, something did change, Tsunade was a bit different, not a bad different though, I just don't know how to explain. Is like, she didn't want to spend a day without me, every morning I wake up to her knocking at my door, to talk or train, or just sit on a tree without doing anything. I liked it, maybe that is why she was doing it. Who knows? Wake up. A cheerful voice interrupted my meditations. Ready to train? Sunaid smiled, jumping to my window. I returned a grin, I am, but aren't you getting tired of losing? Sunaid rolled her eyes as she snorted, I know I can't beat you, but it's fun, besides, while I wait for my sensei to arrive, you are the best teacher available, well she was right. Fair enough, I chuckled, flickering out of my room. Show off, Sunaid mumbled. A few minutes later, we were in the middle of the woods. Where Tsunade was sparring against one of my clones, while I ate some breakfast. The fight was one-sided, with my clone dodging and deflecting her attacks at every turn, force is meaningless without skilled Tsunade, you pack quite a punch, but that without speed and precision, it's nothing, I can see that, Tsunade chuckled, as my clone kicked her in the guts. Can you lower the difficulty to Genin? Ah. How cute she thinks my clone is fighting above Genin level, adorable. I am I grinned, I am keeping my clone to the level I had when I left Kanoha in all actuality, you are stronger than my clone, but. My clone has something you don't. Experience, huh, Tsunade sighed, so to defeat him, all I have to do is get creative. I wonder where this is going. Punching the ground, Tsunade threw several smoke bombs into the ground, creating a thick curtain of multicolored smoke, then she pulled a kunai from her pouch and lunged at the clone, a good strategy, but ineffectively slow. Nope, my clone chuckled, jumping into a tree. Oh come on. Tsunade cried. You are getting closer, I assured her, but if you want my personal recommendation, you need more speed you have strength and chakra, but you are painfully slow maybe get some training weights? Speed got it, Tsunade nodded. Yeah, I nodded, wondering if I was doing the shinobi world any good by telling Tsunade to increase her speed. Alright I am done for the day, Tsunade sighed, sitting on the grass. Well, it's my turn then, I chuckled. It was time to train my shuriken jutsu. Yes. Go go. Tsunade urged me in a spirited tone, unable to hide her excitement, she had gotten a liking to see me train, she thinks it's awe-striking. Chuckling at her enthusiasm, I grabbed my kunai, as I ordered my clone to put targets around. Once the clone was done, I wedged one kunai in between all my fingers, making a total of eight kunais in my hands. Eight iron claws that reminded me of the days I used to pretend I was Wolverine. Taking a deep breath, I lowered my face and focused on my surroundings. For a brief second that expanded in the shaking of the trees under the wing, I let out a small breath, as I kicked lightly at the ground beneath my feet. In the air, with my body upside down, I looked around, locating the targets, and with a swift movement, I threw the kunai, shortly followed by a familiar sound. TSK, TSK TSK TSK. All eight of them in the center, wow, Tsunade said, amazed with the result. It was good, 
but a moving target, it's harder I added. Soon after we finished with our daily training, I walked Sunade back to the Senju compound, where Mito resided. Today I had been invited to dine with her, and Sunade, a very prestigious invitation apparently, considering Mito didn't invite anyone, according to Tsunade. As we walked out of the forest, a very familiar feeling caught my attention, killing intent, Sunade, I want you to run, and if possible bring help, I told her, with a tone of finality. Sunade, quickly catching what was happening, asked, how many? One, I wasn't sure, in fact, sending her alone could result badly. Change of planes, creating two clones, I ordered one of them to carry Tsunade back to her grandma's house, and the other to protect them. I will send help, Tsunade mouthed, as my clone flickered away with her. So, are you after me or her? I asked, loud enough to be heard. Both, but for different reasons we want you dead, and we want her to be a wood-style brood mother, a tall man, of burly composure said as he landed a few meters behind me, my partner will get her two clones won't stop him, looking over his level, Yuzunaga Batero level 21 I smiled, you are severely underestimating me, but that's good, for me. Not for you, hanging his head low, Yuzunaga let an ironic smile slip across his face. Am I though? In the blink of an eye, the distance between us closed, and with incredible speed, Yuzunaga punched my throat and solar plexus simultaneously, he then pulled a kunai out, digging it into my stomach. Haha, <laughs> so much for the undead calamity. Yuzunaga laughed, but as my body fell to the ground leaving a trail of blood. So you are from Iwa, I whispered into his ear. What? Jumping into a tree, Yuzunaga growled, I killed you how? The undead part should be a dead giveaway, but it's not because of that, I chuckled, looking over my corpse, or should I say my illusionary clone. Jinjutsu but the files say you don't use Jinjutsu, Yuzunaga muttered in disbelief, as my corpse disappeared into nothingness. I normally don't, but Taburama-sensei was very clear when he told me a shinobi must master everything, I chuckled. But when? Yuzunaga asked, when did you put me in the illusion? The first clone I created and never dissipated, he did it for me, you would be surprised how easy it's to infect someone else with your chakra when they are overconfident, I answered, anyway time to take a nap, using hammer of justice, I stunned him into place, and then with a chakra powered punch, I knocked him out cold. That's one, now onto the before I was able to finish that sentence, one of the clones I had sent with Tsune dissipated, transferring to me the information that the other enemy had been taken care of rather easily, and that Tsunade was already within Kanoha walls. Well, let's see what the torture department wants to do with these two, I sighed, as I wondered, I would have time to buy something for Mito before 7. A few days after the attack, Hiruzen arrived. I informed him what had happened, and as expected he suspected the same thing I did. You see, there was a reason beyond interrogation of why I hadn't killed the enemy ninja that tried to kill me and kidnap Tsunade. Because, the one that sent them, knew they were gonna fail, meaning their mission objective was not success, but something else, their objective was to rekindle the flames of war, by having us break the peace treaty. In short, they sent two scapegoats to die, so that they could say we broke the treaty by killing two of their ninjas. At least that was my theory, otherwise their plan made no sense, the ninja they had sent were weak, and considering my fame in Iowa, it was stupid to send them after me. The sad thing about all of this was, the poor idiots didn't know about this plan, in their heads their cage had sent them on this mission, because according to them no one else besides them could complete it. In the end, Hiruzen let them go, for the sake of preserving the peace, showing Iwa in the process we would not fall for such attempts, not gonna lie, I wanted to kill them, but the risk of igniting the war again, was too big. You did well, Hiruzen sighed. And yet I feel dirty, I sighed. I understand the feeling, Hiruzen agreed, so I heard you have been training one of my students, I have, considering you haven't taught her anything, I nodded. I just got here here is in pouted. By the way, unless it is a necessity don't call me for a mission, I need a vacation and time to train, I informed him, with a tone of finality. I needed a break from all of this. Sure, Hiruzen nodded. 
Well, time to go. I had a lot of things to do, like buying groceries and the sweet bacon bits DeAndre loves so much. Oh, I almost forgot. I heard you had dinner with Mito and Sunade. How was it? At this, a heavy drop of cold sweat fell onto the floor. That dinner was strange. Dinner in the Senju household a few days ago I arrived at the Senju main household, after carrying the two enemy ninja back to the torture department, the house was big and very well decorated. The wood in most of the building was charged with residual chakra, a very odd feeling. Welcome, Mito Yuzumaki greeted, and for a second I detailed her from head to toe, noticing she had a long, bright red hair that was arranged in buns with hairpins in them, and three clips in the front keeping the whole style together, her eyes were black and pupilless, giving an odd sensation when being looked at. For her clothes she wore an elaborate high-collared kimono with the Yuzushiagakur symbol on the back of the obi, which was tied around her waist. But what got my attention was, the familiar sensation I felt on her chakra, it was almost like those two. Raiden are you okay? Sunaid inquired in a worried tone, snapping me out of my long reverie. Sorry, I got lost in my own mind for a second, I chuckled, bowing respectfully to Mito as a greeting. It's okay, but if it helps you don't worry, I keep a tie leash on that beast, Mito smiled, walking towards what I assumed was the kitchen. The what? Sunaid mumbled, as I tried to process what had happened. Taking a deep breath, I smiled and proceeded to enter the Senju household. And then, things got weird. I couldn't believe my own ears when I heard Tabarama had adopted someone into the clan, Mito chuckled, as the servants served the food, but I can see why you are a smart kid, very much so, I would even go as far as to say he saw himself in you, who would have guessed, Tabarama being a sentimental one. I always assumed my hashi was the sentimental. I will be forever grateful for what Tabarama sensei did for me, I smiled, he was a weird combination of cold and warm, that he was, Mito nodded. I heard you have a few monikers, Sunade piped in with a smile. Yes, I nodded with a chuckle, they vary depending of the village, but most of them call me either immortal or undead, what a peculiar array of monikers, Mito commented, taking a sip of her tea. So you can't die? Sunade inquired with a soft hum. Oh I can, but it's hard to, so they simply assumed I was immortal, I grinned. I will get a better moniker, just wait, Sunade grinned back. At this, Mito chuckled, I wonder what will your kids look like, and right here I choked violently on my food. Grandma. Sunade cried out, blushing under the table, and I witnessed my life fade away under my choked throat. What? I didn't say anything. You were the ones to misinterpret, Mito smiled, or perhaps you didn't, who knows. Oh my god. Raiden. Don't go into the light. Sunaid, who had just now remembered I was dying, jumped to my rescue. Breath. She commanded. Back to the present I looked at Hirazan, and shuddered, it was good, I guess I almost died though, oh, typical dinner with Mito then, Hirazan nodded. I I won't even question that, bye, without wanting to extend our conversation any longer, I flickered out his office. Haha, <laughs> poor kid here is in chuckled. Jiraiya POV raid in this raid in that I will show Tsunade I am the best. I will challenge Raiden into a duel. Defeat him. And win the princess love. Like in every comic I have ever read. Jonin or not, Raiden was going to pay for stealing my girl. Don't, Arachimaru said. Don't what? I asked. I know that face you are about to do something monumentally stupid so don't, Arachimaru elaborated. I won't. All I'm going to do is challenge Raiden into a match for Tsunade's love, I declared, knowing I would win, for the hero always won. You are going to challenge a seasoned war veteran Arachimaru took a deep long breath, I stand corrected it's not a stupid idea, at this I smiled, it's a retarded one. I will get the medic ready, though I doubt they will be able to repair your broken body, two weeks after Hirazan's return, I was tasked by him to assassinate someone, a traitor. Kuramoto Misaki, apparently according to his sources he had been selling information to Kumo during the war, Hirazan proclaimed I was the only one he could trust with this assignment, because he didn't know how deep Kuramoto's connections went, and knew I was to be trusted. Knowing the importance of this mission, I accepted. Any plans today? 
Sunaid said, snapping me out of my long reverie. Some, not many, I answered. Well. Once you're done, come by my place, I have a new jutsu I want to show you. Sunaid smiled, skipping to her house after a day of training with her team and her sensei. Time to kill a man, I will, I muttered, flickering out of sight. It took me two hours to find the man I had been assigned to kill, finding him in an abandoned warehouse, this told me two things, one, he knew I was coming, two someone had heard the hokage. Hanging his head high, in a mighty display of smugness Kuramoto let an ironic smile slip across his face. So the new hokage heard about my secret dealings. And he sent the famous undead or is it immortal? I personally like better the immortal, but that's just me, I answered, as I observed his level. Kuramoto Misaki level 35 a level higher than me, that could prove to be problematic. Kuramoto sneered with a condescending attitude. Well I guess I'm about to try how immortal you are, who knows I might have fun, casting soulstone, I took my stance, who knows, you know you could have declined the mission, Kuramoto chuckled, his chakra increasing dramatically with each passing second, this is on you, the Hokage sent you here because he has no proof, and I controlled the old council, so while he changes the council, he can't imprison me not without gaining a bad reputation, so he sent you to do his dirty work, and now you'll die, maybe, maybe not, I replied. Huh, well that's right, nothing it's for sure in the ninja world, with tremendous speed, the distance between us closed. He wanted to end the battle with a single attack, foreseeing this, I blinked a few meters behind him, leaving some explosive tags where I was. Front the smoke of the explosion, Kuramoto dashed towards me, sword at hand, I am not done yet, he declared, charging his blade with chakra. Same, flickering behind him, I kicked him in the head, and as I was upside down in the air, I shouted, fire style. Great fireball technique. With blinding speed, I quickly wove the signs for the jutsu, and a ball of fire large enough to swallow him shot out of my mouth. Kuramoto turned around and faced the ball of flames dead on, and with a swing of his blade, cut the ball in two perfect halves. Not bad, but there isn't anything I can't cut brat, there's always a first time for everything, I replied, summoning my fell guard, DeAndre, water elemental, and my fire elemental. Kill him, I ordered, and they all roared with delight. From extra measure, I used Hunter's mark on him, just in case. No wonder they call you the demon lord and Suna, Kuramoto laughed, rushing to face my summons head on. His reflexes, speed, and attacks were on a league of his own, if this battle extended there was no guarantee I was going to win, but even with his incredible strength, he had one major weakness, his confidence. As we fought, I noticed he was facing me with his real self, no clones just him and his blade, and how he reacted to my summons, he is not one to run or fight a battle like a ninja, his way of thinking fluctuates between the honorable way of a samurai in battle, and the traitorous side of a ninja out of it. Funny really, how a man can be both stupidly honorable and a traitor at the same time. Unfortunately for him, I was a ninja, and when it came to battle I had no honor, multiple shadow clone jutsu, as he fought against my summons, I created 10 clones, then each of them threw a smoke bomb into the ground, creating a thick curtain of smoke, to cover the next step of my plan, explosive tag clone technique, each one of my clones. Started to cover the warehouse and its abandoned surroundings with explosive tags, thousands of them, with my newest jutsu. That was fun. Kuramoto declared, having killed my summons already. Good, now for the final act, I said, as the smoke cleared, revealing an explosive tag in my hand. Kuramoto took a step back, as his eyes widened in realization, in every direction he looked, thousands upon thousands of explosive tags were hanging, ready to explode at my command, are you crazy? You will die. The explosion will eat us away. I can't I remember, I grinned. Lighting the explosive tag in my hand. You buy whatever he was about to say, was silenced by the explosion that brought daylight to that fateful night eating away a good part of the forest where the warehouse was located. Level up soon after the explosion died out, I resurrected using my soul stone. Well, that was painful, I sighed. 
At least I had gotten a big chunk of X by killing the guy. With nothing else to do in the scene, I flickered out of there, leaving a burning hole of nothingness. My destination? Sunaid's home, she had apparently a new jutsu to show me, and I had time before dinner. Flickering a few times to get to her house, I knocked at the door, getting one a stifled giggle from the other side, is anyone home I asked, opening the door slowly. Once the door was wide open, a lot of people yelled, surprise. Startled, I jumped at the first person I saw, kunai brushing against her throat. Taicho, it's me. Yumi cried, and I snapped. I I'm sorry, I muttered, I reacted out of instinct. It's okay, in hindsight, it was a bad idea to startle you Yumi admitted. I see that now, Sunaid nodded. Anyway. Happy birthday. Happy birthday? Oh, yeah I was turning 7 today. After my birthday, one that Sunaid had planned with the help of her teacher, I focused on training my sending abilities. Had I been faster, I would have killed one of them, I almost did I needed to know and feel who was around me to avoid such accidents ever happening. Mandatory quest. Completed you have been called to help with the raging war in the elemental nations, defend your home and allies from invasion, while ensuring your own survival. Show them what Kanoha Nin are made of. Objective survive the first shinobi world war without Kanoha being destroyed. You get. Plus 700,000 E X P E R I E N C E plus 10,000 reputation with Kanahagakur, war veteran title. Bonus objectives get a moniker. So that the enemies fear the name of your dance. Level up. 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 Well, that was a few months late, level 42, I whistled looking over my stats. Name. Raiden send you title. War veteran 10% off in any purchase in Kanoha territory moniker. Undead demon level 42 HP. 64 40 64 40, chakra. 15938 15938, energy. 400 400 fury. 0 200 experience equals 90,286 100,330 stats intelligence equals 498 strength equals 370 agility equals 430 stamina equals 322 undead demon, I guess it's fitting. War veteran, maybe I will get some discounts or something, not that I had bought anything since the day I arrived. Gross reason stuff, but nothing else. Wait a second, if I remember correctly World of Warcraft, and its reputation gave discounts. Reputation, Kanoha revered 17,500 21,000 XP Tsunade exalted 7891 10,000 XP here is in exalted 2609 10,000 XP Kagami, honored 9876 12,000 XP, Nawaki honored 6318 12,000 XP Mido Yuzumaki honored 9876 12,000 XP Arachimaru. Neutral 5 3000 XP Jureya, Neutral 1 3000 XP Danzo, Neutral 15 79 3000 XP Kaharu Unfriendly 0 3000 XP Hamura, Unfriendly 0 3000 XP Mora Orphan Matron of Horde. 09 999,999,999 XP I looked over the reputation with the Orphan Matron with curiosity, why did she hate me? And why did that hate evolve to such lengths? I am very curious, I muttered to myself, pondering if I really wanted to go down that rabbit hole, asking myself if I really had anything to gain from it. I'll confront her after shopping, taking my wallet from my bed, I jumped out of the window, going to the weapons market, I wanted to buy some kunai and other weapons, and see if I was going to get some kind of discount or something along the way with my reputation. It turns out, I do get a discount even with my groceries, I just hadn't noticed it. I get 15% off by my reputation, and 10% off by my war veteran title, making a total of a whopping 25% off in each purchase. I also noticed some weapons had stats. To be specific the ones crafted by master craftsmen, whatever that meant, the stats weren't any good, getting at best an increase of 10 points per stat for an overwhelmingly expensive weapon, but this revelation didn't come without its winnings.
For I remembered my user interface system was a copy of World of Warcraft, adapted to the shinobi world, meaning. Professions were also within my grasp, which in turn meant, it was time to craft my own weapons and armor. But for that, I would have to level up my professions. And that, no matter the version of World of Warcraft, was a pain in the ass. But. It was worth it. With that in mind, I created 20 clones, it was time to grind this thing, professions, herbalism gathering harvest herbs found throughout the world, and from the bodies of some creatures. You can detect nearby herbs on the minimap. Mining gathering mine ore, stones, and raw gems from protruding veins or deposits. Also teaches you the smelting sub-profession, which allows the use of a forge to smelt the ore into bars of metal. You can detect nearby ore deposits on the minimap. Skinning gathering skin the corpses of certain creatures for their hides, leather, and scales. Alchemy production mix potions, elixirs, flasks, oils, and other alchemical substances into vials using herbs and other reagents. Your concoctions can restore health and mana, enhance attributes, or provide any number of other useful, or not so useful, effects. High-level alchemists can also transmute essences and metals into other essences and metals. Alchemists can specialize as a master of potions, master of elixirs, or a master of transmutation. Blacksmithing production smith various melee weapons, mail and plate armor, and other useful trade goods like skeleton keys, shield spikes, and weapon chains to prevent disarming. Blacksmiths can also make various stones to provide temporary physical buffs to weapons. Enchanting service production imbue all manner of equipable items with magical properties and enhancements using dusts, essences, and shards gained by disenchanting, breaking down, magical items that are no longer useful. Enchanters can also make a few low-level wands, as well as oils that can be applied to weapons, providing a temporary magical buff. Engineering production engineer a wide range of mechanical devices including trinkets, guns, goggles, explosives, and mechanical pets using metal, minerals, and stone. As most engineering products can only be used by suitably adept engineers, it is not as profitable as the other professions, it is, however, often taken to be one of the most entertaining, affording its adherents with numerous unconventional and situationally useful abilities. Engineers can specialize as goblin or gnomish engineers. Inscription production is a crafting profession in which one can create glyphs, reputation contracts, Vantus runes, Dirk Moon cards decks, and more. Scribes can use the learned skill of milling to break down herbs, gathered with herbalism, into pigments used to create inks. These inks, both common and uncommon, can then be used to inscribe a parchment. Jewel crafting production cut and polish powerful gems that can be socketed into armor and weapons to augment their attributes or fashioned into rings, necklaces, trinkets, and jeweled headpieces. Also teaches you the prospecting ability, which sifts through raw ores to uncover the precious gems needed for your craft. Leatherworking production work leather and hides into goods such as leather and mail armor, armor kits, and some capes. Leatherworkers can also produce a number of utility items including large profession bags, ability augmenting drums, and riding crops to increase mount speed. Tailoring production sew cloth armor and many kinds of bags using dye, thread, and cloth gathered from humanoid enemies during your travels. Tailors can also fashion nets to slow enemies with writable flying carpets. That was a lot of shit to work through, but in the meantime, I would focus on the gathering professions, with that in mind, I sent my clones to do just that. In the meantime, I would find out with the matron of the orphanage abhorred me. I approached the orphanage I once lived in, wondering what could ignite such passionate hate towards me, my interactions with the matron were short and to the point. We never had any problems, which is why I was curious as to why why did she hate me. A few possible theories came to mind, she could one be a spy, two I unknowingly did something to earn her hate, or three she was just crazy and hated children in general. Raiden? One of the many kids in the orphanage approached me as I entered the terrain. Hey you, I had no idea who he was. It's Toman, we we used to play ninjas a year before you entered the academy, Toman who I know knew his name chuckled. Oh, hi not to sound rude, but I came here to see the matron, 
I sighed. Oh, sure follow me, Toma nodded, running towards the building. As I followed Toman, something didn't feel right, the atmosphere of the entire orphanage felt off, I didn't like it. It was slightly disturbing, but not in a threatening way, it was hard to explain. Here we are. Toman smiled, pointing to the door leading to the matron's office. Thanks, I thanked him, opening the door. Inside, the matron was sitting on her high chair, writing over an old parchment, with a cup of wine in her free hand. If you are looking for a place to stay, I already informed you years ago that after graduation you were no longer my problem, the matron informed without even looking at me. Her tone condescending and rather demeaning. Yeah, you did, I nodded, seeing her title. Her level, everything, and nothing was out of the ordinary moral level one then, why are you here wasting my time, Raiden? The matron sighed, rubbing her temples while putting the parchment down on the table, my time it's short as it is, so please go straight point, very well, I sighed, why do you hate me? I asked, doing as she had told me. Going straight to the point, might as well humor her. This is why you are wasting my time? The matron rolled her eyes, I don't hate you, I don't like you, I don't have any particular feelings for you, her body posture, her breathing she was lying, intriguing. Hmm, you are a decent liar, I chuckled, taking a seat, now how about we try the truth? Some say it's liberating, leave my office now, the matron ordered, with a tone of finality. I will, I grinned, as soon as I get my answer come on, it's not that hard, you hate me, and that's okay, I just want to know why I don't recall wronging you, you want to know why I hate you, the matron hissed, her hands closing so tight the pen in her hand broke in half. You were a normal kid, a good one at that, and then, you decided to become a murderer, a remorseless killer without even consulting me, you hate me because I became a ninja? I asked in befuddlement, her reason was suo suo stupid. Oh no, I hate you for what happened next, the matron hissed, her face red in pure anger, looking as if it was about to explode, your sinful path created a road to hell for the rest of the kids, oh great, a religiously crazy bitch, you were the first one, and soon, many followed your example and because of you. Many of my innocent children turned into sinful creatures that feast in carnage. Hmm, not the answer I was expecting, but somehow it's more alarming than what I was expecting, and I was expecting you to be a spy. I sighed, alright it's obvious you can't run an orphanage or work with kids or do anything related to human relationships. So I will go ahead and talk with the Hokage to have you reassigned to I don't know, Kanoha's asylum? I'll figure that out on the way to his office, no, you won't, the matron hissed as she lunged at me armed with a small but sharp letter opener. With sight, I turned around and caught her wrist throwing her into the wooden floor of the orphanage, subduing her movements with a lock. So what exactly did you think was going to happen? I asked her. I must purify the children. They won't become monsters. I won't let it. She screamed as she trashed around violently to no avail, even with a single finger her movements were futile. Here I came expecting something, deeper and what I got. Plain crazy, I chuckled, knocking her out with a chop to the neck, she was truly not meant to take care of anyone. A few minutes later, I was in Hirazan's office, telling him what had happened, which surprised him a bit. I can't believe she was telling the kids we were monsters or that she thought we were, not sure if she told the kids that, they didn't seem afraid of me when I got there, but regardless of her hate towards us, it's more than obvious she is not fit to teach kids anything I sighed, I mean she has a point. We are killers but she shouldn't have let her judgment cloud her mind to such extent, indeed, Hirazin nodded, attacking a shinobi of the leaf is considered treason, don't be too harsh on her, in all honesty, I think she needs professional help, I chuckled, her behavior was that of a crazy person, maybe find a place for her in the local asylum. I heard the Yamanaka do wonders with those poor people, heck some of them even go back to their normal lives, I suppose that would be a viable solution, here is a nodded. Oh, before I leave don't let her have contact with any kids, her delusion can morph into a more dangerous one, today she wants to stop kids from becoming ninja by telling them we are monster, tomorrow she might decide it's easier to kill them 
so that they don't become one of us. With that, I flickered back to my house, ready to see how my clones had progressed with the professions. For days to no end, I continued to send my clones on the mission to farm the gathering professions, effectively cutting my chakra reserves to a third of my full, as it was what I needed to keep the clones active 24 hours 7 days a week, and according to my calculations, I would have all the gathering professions at the max level within a year or so. Mostly because the materials I had to farm were infinitely harder to find than in World of Warcraft. While my clones did that, I focused on my daily training. Which itself included spending a minimum of 3 to 4 hours with Tsunade daily, be it training or just hanging together. Raiden, the Hokage has summoned you. An Anbu officer informed me, as I meditated in my room, and with desperation, I groaned, what part of vacation didn't hear is an understand. I'll be there in a few, I sighed, shoving the Anbu off my house, Anbu or not, I wanted my boundaries. Two minutes after the Anbu officer disturbed my peace of mind, I arrived at Hirazin's office, where with a very long sigh, I asked him, what do you want today? I mean, seriously, since I arrived he has sent me on missions almost on a daily basis. If I'm not killing a traitor, I'm training his team because he is busy. No missions today, don't get all grumpy, Hirazin chuckled, I just wanted to tell you what I have to tell you personally, he sighed, taking a deep breath afterward. Tabarama's sensei funeral, we have postponed it for a while, but we are finally in a place we can do it without hurting the village logically speaking, and to the inheritance he left you, what? I froze at the inheritance part. He left you his house in the Senju district and the majority of his scrolls and books, Hirazin smiled and then pouted, all he left me was a letter that said, grow up. And hit yourself in the head every time you think of something stupid, at that, I laughed. Can you blame him? Very funny, Hirazin rolled his eyes, now the funeral is in a month, so buy some formal clothes, I will, I nodded. As I made my way to the Senju district to see the house, I encountered Tsunade, fuming in anger which is never good, and usually means Jiraiya was involved. Raiden. She shouted or saluted not sure when she's like this. Should I run? I asked with a smile, I feel like I should, sorry, it's just Jiraiya, ha, I knew it. What did he do this time? I asked, already anticipating something of idiotic magnitudes. I mean, it was Jiraiya, the kid had talent, but apparently having talent didn't translate to having a brain. Well, after our daily spar which he lost, again Tsunade began, getting incredibly red, like tomato red, ninjas sure blush weird, so like the sour loser he is, he called me. Flat-chested rhino, the last part was almost inaudible, flat-chested rhino? I repeated and she nodded, hiding her face under her hair. Why the rhino part though, I asked calmly. I I actually have no idea, Tsunade replied. Well, Sunade if you want my advice, don't pay attention to him, I sighed. Am I though? Sunade mumbled. What? I asked. Flat, Sunade muttered. Sunade we are seven, I deadpanned, I dare you to find a seven-year-old with fully developed breasts, I stopped for a moment to analyze that, and shuddered, scratch that it would be disturbing if you find it, the point is we are kids, and Jiraiya is an idiot, yeah he is, Tsunade repeated in a more jovial tone, I will kick his ass again next time I see him. She declared with enthusiasm, oh I almost forgot, look. With a smile, she pointed to her feet, I got the weights you told me about, it's hard to fight with them, but I do feel they are pushing forward, oh boy, what did I do oh well good, I smiled, patting her in the head softly, now how about we get something to eat, I'm starving. Oh oh. I know a place that sells steak. Tsunade like all was eagerly accepted. Sounds good, though I would kill for a pizza, oh pizza, a bounty from the heavens itself, how much I long to bite you again. What is pizza? Tsunade asked, clearly confused as I gasped in pain, emotional pain. One of the good things of having worked on a small pizzeria in my last life when I was a teenager is that I remembered how to make a pizza, and Kanoha had most of the ingredients, so instead of going for steak, Sunate and I embarked on a quest to hunt the necessary ingredients, which took us an hour to do. 
Then, it was all a matter of following the process that God themselves had taught us, which added another hour I don't have an oven, so it was trial and error with the fireball jutsu. But in the end, the bounty of the heavens was finally complete in all its cheesy glory. It's round, Sunaid commented with a faint smile. Oh I know, I nodded, dreamily staring at my creation. So how do how do I eat it? Sunaid asked, soon she would feel what it's like to touch perfection, oh god, how I wished I had a camera. Allow me, I smiled, cutting her a slice, a succulent one. Then I put her slice on a plate and told her, just grab it with a napkin or without it and bite into perfection itself, okay. So do I start with the big side or the small one, Sunaid asked, pointing to the crust and the place the gods themselves designated to start the pizza. The small one, I chuckled at her terminology. Okay, without a care in the world, Sunaid bit into the pizza and I was able to appreciate how her entire view of the world changed, what is this and how can I marry it? I already did my part in this world, I muttered with a smile. It's been a while, huh? Sunaid said, her head hanging as she approached me. A month after Tabarama's funeral, I had decided to take back active duty to cool my head off, avoiding the village as much as possible, and when I was in the village, I tried to be alone with my thoughts, the murmurs of people accusing me of his death haunted me, it was painful to know the thought the same thing I thought, it was a constant reminder I was weak, and someone died because of it. Today I was in a small park in the Senju clan compound, perhaps not the best place to be alone, then again, perhaps I didn't want to be alone. Sorry, Sunaid muttered looking to the ground, her tone soft carrying a heavy tint of sadness that was unnatural to her. Sorry? For what? I asked in response. Sunaid looked back at me over her shoulder, tears threatening to drop. You know, for not saying anything at the funeral. I am the one that should apologize, I said. In my own little world, I had probably let her believe I was mad at her for not standing up for me, she wasn't to blame for what they said or for my weakness back then. For ignoring me for over a month? Yes, you freaking should. Sunaid declared, and once again I was lost, but I am also sorry. I let everyone talk so bad about you, and I didn't do anything, you are my friend, and I let them hurt you, at this point, she was crying. I'm sorry for avoiding you this last month, I hugged her, I just couldn't look at you, her Mito after all of that. The Senju clan knows you would have saved him if you had the chance, Sunaid said. I fully expected you to punch me, I chuckled. That's still on a maybe, Sunaid grinned. After my talk with Tsunaid, the hateful murmurs continued, growing and evolving to new accusations, now not only they blamed me for the death of Tabarama sensei but for not resurrecting all of those who died. At first, I tried to reason with them, telling them that even if I wanted to bring all of those who died, it was out of my capabilities to do so, my powers had limits that I had to abide by. But no matter what argument I used, they didn't believe, or rather they didn't want to believe me. And in a way, I understood. They were grieving and for them I had within my hands the power to stop their pain, to heal their emotional wounds, by bringing back their friends, their comrades, their sons, their daughters, and in their eyes, I was refusing to be of help. Surprisingly, even with all of this turmoil boiling behind my ears, my reputation with Kanoha was still the same, showing that a big majority of the population still loved me, or at least accepted me. So for a while, I ignored the rumors, focusing my work and leveling up my professions, but then, a few months after my eighth birthday, the murmurs changed a bit, revealing information no civilian or common ninja should have, like my ability to resurrect myself, something only Hiruzen and the council knows. While it was true I was called the undead calamity of the hidden leaf, most simply assumed it was because I was immortal or because I had incredibly healing techniques that made it near impossible to kill me, and on both accounts, most people would be right. But, in reality, no one knew how I did what I did, no one except Hiruzen and the council by association. Meaning, that at least one of the council members was behind the murmurs, the question now was, which one or ones? Danzo was pragmatic, cold, and calculative he didn't like, but he didn't hate me, he considered me a valuable resource of the leaf, 
a tool. He had no reasons to start any murmurs, which only leaves Hamura and Kaharu. With that in mind, I flickered to the Hokage's office, Hiruzen, you are here to talk about that right? Hiruzen sighed, his eyes telling me everything. He knew who had started this, probably coming to the same conclusion as me. Where are they? I asked, just now noticing Danzo was hiding within the shadows, I wonder why. Killing them would be treason Raiden, Hiruzen reminded me. As if I would waste my time with them, killing them would accomplish nothing, but maybe cementing the idea they were selling of me. I just assumed at this I interrupted him. You assumed wrong, I stated. I told you Saratobi, Danzo said, getting out of his hiding spot. Raiden it's not a shinobi to let his emotions control him. I suppose you were right this time Danzo, here is inside, I just well, I misjudged, I hope you can forgive me Raiden. Forgive oh fucking Christ, I sighed rubbing my temples, there is nothing forgive, now tell me where they are, so that I can confront them, it was true I didn't want to kill them, but I never said anything about kicking their asses. There is no need, Danzo said, I have talked with them, and they won't bother you anymore, believe me they won't well that was ominous. Danzo had a long talk with them, here is inside. I also took the liberty to order the Anbu to do some damage control about those pesky rumors, Danzo stated. Well, that was unexpected, I see I sighed, I still want to personally kick their asses though, that's not illegal, is it? Well, it is but, here is in chuckled, I can't always burn a report or two if you do so, as always what you have in power, you lack in brain Saratobi, Danzo sighed, while here is in pouted, just challenge them to a spar in the next council meeting. Their pride and position will force them to accept, and whatever happens after that it's merely a result of a friendly spar, no real harm done right? I kinda like how Danzo thinks. Right, I smiled. Like Danzo had said, the two young council members had accepted my challenge, and in said challenge, I let all the anger they themselves had produced within me out. Needless to say, it was very satisfying to kick their asses, unfortunately, I had to hold back a lot. But, regardless of how much I had to pull my punches, I enjoyed every single second of it. After that, I returned to my normal life, as day by day the whispers and rumors about me disappeared, leaving nothing but bitter memories of what had happened buried in the past. With my peace of mind, I focused on leveling my professions. I wanted to be able to craft the items I was going to use as soon as possible. Armor, potions, weapons the list of things I was going to craft was endless, and who knows maybe do a business with it. As for my professions, they were almost all at max level, and something that I had found out while leveling then was that the recipes came alone, no sidecast for them. The moment I considering my level perhaps it was time to try and craft some items. So I started to craft the strongest armor I could craft right now with the leather I had. The desolate leather set. First I started crafting the treads, using 9 pieces of tiger leather and 2 pieces of ninja thread, the process was like everything had been so far, easy and almost instantaneous, generating the boots. Desolate leather treads item level 120 armor plus 19 agility plus 34 strength plus 35 stamina plus 19 intellect intriguing, no level requirement, that didn't align with what I remembered of World of Warcraft, not that I was going to complain. Taking a deep breath, I continued with my crafting this time creating the arm guards. Desolate Leather Arm Guards Item Level 119 Armor plus 14 Agility plus 26 Strength plus 26 Stamina plus 14 Intellect Next, I crafted the Waste Guard. Fully focusing on the stats I was going to get. Desolate Leather Waste Guard Item Level 99 18 Armor plus 19 Agility plus 34 Strength plus 34 Stamina plus 19 Intellect Well, these stats are crazy, in WoW. This armor for me was nothing but a waste of space in my inventory, something I only crafted to level up my profession, but seeing them in person, gave me a new sense of appreciation, considering my entire ninja setup had no stats or armor. Now the gauntlets, I chuckled, crafting the gauntlets. 
Desolate Leather Gauntlets Item Level 111 19 Armor Plus 21 Agility Plus 36 Strength Plus 39 Stamina Plus 21 Intellect Then I ordered one of my clones to bring me more leather from my storage to craft the helm. Once I had the leather, I started crafting another piece of my armor. Desolate Leather Helm Item Level 111 Plus 26 Armor Plus 28 Agility Plus 48 Strength Plus 52 Stamina Plus 28 Intellect With a Wild Smile, I ordered my clones to bring out more leather, today I was going to use a new armor. Desolated Leather Vest Item Level 129 38 Armor Plus 33 Agility Plus 50 Strength Plus 63 Stamina Plus 33 Intellect Desolated Leather Leggings Item Level 99 28 Armor Plus 25 Agility Plus 46 Strength Plus 45 Stamina Plus 25 Intellect Desolated Leather Pauldrons Item Level 129 26 armor plus 25 agility plus 47 stamina plus 30 deadly lestrite band ring item level 100 plus 26 stamina plus 46 intellect with no materials left i stopped my crafting and focused now on transmogrification the armor was powerful compared to anything i had seen but it looked very bad like awfully so so in order to be able to fix that and still use the armor i was going to change the appearance of my armor to look like my normal attire. With my transmogrification skill, one that I had learned the moment I reached level 10 with my professions, a very useful skill. The skill allowed me to change the appearance of my clothes, as long as I already had the appearance myself, meaning if I wanted my armor to look like a red shirt, I needed to have a red shirt within my possessions. It was a simple thing really, all I had to do to have variety was to buy lots of clothes and use the appearances of those clothes to modify my ugly looking armors. Stats, it was time to see the fruits of my grinding with my armor. Name. Raiden send you title. War veteran 10% off in any purchase in Kanoha territory moniker. Undead demon level 44 HP. 23,776 23,776 Chakra 25,792 25,790 seconds Energy 400 400 Fury 0 200 Experience equals 25 106,405 Stats Intelligence equals 530 plus 276 equals 806 Strength equals 390 plus 312 equals 702 agility equals 450 plus 184 equals 634 stamina equals 350 plus 393 equals 743 jesus fuck i chuckled i am twice as powerful with this crappy armor danzo pov raid and send you at first i didn't see what tabarama sensei saw in him but after a bit I had come to realize he was a tool like no other, a wild card that only Kanoha should have, I didn't like the kid, but it was undeniable, his unique set of skills was of great importance to the village. Which is why I had forced Kaharu and Kimura to stop antagonizing him, should he decide to leave the tide of power among the villages would change drastically, no he had to be happy within the village, so that I could manipulate him, mold him into a shadow that protects the leaf, a true shinobi. And if I had to kill Kaharu and Kimura to keep the brat with a sense of belonging, I would do it, with no hesitation, Tabarama sensei had seen his value, and had nurtured it with all his might, now I shall do the same, turning him into the name every other village fears when spoken, you will be the perfect tool to keep Kanoha safe, Raiden. A few months after I crafted my armor, I thought of the possibilities this unique skill meant, and all the people I could help, especially considering none of the craftable items, had a level requirement. Meaning should another war break out, Kanoha's genin wouldn't have to die as much if their stats were higher, this however was not as viable as I wanted it to be. Any decent equipment required lots and lots of hard to find materials, heck my armor was in World of Warcraft terms, awful, and it took me a year to gather the materials needed for it. Which made my idea all the more difficult to accomplish, but in times of need, one adapts. So I thought, what about if I craft cheaper items, it would still give our genins some help during war, increasing their survivability. But even then, I would need lots and lots of cheap material, 
because my goal was by no means small. I had to craft at least a thousand rings or whatever piece of equipment I found the easiest to mass produce. Also, I would use this as a way to find free materials, after all if they want my crafted items, they have to pay some sort of price, there is no such thing as free actions, only delayed payments. With this in mind, I brought my idea to the Hokage, showing him a simple ring. Hirazan froze, simply stared at the ring for an hour, without saying a single word in shock. It was so alarming, his girlfriend Buwako had to slap him out of the shock. How this I I don't know what to say, if you can truly mass produce this, our ninja would have a better chance should another war occur. Well, I would first need you to facilitate the materials needed for the crafting, I informed him, then we can start talking about commissions, and such, I knew for a fact Konoha had a budget for weapons, so why not become their preferred provider. How much will you charge me for this? Hirazan asked, looking at the ring in awe, not even a bit angry that I was going to charge him. We'll discuss that later, I informed him, in the meantime, find the materials I need, then we'll talk. With that out of the way, I flickered out his office, back to my house in the Senju compound. My house was how to say a rather simple, not much of anything, besides my bed and some old books and scrolls Tabarama had left inside the house, amongst those scrolls there was one that I well, it got my attention. The Flying Thunder God Draft. It was but an incomplete work according to the scroll, and considering the number of the scroll, and the date, it was but a draft of the completed technique, nothing but a long scroll with theory, a solid theory. The draft went into great detail about how the technique worked, and thanks to said scroll, I finally had a name for the technique he had used to save me that time, the theory behind the technique was rather simple, the application on the other hand was let's just say, I had tried to learn the technique, and had dropped it more than a few times. What really got me the most was that the technique, in theory, was stupidly easy, but the fucking application of it was like comparing the ABC to rocket science. The theory explained, this jutsu was something Tabarama sensei had decided to create, inspired by how the ninja summons worked. His entire research was based on how summons were able to come and go, instantaneously without much problem, in short. Tabarama had created a successful reverse summon seal that summoned him, when he pumped chakra into the seal, now this is the tricky part, creating a seal that doesn't kill you while you teleport. A brilliant idea nonetheless, a hard one to master, especially considering I had but an incomplete research. Perhaps if I had the final design, I would have better luck mastering the technique. So for the time being, Blink was more than enough for me. Raiden. Sealing the scroll back in place, I flickered outside my house to see Tsunade knocking at my door, today is the Kanoha festival. She shouted at the door excitedly, not noticing I was standing right behind her. And you want me to go? I whispered close enough to startle her. Yes, you are taking me. Tsunade nodded, recovering from my jump scare. Okay, I shrugged. Going to a festival sounded fun. Why why you are I mean yes you are, why was she so flustered? It's so unlike her to get like that. I mean you said I was going to take you, so yeah, why not, I smiled, patting her on the head. Good, I beat that rat of Koroida Yuhi. In your face. Tsunade whispered to herself, I wonder if she knows I hear her. Okay let me clean up the house, and I stopped, when does the festival begin? In three hours, Tsunade answered as she ran to her grandma's house, pick me up at grandma's gotta go. Well, that was weird, but who am I to judge? I literally have died three times, weird it's just my daily normal now, I chuckled, going back to my house to clean. Tsunade POV Grandma Mito had told me that if I wanted to get Raiden's attention, I had to take the first step as she had done with Grandpa, she said in her own words, men are stupid, and they only know what they want if you spell it out for them, not entirely sure what that means, but I took her advice, and asked Raiden out to the Moonlight Festival. Can I even consider this our first date? I hummed to myself. Maybe, Grandma Mito chuckled, poor boy, he doesn't even know it, but he's about to enter a long-lasting battle he will not come victorious, a battle but, I don't want to fight with him, though we can spar I guess, sometimes, Grandma Mito sounds crazy and scary. 
Oh, my sweet little Rose, Grandma chuckled, you will understand it one day, after all this is a field of battle, we women reign supreme. It took me roughly two hours to clean my house and get ready for the festival, Sunaid wanted to go with me. For my attire, I picked something classy, a black and white yukata, not too expensive, not too cheap, the perfect in between. After that, I went to pick up Tsunade, who was wearing a janihito maybe I wasn't going formal enough. How do I look? Tsunade asked, her cheeks once again coloring in a deep red, I suppose she was embarrassed by her outfit that no doubt had been picked by her grandma. Before I could reply, Tsunade sighed, I knew this was too much, I told grandma, let me use a normal kimono, but Nuo, she went with the janihito. Relax, you look good, I assured her, which calmed her a bit. If anything I look underdressed. You look good, Tsunade muttered under her breath. So a question for personal curiosity, I hummed, is that comfortable to wear, I mean it looks rather, heavy, Tsunade chuckled at my question, not that heavy, considering I normally use weights of over 50 pounds on each leg, this feels rather light. Well let's go, I chuckled, but before I started to walk with Tsunade to the festival, Mito flickered in front of me, stopping me dead on my tracks, or not. Sue, you go ahead, I need to have a word with this young gentleman, Mito informed, as Tsunade gave her a look that said, I am seeing you. Fine, but hurry. Tsunade eventually relented under her grandmother's stare, leaving us alone. So hi? I saluted, not sure where this was going. You have no idea what is going on do you? Mito smiled, a disturbing smile since when was she this creepy? That assumption would be correct, yes, I nodded. Well allow me to color the picture for you, Mito began, her disturbing smile still in place, you have invited my granddaughter and future head of the Senju clan to the festival, do you have any idea of what this entails? That we are going to the festival to eat food and hang out? I answered unsure of what was happening. God, you are denser than Hashi, Mito sighed, the moment you enter the festival, with Tsunade all the clans in Konoha will assume you are spoken for. Spoken for spoken for oh no. Oh oh I gasped in realization, heck the situation was so fucked up, that my gasp wasn't a normal gasp, but a French gasp the highest level of gasp, a la gasp. You are a weird mix between Hashi and Taburama, Mito chuckled, so you have two options, one let Tsunade go alone or two go with her. Letting Tsunade go alone, what kind of monster did she think I was, I will go, I declared, what other people thought didn't matter to me, not anymore. Are you sure? From that day forward everyone in Kanoha will think you two are engaged, Mito inquired. I won't hurt Tsunade just because I am scared of what others think, not again I answered. Then let's make it official shall we? Mito grinned, why was she grinning I don't like this. Let's engage the two of you. For the love of we are kids especially Tsunade. Oh simmer down, Mito rolled her eyes, you won't be kids in a few years, besides the engagement, it's more or less to stop the living nightmare you have brought upon me the moment you joined the clan. What? Nightmare the heck she was talking about. This snapping her fingers, a seal appeared above my head, as a mountain of papers fell upon me like the sword of Damocles. Those are just for this month, each and every single one of those 1100 letters, are clans trying to marry you off to one of their already adult daughters, or future daughters they are planning to have, or granddaughters. With Tsunade I don't have this problem, she is to be the head of the clan, but with you she grinned, everyone wants a piece of you so, let's help each other out. Well all is fun and such, but I doubt Tsunade will agree to any of this, as if my headstrong blonde friend would accept this, ha. Huh? My headstrong blonde friend accepted, rather happily might I add, I didn't even see that blow coming. No wonder Mito chuckled at my statement, so in the end, I also accepted after weighing the cons and pros, and mostly not to bother Mito with my popularity, and besides, I suppose it's not that bad. The engagement is nothing but a facade that is only supposed to last until we reach our 16th birthday, which is when Tsunade will take control of the clan and by clan law, I will be old enough to reject any propositions without consulting the clan head, archaic system, but what can you do about it? Let's go. 
Tsunade giggled as she dragged me across the festival, all while I wondered, was Tsunade interested in me beyond our friendship? Hmm if so how will I deal with it? Tsunade, I have a question. I sighed. Okay, Tsunade smiled. Do you like me like me? I asked in the most childish possible way. I I I do, Tsunade stuttered, blushing once again once. Ag oh my god, am I that dense? Do you like me? Protocol avoidance activated, Tsu we have been friends for the longest, and I am flattered you like me, but aren't we a bit young to think on any of that right now? Perfect, I avoided answering her question, I mean how was I supposed to answer, I am a young man reincarnated into a little boy maybe in the future, but right now we both look like potatoes, illegal potatoes. Tsunade grinned, her blush still there, well then, I will ask you again once we become adults, and I promise you by that time, you will say yes. A fake engagement, and the clans had stopped bothering Mito trying to marry me off to them, but this incident revealed something uncomfortable. Tsunade liked me and this was hard for me to process, so I simply decided to act as if it didn't happen. As I rambled on about what had happened, and how I had reacted a monkey came to my window, with a scroll. The Hokage is calling for you, the monkey yawned, handing me the scroll. Staring at the scroll for a brief second, I nodded. I'll be right there, inside Hirazin's office I took a seat, while Hirazin figured out how to tell me what he had summoned me to tell me. Apparently whatever it was, it was complicated for him to explain. Okay here I go, Hirazin sighed, finally deciding to start talking, the feudal lord, he needs you. That didn't explain much, for? I asked. Well he wants you for his personal guard, here is inside, as he took a seat. The 12 guardian ninja. And that's bad? I asked in my ignorance. I knew the feudal lord was important, like the king of our country, while the hokage was like the president, each of them had a role to fulfill, but even then, I didn't understand why was being part of the 12 ninja guardians bad, if anything it would be beneficial for my reputation. Well. Yes, but no here is inside, you will be out of the village for a few years, the post has a minimum requirement of 5 years oh, well now that was bad. And I suppose I don't have a say in it, right? You do but saying no, cold possibly make him mad, and that could possibly affect some of our budgets, here is inside, once again. Fine, I suppose I will accept, I sighed, wondering how would I break this up to Tsunade. As expected, Tsunade didn't like the news at all, in fact, she tried to punch me the moment I told her, fortunately for me, I had something to calm her down, a big double cheese pizza. Better? A bit, Tsunade glared, like a cat hoarding her pizza. Look, it was that or risking the budget of the village, which right now thanks to the scars the war left, is heavily dependent on that guy, I sighed. I know, Tsunade sighed, but I don't have to like it. I can write you, I offered. A letter a week, and I forgive you, Tsunade hummed, seemingly deep in thought. Fine, I chuckled, ruffling her hair. The next day, I realized something. The promise I had made to Tsunade was one I couldn't keep, while it was true I summons, none of them would be able to travel such long distances so often, meaning I needed a new summon for the purpose of this mission, which is why after having a balanced breakfast, I went to talk with Hirazin about my conundrum. Hirazin, eager to help, gave me a scroll from a particular summon, one that hadn't been used in a while according to him. The Raven summons contract, the instructions were simple enough, a bit of blood, a bit of chakra, and hope for the best, after all the summons had the right to reject the contract. Following the instructions, I called out, summoning technique. Ravens. Soon after I performed the technique a small explosion of smoke that seemed to come from the scroll, covered a small radius around the scroll, revealing a small raven, with a single eye and an eye patch in the other looking at me. For some reason, he was also wearing a small leather trench coat. So hi? I waved. This is Motherfickering great a prepubescent chick, the raven cawed, or talked, or... This was confusing. The pleasure is all mine, I snorted. Are you Motherficker sassing me? The raven cawed, glaring at me with his only eye. I am, I chuckled. Ha, I like you, the raven chuckled. So now what? I asked. Now, the raven began, 
pulling a scroll out of nowhere, you sign here, and here, and here, and we are done doing just that, I asked, so I can now summon you guys no problems? Yes, but don't you fucking dare summoning me on a Sunday, the raven cod, also please start adding corn to your shopping list, lots of it, corn, neat. Okay, I nodded with a chuckle, what's your name? Nick Ravenincus, with that said, he disappeared with a poof of smoke. Soon I'd send you POV Raiden was once again leaving, and it made me sad he had just gotten out of the war, and the stupid Fire Lord requests for him to be part of his guard, at least this was a low risk job, and I would see him in a few years. Don't be sad my little sapling, Mito smiled, giving me a kiss. That kid is hard to kill, I doubt anyone will target him, I'm not worried about that, I rolled my eyes, I am worried our friendship will strain over time with the distance. I was afraid that with time, we would grow distant, he was my friend, and I wanted that to stay like that. I doubt it, grandma assured me, now go, and have fun with him before he leaves the village, you will have plenty of time to sulk in later once he leaves, I don't sulk. I pouted, how dare she say I sulk, I don't sulk a lot. Sure you don't grandma winked, pushing me out of the house with a broom. Now go and have fun. She ordered. Yes. I giggled running out of the house. Unknown POV send you Raiden, he was an anomaly that I quite didn't fully understand, and I didn't like it. Now the question was, was he a threat to my plans? Or another pawn for me to move around as I pleased, time, and some little experimentation would tell, in the meantime, I would keep watching him, learning everything I can about him from the shadows. Six years later finally, the last days of my contract with the feudal lord were coming to an end, which meant that I would soon return to Kanoha, a place I once thought fictional, and that I now saw as my home, during these six years, many things had changed, for starters, I was no longer a child, my body had grown giving me a more masculine demeanor. My strength had also grown, my level not so much. It was quite difficult to level up next to the feudal lord, since very few enemies decided to attack him, and those who did were not usually strong, which had made my leveling go considerably slower. But, leveling was only one of the many ways to increase my strength, and that's why I dedicated myself to training during all that time, increasing my stats in the process. I had also leveled my professions to the highest level, and thanks to that I now had armor far superior to what I had once crafted. In short, my time with the feudal lord had been productive for the most part. I really couldn't complain, the only bad thing about this mission was that it was boring, full of silence, and this sometimes made me remember everything I had done, the silence was not good the memories of those I had killed without hesitation, they overwhelmed me when I had no way to shut them up. The weekly letters with Tsunade helped, but they were not the same. Sometimes I wondered how I could feel nothing, and at the same time feel remorse for my actions. The whole situation was so inconsistent it didn't make sense. But, that was the funny thing, wasn't it? After all, madness never changing the subject, apart from my internal conflicts, everything else was fine, the feudal lord was quite decent, breaking my preconceived expectations of him when I first arrived six years ago, Tadari Hide Ori, also known as the feudal lord, was a kind old man who loved to play board games with me and his son Toyotomi Hide Ori every Sunday. Toyotomi Hideori was for lack of a better word, very innocent even though he was only two years younger than me, his vision of the world was rosy, his uncomplicated life had made him blind to the situation outside his privileged bubble, but apart from all that, the young man was a good person. Who would suffer from manipulation for the rest of his life, unlike his father, who despite not being a shinobi, was quite perceptive, but despite his painful innocence, Toyotomi Hideori was my friend, not a friend I could tell anything to, but someone I didn't mind spending time with. For most of my stay, he had tried to convince me to stay, saying that most of the bodyguards his father had didn't understand him. It took me a few years to get this idea out of his head, telling him that like him, I had responsibilities to attend to in the village. He agreed with a strange looking smile, saying that I was to write to him from time to time, that even though he was to be my feudal lord, he was my friend. Speaking of letters, my ravens were strange. 
Their behavior changed, showing a variety of personalities that stemmed from my original world, and they had no idea. Yoda, Nick Fury, and the Power Rangers were just a few. The point was after all that thanks to them I could now use Crow clones to add more battisery to my ever-growing list of abilities. Raiden, you're leaving next month right? One of my comrades asked, giving me a small smile. His name, Makori. One of the 12 Guardian Ninja, and the one who had welcomed me six years ago. Yes, I already got what I wanted, with a smile, I pointed to the particular ninja sash hanging from my waist. A proof I had belonged to the order. Hahaha, <laughs> I'm going to miss you, Makori laughed, resuming his path to the kitchen. The 12 guardians were powerful and at the same time, weak. It was strange, but something I didn't particularly care much for, with a sigh, I walked to my room to continue my packing, happy that I would soon be out of this prison, that I would soon be at the barbecue Tsunade was going to invite me to, in celebration of my return to the village. Danzo POV mission report summary raid in one year no incidents, the feudal lord and his family traveled all over Kanoha, beyond bandit attacks, nothing out of the ordinary, except maybe a presence, I constantly feel I am being watched, will report back once I find more answers. Two year no incidents and nothing worth mentioning, the feeling I once had of being observed stopped after a while, in precaution I had set my ravens to scout the area 24-7 one can never be too careful. Three year once again nothing, as you can see on my monthly reports my ravens also found nothing, perhaps it was only my paranoia attacking. Four year a squad of rogue ninja tried to attack the feudal lord, or rather were planning to do so when I caught them, shortly after a very thorough interrogation, I killed them, they had no contractor or solid motive, beyond the fact they wanted the money the feudal family has. Five year once again, we return to normal. Nothing. Six year nothing, once again, well I suppose me going back to Kanoha counts like something, nonetheless, as of now, the feudal family is well, and until my last day, I will make sure it stays that way. Let's see how much have you grown Raiden, the time to turn him into the shadow that Aburama sensei envisioned had come. Finally, my last day as one of the 12 ninja guardians had come to an end, with a small party thrown by the feudal lord, I left the castle with a smile, the mission while boring had been peaceful, which is something one rarely get as a shinobi, so I can't complain. For hours, I ran through the thick humid forest that surrounded the fire country, passing various towns and cities, without a care, until I felt something, someone, and stopped in the middle of nowhere. How about you show yourself? I muttered to no one in particular, as I surveyed the deserted forest. Someone had been following me, and his or her intent to kill me was vibrating. Intriguing, a voice echoed through the forest, sending an unnerving feeling down my spine, whoever it was, it had to die. That thing told me you were special, and you are no one has felt me before, good to know. I will make sure to get a name after I capture you, I said, as I noticed a tree in front of me was bleeding, human blood full of living chakra. The blood that was bleeding out of the tree gradually took on a human shape. As a man wearing a black mask appeared out of the blood, I have no name, for I don't need a name, but the name of my target, so call me your executioner. Blood infused with chakra, a bloodline most likely, and one that I had never seen before not even in the anime, cute, but no. I said. I love when they struggle, the man said, almost moaning the words out, showing that in a perverse way, he was taking sexual pleasure in the act of killing. I will kill you, and then whoever sent you. I sighed, as I looked up at the freak in front of me. I hope the money they offered you was worth it. My eyes glittered with intent. He, flickering out of sight, appearing behind me. Speed, average. Turning around, I blocked his untimely strike and kicked him in the face, and immediately noticed something was wrong. The impact resulted in more blood than it should have with the amount of strength I was putting behind my attack, something was wrong. Bloody rain, the man moaned, as the blood my kick had poured rained on me, melting my clothes upon contact. Flickering a few meters away from him, I tore the clothes that were stained with his clearly acidic blood, now having a good idea of what the man was capable of. 
His speed and reaction time were average at best, but his technique was impressively deadly. My blood can melt anything and I control it, no matter what you do, I can't die. Blood control really sounded like a troublesome thing to deal with, but no matter how strong he thought his abilities were, everything had a weakness. I eyed him for a second and laughed, Mamori level 27, who would have thought the moment I left the castle, things would get so interesting, I suppose for anyone that has yet to lost a battle their abilities seem invincible, but know this there is always a bigger fish waiting to strike. The man chuckled, please struggle more, the more they suffer, the more I feel. Before I kill you, who sent you? I sighed. I don't know, the man answered. I just heard a voice, telling me you were my target, and that I would get lots and lots of money if I killed you, interesting. Now the question was was he being truthful, well nothing a little bit of flaying can confirm, though I am doubtful pain works with this man, he moaned during my kick. Okay, I smiled, blinking behind him as I used Frost Nova to freeze him in place, a quick note for you, blood like water it's a limited resource, without blood who are you? You executioner, he grinned, his body bursting like a bloody water balloon. Oh no, a blood clone oh my god, the ingenuity of it all, if only I had prepared better for this battle, by remembering the one thing we ninjas are known for, I chuckled, as I turned around to see the guy sneaking behind me, hammer of justice, stunning him in place for 6 seconds, now let's talk about that contractor. Putting a rudimentary chakra seal on his head that would effectively keep him in place after my stun wore out, with that done, I grinned, as I started to interrogate the assassin, who had lost in the most humiliating way possible. The moment I started to interrogate the man, he exploded apparently whoever had contracted him had placed a seal within him to avoid saying too much, oh well too bad I didn't get any experience. Oh well time to open a portal to my house I guess, I sighed, wondering why in the first place I had been running to Kanoha when I had the ability to open as many portals there as I wanted to. Unknown POV it seems Senju Raiden was as strong as I thought, but nothing that required to be eliminated, at least not for now, besides targeting him in the open, would let the world know I existed, and I can't let Madara know I exist, not until he fulfills his role, he has after all yet to awaken the Rinnegan, so for now, I will let the Senju brat live. Who knows I might end up using his unique skills to further my goals. Activate the seals inside all the assassins, I ordered one of the many white Zetsus. It's obvious they won't manage to do anything, and considering he probably knows about the seals, it's too much of a risk. Okay. Now, let's see how my favorite pawn is doing, I muttered, going back to see how Madara was he was, after all, my prize project, the fruit of my hard work. After I walked through the portal, I was greeted by someone I didn't expect, Danzo. That alone was unexpected, how did he even know I was going to teleport to my apartment, and why was he inside? Danzo, I greeted, my tone showing my discomfort with him, is there a problem? Danzo looked at me, his only eye giving a long scrutinizing look before he replied, I wanted to talk with you about something before you reunited with the rest, what? I said as I put my bags on the floor. A dark twisted smile stretched out on Danzo's lips as he looked upon me, what do you think of the leaf? What did I think about the leaf? Why ask that question now? Something was wrong, I think it's my home, I answered. Yes, Danzo nodded, seemingly satisfied with my answer, and every home needs a foundation, does it not? A foundation? Why did everything with Danzo have to be a fucking riddle, Danzo, I just had a fight with a moaning weirdo that exploded upon being captured, please go to the point. I see, Danzo nodded, the reason I am here is that I wanted to ask for your support, you see. Soon I shall be creating a new force that will serve Kanoha from the shadows, an organization that will keep the Kanoha safe, and I want you to be part of it, in a way. An organization that sounds familiar, almost like Sai, so Danzo was responsible for that, elaborate. Kanoha is suffering under Hirazan's rule, he is soft to permitting, and the roots that have kept our village in place are rotting, Danzo began. I know I can't become the Hokage, he represents the light, so instead, I will become the shadow, the roots that keep Kanoha safe, that is the purpose, now what is the cost of this dream of yours? 
I asked. As perceptive as ever, no wonder Tabarama sensei took you under his wing, Danzo smiled. The price to pay for my dream is sacrifice. And you want me to sacrifice myself for that dream, bit of a sad sales pitch don't you think? The route, it sounded familiar, yet my memories of Naruto were so distant, I only remembered a few key points, and in none of them, the route was the main part of it. No, Danzo, much to my shock, shook his head, seeming amused by my previous statement. The organization I envision and how I envision it makes it impossible for you to fully belong, then what? I asked. I want you to become the light that nurtures our shadows, after all wherever there is light, there will always be shadows Danzo answered, and the insinuation was clear. He wanted me to become Hiruzen's successor. I won't do it, I answered, realizing what he was asking. Maybe not today, Danzo agreed, but one day you will have no choice but to lead. With that he flickered out of my house, leaving me with more questions than answers. Danzo Shimura POV Raiden was smart, strong, and unlike Hiruzen, he was ruthless. He was both the shadow I envisioned to create, and the light the Hokage had to be for its followers, he was all. His immense power would shake the five nations, making them tremble in fear, his name would bring fright into the enemies of the village, and his power will force everyone to submit, that was the true meaning of being the Hokage, something I had wanted to be for a long time, but I can't not in the way I want, but he can and by him, I will under my thumb, the village will rise. Raiden will be the face, and I will be the hand behind the curtain pulling the strings of fate. Perhaps this was the reason behind Sensei's reasoning when he adopted the kit into the Senju clan, it had to be. Nurturing the future Hokage, and nurturing the village for his future rule by putting an inadequate individual before him, Sensei had to know Hiruzen would never make the tough calls, which made his decision all the more brilliant, by making Hiruzen the Hokage he would show the village they needed a different type of light, one touched by the darkness of the shinobi world. One that casts shadows all over the five nations. He's still too green, but one day he will be ready, I muttered as I walked back to the place I had selected for the foundation base. Jiraiya POV today was a special day, when the sauna would be full of sexy ladies heha, <laughs> too, Raiden was coming back, the last time we fought I was a child, weak without form, but now that has changed, and I will challenge him to a duel, not to prove anything to Tsunade, but to prove myself, I am no longer the same kid he once fought, and to show off, you got that look again, Arachimaru sighed, I will call the doctors, we are Jonin already. And we have been training for years with the Saratobi sensei. I exclaimed, why was he so sure I was going to lose this time? You want me to list alphabetically the reasons why this is a bad idea, and why you are going to lose. Arachimaru offered, fuck fighting Raiden, I will kill this fucker first. The gap that once existed is no longer their Arachi team. I growled and he chuckled. Don't take this too hard on you, in general, I don't think any of us can beat him, Arachimaru admitted, maybe if we fought him together, but alone I sincerely doubt we have anything in our arsenal to defeat him. His power, speed, chakra levels, and techniques are all on a level of his own frankly, I would have thought you of all people would know with how easily he defeated you that time. Do you really think he's that strong? I asked, shocked to see Arachimaru say such things. It's not a matter of what I think, Arachimaru replied, it's a matter of facts. After my short conversation with Danzo, I laid on my bed with my eyes staring aimlessly at the ceiling of my room, while I pondered deep in thought what Danzo had offered me and the implications of it all. Me. Being the Hokage, hilarious, especially knowing all he wanted was a puppet, a ruler for him to control, it was funny even, not the offer, or his blatant disrespect for Hiruzen, but how badly he failed at hiding his true intentions. Now the question was, how to deal with this I could tell Hiruzen, but that wouldn't change a thing, because Danzo was unfortunately right, Hiruzen was soft, and would never punish his friend. He was not one to make difficult decisions, especially when they had something to do with his friends. I just got back, and I'm already in a web of conspiracies, I sighed, deciding that, for now, I would keep an eye on Danzo, not because of his offer, politically speaking such things are to be expected, 
but because during my absence, his eyes rather I changed, he now was different, or perhaps I was just now noticing it. Time to get ready to meet Sunaid and Mito, taking a deep breath, I stood up from my bed and went to the bathroom, not only I had to get ready, but I had to get rid of the stench of blood that permeated my body from the last explosive battle. Once I was ready, I walked towards Tsunade's house and knocked at the door, one, two, three knocks and nothing, when all of the sudden, I felt as a few shurikens flew at me from behind. The weird thing was, the attack had no aggressive intent. With a sigh, I duck ever so slightly dodging the clumsy attack, as I flickered behind my attacker, just to realize it was Nawaki. Last time I saw you you wanted to play with me, I chuckled, wondering why in the seven fucks he attacked, with a smile and a defeated sigh, I smacked him on the head with enough force to send his body right through the door of his house. Well, I guess I owe a new door to Tsunade. I wanted to see if your senses had dulled senpai, Nawaki declared buried in the debris of my attack, his voice showing no pain or discomfort, which is not weird considering who his sister is, don't worry though, he chuckled, you passed my test. You are still worthy of being my rival. Rivals, since when and more importantly why? Rivals? I chuckled. Before he could reply, a bestial almost animalistic shout interrupted him, Nawaki. You better not be attacking Arachimaru or Jai well Jiraiya you can, but stop bothering Arachimaru. He attacked me, I shouted in response loud enough for her to hear, and with a second of pause, followed by a sonic boom that originated from the depths of her house, she appeared in front of me, hair messy and wow, puberty just wow. How the fuck do hormones work, she was a shapeless potato when I left for my mission, and now Jesus freaking Christ. I am beautiful, I know, Tsunade grinned and I snorted. Modest much? I teased. Modesty and personality are for those who lack on the outside, Tsunade winked, ready for you barbecue? I am, and I am very hungry, so be ready to spend a lot of money, I grinned. I am, Tsunade smiled, tackling me into a hug. I smiled and hugged her back. It sure felt good to be back home, funny how things change a person, with a cough I asked, so, is Jiria still a pervert? Tsunade snorted. Yes, he is I almost kill him once, because of it, Tsunade admitted with a shameful blush. He was spying on me while I was on the hot springs, and things got out of hand pretty quickly, if it wasn't for Arachimaru, I would have probably killed the idiot with my bare hands, I was so angry that I didn't notice I had broken over half of his bones, it took him 6 months to full- I even got a suspension for that time, it was an entire ordeal, the good thing though is that he doesn't spy on me anymore, so. Yeah. I honestly admire his perseverance, I chuckled, breaking the hug, especially knowing how stupidly hard you hit, it's almost like he wants to be killed by you, Arachimaru said the same, as he carried his bleeding body to the hospital, Tsunade sighed. Oh well ready for the barbecue? Heck yeah, I grinned. Jiraiya POV there he was, talking with Tsunade probably thinking he's so cool because he has a fan club, but I will show him that I am also cool, Raiden. Yes? Raiden smiled, as he turned around to face me. Let's have a battle amongst men. I challenged him, this was a field of expertise he had no hopes of defeating me. Then, after defeating him in manhood, I would defeat him in shinobi hood, is that a word? We'll check later. I guess I have enough time while I wait for my salad, Raiden hummed. You little I growled under my breath. He was so sure of his victory he assumed he was going to defeat me in under a minute, let's start then. As soon as I said this, Raiden flickered in front of me, kicking me out of the restaurant, as he weaved his hands ready to attack with a water-style jutsu, but before he continued, I shouted, that is not how we men fight. I I'm not sure I follow, Raiden said, narrowing his eyes at me. This is not a shinobi battle, that will come after our delicious meal, I grinned, a devilishly handsome grin if I do say so myself. A battle amongst men is this. I grinned once again, this time taking a drawing from my coat of a beautiful naked woman, only a true man can do something like this, I somehow feel dirtier than when I got to the village, right inside, looking at the drawing. You pervert. Tsunade growled in the back, as Arachimaru sighed. 
Do you give up do you declare me the winner of this battle? I cackled in mad blissful delight, Raiden had no way to defeat me in this realm, I was the supreme pervert that ruled over the men and women of Kanoha, I had the lewd power with me. Hmm, well I can beat you, but not sure how everyone will react to that, Raiden chuckled, and I froze he was confident, not he had to be bluffing, he wasn't a pervert if he was my pervert Tradar would have caught it up. How exactly, here is Insensei, who was bleeding from his nose at how detailed my drawing was, asked. Raiden Tsunade sighed, nodding with approval, defeat this pervert on his own game, Tsunade was supporting him. Foolish woman, I was a god within this reality. Okay, Raiden sighed, weaving some hand signs, summon. Succubus. As soon as those words left his mouth, a beautiful almost naked demonic entity appeared, her thickness, her breasts KO, blood spitting everywhere, I laid on the ground as the sweet world of darkness embraced me, I cried, not because Raiden defeated me once again, but because he had shown me the meaning of perfection in its purest form. Raiden POV it seemed that summoning my Sekubi was a bad idea, I not only knocked out Jureya, but here is an, the sheer amount of blood they had lost was ridiculous, and yet, that was the least of my problems, for Tsunade, Mido, and Hirazan's wife, who he had married while I was away, Buwako, were angry at me. You told me to defeat him, I sighed, as Tsunade and the rest of the females in the party fumed at me. I know what I said, but this is have you you know. Have I wa uo. No Tsunade, I have not fucked my summon. That would be disgusting on many levels, and morally questionable I mean, she follows my commands to the letter, so I am pretty sure no consent would be real, I sighed. What purpose would such summon have Boako exclaimed. She can charm individuals under a jinjutsu that attacks the most primal instincts we have, I answered. Interesting, Arachimaru who was unaffected by my summon smiled, a summon that traps enemies under the carnal desires, it's brilliant. Whatever it is, unsummon her. Tsunade apparently was not so on board with my Sekubi. Sure, I shrugged, doing as I was told. After taking Jureya and Hirazin to the hospital for the abnormal amount of blood they had lost, the welcome home party continued, with Tsunade, Mido and Buwako, making me promise not to use that summon ever again, unless it was absolutely necessary. A bit of an overreaction if you ask me, but it is what it is, besides I don't really use my Sekubi in battle, my other demons have better battle use in this world. After the party ended. I walked home with Tsunade, talking about our fake engagement and things around that subject, until eventually we arrived at the Senju district, a lone deserted place once full of life. With a smile, I bid my goodbyes and walked home, to find Arachimaru standing in front of my house with a rather conflicted look on his face. Raiden, Arachimaru greeted, his tone distant more so than ever. Any reason why you are staring at my house? I asked, inwardly reminding myself that in the future he would become a monster for the sake of power and knowledge. How do you do it? Arachimaru eventually asked, breaking the silence. Do what? I asked. Break the barriers this world has set on us, Arachimaru said, at every turn you prove things that we thought impossible, are possible indeed Dan yet, no one but you does it, and the reason why you are different eludes me, no answer I give you will satisfy you, I replied. Arachimaru chuckled, I thought as much, thanks for your time, with that said, Arachimaru walked past me without saying a word. And as he walked past me, a dark thought formed within my very self. What if I killed him? What if I killed him before he became a monster? And if I did would that truly be justice? After all, what is to say this world is the same I saw on TV? For now I would wait and see killing him just for the sake of avoiding such fate, was a hasty decision at best, for all I knew, my very being in this universe, could have very well created a butterfly effect, changing the very course of history as I know it, and if the future I knew remained the same, then I would kill him, after all. The pseudo-immortality he will so proudly acquire in the future means nothing to me. The next morning, I woke up to be summoned by the Hokage, who wanted to talk with me about something. That something was the founding of a new force within the left, the Root. Apparently, Hirazin wanted me to be part of it, at least for a while, an offer which I strongly refused. 
Working for Danzo was a hard no, the guy wasn't bad, but his complex of God was too much for me to handle. Hirazan was obviously not exactly happy with my decision, but I quickly reminded him, I had the right to refuse transfers, a right that was there thanks to the first hokage. I thought you and Danzo were friends, Hirazan sighed, finally accepting my choice. Friends is a strong word, I would see we are acquaintances, and I am risking it, I replied, just when did he assume I was friends with his self-proclaimed rival. The route could really use your guidance, Hirazan said, and I sighed. Hirazan, I won't join I don't like the Anbu, and I sure as hell won't like the darker or edgier version of it, I sighed. Fair enough, Hirazan sighed, finally relenting from his stupid stupid idea. I also won't be going back to active duty anytime soon, I stated, I spent six years servicing the feudal lord, and I need some time off. Kaharu who had entered the room just there growled, a shinobi must always be ready to do as he is told, easy for you to say, all you do is sit on your ass and tell others what to do, I shot back, walking out of the office, not wanting to hear her replies. Kaharu POV I didn't like Raiden, he was arrogant and overconfident, and didn't respect my authority as one of the council members, and if I had it my way, I would have his head under the ground. But somehow, the brat I didn't like, had the support of not only Hirazin but Danzo, two polar opposites supporting him, the two most influential shinobi of the leaf support him, and not only that, but he had managed to befriend the feudal lord, making him virtually untouchable. I still remember the day Danzo came to us a few years ago. Talk with Danzo flashback as I waited for the reports of how the situation we had put Raiden in was working out, Hamura entered the room, his face broken in wounds. Worried, I rushed to him, only to find Danzo standing right behind him. Before I could question what happened, Danzo kicked me in the face, breaking my nose, as he chastised us, you really thought I was going to allow such a thing to happen? Holding my nose in pain, I raged, what is the meaning of this Danzo? Raiden is a resource the village can't afford to lose, Danzo cursed loud enough for me to hear, his unique set of skills make him ever more valuable important and reliable, that the tailed beasts, and yet you two idiots, decided to alienate him shun him from the village, he is a brat, and the reason Tabarama is dead. I snapped, just to find a kunai lodged in my stomach, the pain shutting me up. He is irreplaceable, at least until we confirm whether or not his abilities are inheritable, but you two are not, Danzo growled, if you two ever cross Raiden again, I will ensure a tragic accident during a mission, so behave or I will put you two in a permanent timeout. He threatened his eyes promising every word he had just said. Back to present the dark with Danzo and the light with Hirazan, and the in-between with the feudal lord, he has political protection from every single angle, from an orphan to the most precious possession of the leaf, how life makes turns. Weeks had passed since my welcome back party, where I had been forced to promise not to use the succubus unless it was absolutely necessary. Good I guess, it didn't really matter unless I was fighting Hirazin or Jureya, there was no point in summoning my succubus. After that, I returned to my daily activities, this time with Tsunade going on missions with me and her time, at first I was reluctant, I mean it was no secret Jureya hated me, but then he didn't in fact, my reputation with him jumped from neutral to paragon during the welcome back party, he was now sure I was the chosen one to lead the perverts of the nation, whatever that meant. Not that I wanted to find out. Arachimaru on the other hand was distant more so than ever, perhaps it was already too late for him, perhaps I would be forced to kill him, I really didn't know how to stop his change, or what exactly triggered it, so all I could do was see and wait and kill him if destiny doesn't change. Missions were simple enough, not much to do in times of peace, escorting some rich people to meet other rich people, killing bandit clans, killing missing ninja, and stuff along those lines. And during these missions, Tsunade flirted with me, and I honestly didn't know how to react she was a minor, and in mind, I was an adult, but here my pre-shinobi rules didn't matter, but for me they did it was quite a conundrum because I liked her, she was a nice girl which I liked spending my time with, but beyond that, it felt wrong to do more. Maybe I was hanging up on stupid stuff that didn't matter, but that's how I was raised before all of this. 
You don't like me do you? Sunaid sighed, a sad sigh at that. No, it's not that, I replied all too hasty. You swing the other way? Sunaid gasped. No, I do not. Swing that way, I chuckled. Then I am lost Sunaid sighed. Look I kinda feel I am too young to be in a relationship, I elaborated, but I am open to trying later on, so, if you are still interested in let's say two years, then I promise you I will take you out on a date, too young to date, but old enough to kill you are a weird mix between a civilian and a shinobi, Tsunade chuckled, okay pretty boy, why not, I waited until now, she winked. Oh no wonder you are the master. The chosen one, you have shown me the way to a woman's heart. Jiraiya who apparently had been hiding on a tree declared, bowing in respect in front of me. I he makes it so easy to punch him, Tsunade sighed. Is this Motherficker for real? Nick Ravenicus cawed, tell that bitch to stand up and have so pride, this shit sickens me. Star. Is that your mighty summon, huh? I see ravens so you look mysterious. You are a genius. Jiraiya nodded, may I touch your summon? Oh hell no. This motherficker touches me, and I will go full afro samurai on him Nick Cod. you better tell that frog ass looking bitch, that if he touches me, he will need the eye patch I have not me, he would prefer not to be touched, I translated. Understood, Jiraiya nodded with a grin. You missed a few bitches on that translation, but whatever it works to keep that motherficker out of my feathers Nick caught an approval. Can can you summon the goddess you summoned that time? Jiraiya eventually asked. That's it I am killing this bitch. Here is in POV I expected many things from Danzo, a kunai to the back? Sure, every Tuesday, a poison tea, is it Wednesday already? But in proposing to make raid in the next hokage was not something I had foreseen at all, it was shocking, to say the least, heck I expected him to try and get the position for himself, but for Raiden? Never. It was truly shocking, and even more when one considers Hamura and Kaharu supported his decision, and the feudal lord, meaning all he needed was my vote, and he would become the next Hokage, even without my vote he would, the feudal lord and the council wanted him to take the mantle. So I accepted saying that I would retire once I reached my 50s, giving Raiden some time to leave a normal life where mornings and nights are filled with paperwork. Danzo, the council, and the feudal lord accepted this little comprise alongside some minor things I asked, like not telling Raiden about it, for our decision could change in the future, who knows. But for now, I had to admit, he was the best available choice, after him maybe Jiraiya, but I am not sure I want to see him on the seat. I am glad you accepted Hirazan, Danzo said, giving me the closest thing to a smile Danzo could give. Well, he is the best option, I admitted. That he is, Danzo nodded as he turned to Hamura and Kaharu, isn't he? Yes, they both answered rather fast. Arachimaru POV life and death, fragile things, but somehow Raiden managed to break them and reform them to his liking, he can give life and take it away, meaning that sensei was wrong, there were ways and it was not like I could force him to tell me either way if only I could perhaps I would find a way to know, don't well on that not anymore. If he could I can maybe I'm just not looking in the right direction, everything was a matter of optics, and how I saw my problem. Back in the village, I went to the training grounds to train. Where I found a white-haired man training with his team, the man seeing me, smiled, and introduced himself, Haddock Sakumo, from a simple glance, I could see he was stronger than the future Sanon, by a lot, his chakra, the way he behaved and everything else shouted power, and easy enough I got excited at the idea of fighting. Sakumo, seeing this, stopped what he was doing and said, you are known across the nations, this is an opportunity I can't let go so, if you don't mind, would you like to have a spar with me, a spar, that was exactly what I was looking for. Excited at the prospect of having a friendly spar with someone close to my level, I eagerly agreed. Clearing the training ground from any other shinobi, as to not inadvertently hurt them, we got into position, with Tsunade and her team on the edges of the training ground alongside Sakumo's team, who were all excited for what was about to happen, the White Fang of Konoha versus the Walking Calamity of the Leaf. Tsunade, taking the role of the presenter, shouted, Begin. 
Tsunade had barely finished her sentence when I instantly charged at my foe flickering in front of him. The latter had already been in a defensive stance, which allowed him a sliver of time to parry my attack. Taking a few steps back, Sakumo blocked my next two blows as well, before attempting to counter with a fireball technique, which failed when I silenced his cast with one of my interrupts as I pushed him with a kick. Bracing in on another stable defensive stance, Sakumo exhaled. As I continued with my assault, delivering a horizontal kick that the older ninja parried with his elbow. The block threw me off balance, and Sakumo intended to take advantage of that. Sakumo advanced forward trying to take advantage of my broken balance, but was taken aback by the speed with which I had recovered my balance. It wasn't the first time someone had broken my balance, so with that done, I was instantly back on him with a flicker delivering a barrage of powerful fists, each set even stronger than the last. Using my monk skills to push him back. The haddock was quickly becoming overwhelmed by my you, you know I haven't had this much fun in a while, I said with a smirk. Sakumo didn't respond, instead, he opted to bring his chakra saber into the battle, cutting the ground in an attempt to slice me, too bad you are going to lose, he declared. Bold words, for someone within slam distance, I replied, slamming my chakra-powered fist into his stomach. Spitting blood, Sakumo began losing major momentum, and now he could hardly attack at all. He had no time to find an opening, so I would give him one to end this once and for all, so letting myself wide open after an attack, I waited for Sakumo to take the bait, who sadly did. And as he took the opening I had given him, I twirled around planting another punch to his stomach, making Sakumo doubled over, gasping in pain. His eyes met mine for a second, just before I landed another slam to the back of his neck, knocking him out. The winner is. Raiden. Sunade happily announced as I proceeded to heal the haddock, the battle had been fun, but short perhaps I was stronger than I thought I was. The news of my battle with Sakumo spread over the village like gossip in a small town, and soon people were talking about me, some said I humiliated Sakumo, others that our battle was legendary and would echo through the ages, me personally? I didn't think it was much of a battle, sure he lasted more than many, but my intention was not to kill him, had I gone for the kill he would have died during the first minute of our fight, I suppose I was being too harsh on him, he was an assassination specialist, not a frontliner like myself. Raiden, that voice, Danzo. To what do I owe the pleasure, I sighed, not really in the mood for Danzo and his schemes. I have talked with Hirazan about our little plan, our little plan? That sounded like I had a part in it, which is not true. Let me guess, you are going to tell me what happened? I humored him. He accepted, at this, I almost choked. What? I almost screamed, how could Hirazan pick me to be the next Hokage, I was I a bad choice? I, he doesn't want you to know, in case a better candidate appears, but so far you are to be the next hokage of the hidden leaf, Danzo declared, in the meantime, I will make sure you fame grows and expands across the five nations, that why when the time to take the hat comes. Hirazan won't have an option but to stand down, what if I don't want to be the hokage? I asked. You care about the village, more so than most would you let Hirazan destroy it? Danzo asked. No, I replied. Then I have nothing to worry about, Yandame Hokage, with that said, Danzo flickered out of sight, leaving me with a sense of heaviness settling in. Sakumo Haddock POV defeated in under 3 minutes, well ain't that shameful for me, so much for the white fang of Kanoha, though I can hardly blame me, the kid danced around me like a fox about to kill a mouse and his jutsus. We're on a level of his own, the one he used to forcibly cancel my jutsu was a unique ability that if used right, could end a battle quite easily. Well, I guess this means I have to train. I declared with a chuckle, it had been a while since I lost maybe it was time to up my training quite a few notches. The Flying Thunder God, a very unique jutsu that worked by interchanging the chakra commands of a summoning jutsu, in theory. For that to work, the user had too had extensive knowledge in the arts of sealing for even one mistake in the sealing formula, would end in mistakes like teleporting a missing limb, one that you just lost. Which is why I had taken a particular interest in the art of sealing. 
If a technique like the flying thunder god was possible only with the art of sealing, then what else? What were the limits of sealing? For now though I would master the flying thunder god technique, and then I would see where this trail would lead me. Or so I thought, as I tried to master the technique I had gotten into because of Tabarama Sensei, I discovered sealing had some interesting applications. Like making people feel pain, you see the human body is an engineering marvel of biology, but even the most perfect creation has its faults, it's really easy to manipulate how the body reacts to something if you know where to look, and I knew where to look at. By overstimulating the sensory receptors of our body, you can make living beings feel an array of different things, but the one that is the most important is pain, pure and absolute pain. And based on this marvelous biological fact my very first seal was created. Seal of Agony. By marking my target with a one-layer seal of my invention, I amplify the already present pain in my target, by multiplying the existing pain by a few hundredfold imagine the pain of a stub toe multiple by a thousand. Exactly, when used right this technique could end fights after a single attack, the pain of a punch could become the meaning of agony to someone. And that was just the first seal of a few I created basing them on the formula of my first one, the second one was, seal of blindness, as the name suggests it leaves the target blind, for as long as the seal is in place, by altering the nerves around the eye, effectively blinding them. Seal of balance, this one was a tricky one because of the part of the human body it was targeting, but in the end I managed to make it work, I made so it would affect the inner ear of the human body, effectively fucking with the human equilibrium. These three seals were incredibly useful, because in reality no matter how strong a ninja was, he was still a human, meaning that no matter how strong they were, everyone had the same factory defects, even me. I might not know how to use the flying thunder god technique yet, but I am getting there, I grinned as I continued to experiment with my seals. Danzo POV to ensure Raiden's descent into a world of darkness masked by light, I had to make some preparations. Raiden was like a blank canvas waiting to be made a work of art by my hand, a unique piece with a tale of blood and glory, but right now, he was too green. I had to guide him, to push him into the path Tabarama Sensei had drawn for him, but to do that I had to be careful, Raiden was a smart shinobi, and if I came too strong he would see right through my plans. But what I lacked in power I had in intelligence, I knew that the best way to drag a shinobi into the darkness of this world, was to drown their light, and he had many. Soon, you will see the world like I do Raiden, and when that day comes Konoha will undisputedly be the village that rules the world, I declared with determination. A rakage POV sends you Raiden, the undead calamity, or the walking calamity so many monikers, yet so young. His power already made many tremble, I had first hand seen what the kid was able to do, entire graveyards were filled with his victims. At first I wanted to kidnap him to breed his unique set of skills into my village, but after a few attempts, it was more than clear that it was an impossible mission. So, I decided to change my approach. Miss Yum, your mission is simple, you will go to Kanoha and play for a civilian girl, your sole target to seduce him, and by any means necessary come back with a baby in you, a honeypot mission, Miss Yum was by many considered one of the most beautiful Kanoichi Kumo had ever seen, her specialty infiltration this mission was made for her. And if we succeeded we would have all the DNA we wanted from Raiden. As you wish, Rakage sama Miss Yum nodded. I know this is a hard mission Miss Yum, but considering what our reports have say about him, we believe you enter his criteria, blonde, older than him and with a voluptuous body, I stated. I understand Rakage sama Miss Yum nodded. There is not such a thing as too low in this mission, so do what you must to carry his seed, I said. I promise, I won't come back without his child in me, Miss Yum promised. Then go and make your village proud, I nodded and she flickered out of sight. Turning to my Anbu guards, I muttered, bring the other girls, I have to discuss with them the mission, we have to ensure he has enough options to pick, if we are lucky they will come back pregnant, young girls, mature women, and in between, any type of fetish a man could have Raiden would have to pick, one way or another we would have his seed. As you wish, the Anbu nodded, flickering to get the girls. 
This plan could backfire horribly, B reminded me. We don't have much of an option I reminded him. Raiden's existence was already shaking the balance of the world, and we had to restore it. Schemes were a common occurrence in the shinobi world, everyone had one of them, which is why it came as no surprise when a few dozen females started to hit on me. Why did I consider this a scheme? Well, they were from Kumo, on their reputation tabs they hated me, but on the outside they were all over me, what was Kumo's plan? Probably to get a child of mine. With this painfully obvious scheme brewing within the walls of Kanoha, I informed Hiruzen of the situation, who told me not to do anything, because if I killed them, Kumo would use that as an excuse to demand retribution and possibly break the peace treaty. Do nothing sometimes I wonder if Danzo is right and Hiruzen is a terrible leader, I mean I understand his point, I do. But to let enemy shinobi roam free within the village out of fear of starting another war that was deplorably sad and disappointing. So with Hiruzen's magnificent plan of doing nothing, I went to Danzo, who thank god had a plan, look I am not against beautiful women throwing themselves at me, it's exhilarating to a primal degree, but when those women are on a mission to milk me, quite literally, and they were paid to do so well, it stops being exhilarating and starts being creepy. Especially when you consider the selection of women Kumo sent, from mature women Aka milfs to children barely above 10, the situation was utterly disgusting in many ways, if I had to guess they probably didn't know for sure my type of woman or my tastes and simple tried to hit every possible fetish box. It's safe to say I hated Kumo for this shit, and so Danzo had a plan, but just in case I also told Mito, who bitch slapped Hiruzen alongside Bawako forcing him to act, which in turn modified Danzo's plan into a more friendly one, just to avoid wars. What was the plan? I had no idea, Danzo's first plan was to brainwash the Kumo Nin, so that we would get classified information about their village, that plan while good would have broken the peace treaty very hard, which is why I went to the next person I knew I could trust, not that I could trust on Danzo, anyway I went to Mito, who then went to Biwako and well, plans changed, and I had no idea where we stood. Okay, can I know what the hell are we going to do? I asked. I have discussed with Mito-sama and my wife about what to do, Hiruzen started as Mito and Biwako grinned, why were they grinning? Something isn't right. You are going to marry Tsunade, Mito said and which in turn made me choke on my own saliva like a dying dog. Are you and forgive me for this, but are you fucking out of your mind? I exclaimed, I'm 15 years old. Tsunade is 15 years old. The moment they find out you are married they will have no other option, but to go back to their village, it is as simple as that, Buako stated in a cold tone. Relax, Hiruzen chuckled his cheeks still red from the bitch slapping he had received prior to this conversation. It will be a fake marriage, well that made it a bit better, okay, a fake marriage that no one but the ones present here will know it's fake, Danzo added, for the entire village and the outside world it will be real, and that made it worse. I can I just round them up and take them to Kumo? I offered. No, the moment you deliver them, the rakage will kill them and blame their deaths on you, Hiruzen stated, the only way we can avoid such thing, is by marrying you to someone, how, how the Fikinks actly willed that avoid that development I was having a meltdown, their plan so far made no sense. Because we will invite the Rakage and the other cage to the village, Mito grinned. By inviting them, we will not only ensure they get the message you are not available, but that we know they are sending whores to breed with you, Buwako added. Fuck me, I sighed. Wait till your wedding night, Mito smirked and I groaned. Nick Ravenica's POV first there was Ronard then this motherficker, and both had to marry young, what the fuck is wrong with the world? Why can't people marry at an acceptable age, I suppose humans don't follow the old raven ways that state a raven can only marry after their 18th birthday. The world crazy is, hmm, save our new master we must wrote a cod. Can you fucking call like a normal bird you copyright infringing motherficker? I cod back. Suck my dick you must, for a bitch you are, hm yes, Rhoda cawed back in a challenging way. The fuck did you just say I cawed back at him, ready to fight? Offended you are? A shit I don't give, Rhoda cawed back. That's it. 
I am ending you speech therapy needing bitch. I caw jumping at him. Brayden send you POV well, I suppose a fake marriage isn't that bad I don't really have to sleep with Tsunade, not that I consider her ugly, but it is morally wrong, and I refuse to dip the tip until I am 18 years old, or my partner is 18 years old, my age is really not a factor, but the age of my partner. Surprisingly Tsunade accepted this way too easy, in fact she seemed somewhat happy, but maybe I was imagining things unless no, no, Mito would not use this as a way to tie me that cleaver bitch. Well I have been checkmated by an old lady, I laughed, as I wondered how Jiraiya would react to this. Perhaps he would go back to hate me? Raiden. Jiraiya shouted, as he entered my house through the window like a fucking comet, teach me senpai marrying so young to such a woman i must learn your ways i guess that answers how he would react a fake wedding a foolish idea to try and prevent the other villages from continuing to send women for me to have sex with them tsunade alarmed by the situation agreed but even so i disliked the idea i didn't want to get married because the other villages wanted my seed I wanted to get married because I was in love, call me sentimental, but that's what I wanted. So I started to think, there had to be another way to avoid this whole situation, but no matter how much I thought, I could not get a clean escape. The wedding, although insane, was the only plan that would not result in war. I am fucked, I chuckled, perhaps I was overreacting, I mean, after all, this was a fake wedding, a tool to keep the other villages at bay. Raiden, we have to go buy your Mitsuki. Jiraiya who now I couldn't shake off me shouted. Since the day I summoned that succubus his entire demeanor changed, and I don't like it, heck my reputation with him is better than my reputation with Tsunade, I think he wants me to teach him how to summon my succubus, disgusting. I'm coming, I replied in a tired manner. I really didn't know what I was complaining about, I liked Tsunade, and although our age bothered me, the only thing I had to do was wait until I felt comfortable, it's not like the rules of my previous world applied here, although morally I would feel filthy, regardless of all that, I would wait until we were both older before trying anything, and even then. I would wait to see if she loved me and if I loved her, she deserved that. When I reached the front door of my house, I noticed that Jiraiya was not alone, Arachimaru was accompanying him. I was forced to come, Arachimaru, noticing that I was looking at him with confusion, answered the question I had in my head. Letting out a soft chuckle, I looked at him and said, if you want you can go, I'll tell them you helped me if they ask. Arachimaru cracked a smile and shook his head. I already cleared my calendar, so I'll help. Besides, Jiraiya will ruin everything, and I must avoid that if I don't wish to die at the hands of Mido-sama. So I wasn't the only one who was mildly afraid of that woman, I guess her influence spreads even further than I thought, okay, we should go buy my clothes then, and after that, I have no idea. Arachimaru sighed as he shook his head in disappointment, sometimes I think I'm the only organized ninja in the village, after we buy your clothes, we must collect everything from your house and move it to the main Senju estate residence, after that we must go to the bank to inform that you will soon be married and that Tsunade will have access to your account in case of emergencies. Then we must go to the hospital to verify your medical records and after that we must book the wedding venue. Jiraiya, who was on the verge of tears, whispered, and the bachelor party? Arachimaru sighed, if we have time, I thought Mito would reserve the venue for the wedding, in all honesty, I thought the Hokage and Mito would cover most of the expenses. If that were so, she wouldn't have given me a list of all the things that were missing, she will only be in charge of paying for Tsunade's food and clothes, while the Hokage will pay for the drinks and the cake, Arachimaru replied, showing me the list, now, let's get started there's a lot to do and little time to do it, my recommendation. Let's create some clones to divide the tasks. Clones, Arachimaru was truly a genius, excellent, I nodded my head and created 10 clones, while Arachimaru and Jiraiya did the same. You five, visit all the brothels and report back to me which one is the best, my senpai deserves only the best. Jiraiya who was in his perverted mode, ordered five of his clones, while the orders dissipated because of nosebleeds. 
Orochimaru sighed, okay, you and I will do everything apparently, which works for me Jiraiya, he's kind of slow when it comes to anything outside of the female body. Hey! Jiraiya exclaimed, insulted by Orochimaru's comment. You just sent five clones on what I assume is a masturbatory mission, no matter what you say. Your reality is inescapable, Orochimaru replied as he distributed the tasks between my clones and his. I'll ignore the term used for that mission, I smiled awkwardly, now let's get this over with. Unlike you. I'm acting like the best man. Raiden deserves the best pair of boobs in Kanoha for his bachelor party. And I'm going to get them for him. Jiraiya declared. I never expect anything from him, and yet he still manages to disappoint me, Arachimaru sighed. A third rakage POV Kanoha had acted quickly and cunningly, noticing that we had sent women after Raiden, they decided to marry him off. Which would make our plans almost impossible to form, for several reasons, but the main one was. They had invited me and every other cage in the five nations to the wedding. This was a message from Kanoha, a very clear message, that said. We know what you are doing, stop or face the consequences. Clever, really clever. B. Prepare a convoy, we are going to Kanoha. As you wish, B replied, rushing off to organize our trip. Mu second Suchikage POV Kanoha inviting the rock to a wedding, this was intriguing and infuriating. But, for the moment, we were at peace and peace, though fictitious required repulsive acts, like attending their wedding or sending a gift, seeing as I hated Kanoha with all my might, a gift it was. Sent the brat some money, and be done with it, I ordered one of my ninjas. Jinjetsu Hazuki second Mizukage POV the boy who had survived me was getting married, how times flies by, good for him, but fuck him. Tell Kanoha to fuck off. I'm not going to the wedding of the boy who made a fool of me. Sarsa's say Mew is sending money, one of my Anbu informed me. Oh hell no. I will not be outdone by that cheap mummy ripoff. Sent the brat twice as much as Mew sent. I ordered. After days of preparation, the day of the wedding had arrived. Of all the cage invited only the rakage had come, and with his arrival the dozens of women he had sent stopped their mission, showing that Mito's plan was working. The wedding, though fake, had been advertised as a huge event throughout Kanoha. All the clans had been invited, making it the biggest event of the current era, at least for Kanoha. Wish me luck, I sighed looking at my best men, Kagami, Arachimaru and Jiraiya. You don't need luck, Jiraiya grinned, he was surprisingly happy considering I was marrying his crush, I have prepared you for a life full of boobs, by showing you the best boobs of Kanoha during your bachelor's party. You showed him the boobs of all the strippers in Kanoha, Arachimaru sighed, rolling his eyes in annoyance. Meh, one of them had to be the best, Jiraiya shrugged, wiggling his eyebrows in a disturbing way. Statistically that makes no sense, but I have learned to ignore your stupidity, Arachimaru cracked a smile. Fuck you, Jiraiya smirked. See what I have to deal with? Arachimaru sighed, ignoring the fuming pervert. Meh, I'd seen worse, I chuckled, Herzuin was worse at times. You mean sensei? Yes I am aware, Arachimaru nodded. I am still here. Jiraiya shouted. We are aware, ignoring you is surprisingly hard you are like a son of stupidity, impossible to avoid Arachimaru sighed. This is fun and all, but I am getting married, and you two fighting is only delaying the last preparations, I reminded them. Fine I will kick your ass later Arachi team, Jiraiya grinned. Sorry you said something? Arachimaru tilted his head, pretending he had not heard a word of what Jiraiya had said. At times like this I wonder, when did the normal portion of my life became hanging out with Arachimaru the creepiest Naruto character, and Jiraiya the most perverted one, I miss the days where a normal day was reading a book or playing some games, before you two start fighting. Let's finish the preparations shall we? Fine, Jiraiya nodded, his eyes on Arachimaru who simply nodded at my request. Tsunade POV when Grandma Mito said I was going to marry Raiden, I assumed she was saying when I was older. I was wrong, though in her defense this wedding was to protect Raiden from the horrors of the other nations. But even then, Grandma Mito said to take advantage of this situation, to win his heart once and for all. 
I liked Raiden, I liked him a lot, but did I love him? Maybe, I wasn't sure, love is a very complex emotion, but what I did know was that I liked him, so maybe Grandma Mito was onto something, maybe this was my chance to see if what I felt was more than a childish crush. Are you ready? Grandma Mito asked. I am, I nodded, giving her a nervous smile. I remember the day I married your grandpa, Grandma Mito smiled, he was so strong and yet so innocent, you should have seen him, the god of shinobi looking like a lost puppy, it was kinda endearing seeing such a strong man, so lost in the battlefield we women reign supreme. But how did you know if you loved him? I asked, my fingers fidgeting. Darling, love is built I didn't love your grandpa before I married him, I hardly knew the man, but with time that powerful puppy invaded my heart, Grandma Mito smiled, at least you like Raiden both as a person and as a man, that's 50% of what you need to build love, the rest? Experiences so you're saying love at first sight doesn't exist? I asked. At this Grandma started to laugh, oh no, that doesn't exist, maybe infatuation at first sight, but love? Love is built like a house it can be strong or weak, it all depends on the materials and foundation you use to build that love. I like him a lot, in all honesty he is the only man in the village I find attracting, and he's also my best friend, I chuckled, I guess I'm halfway through like you said. Don't rush things, you will know the moment you fall in love, and that day priorities will switch for the both of you, Grandma Mito smiled, now let's do your makeup. A third rakage POV Raiden, I had seen what the brat had done, but never seen the brat himself, and as the report said, he was strong too strong, his power already reached that of the cage, and while I had no doubts I could take him on, I knew it would be no easy task. Immorality, the power to raise the dead and various bloodlines within him, it was no surprise he survived the Mizukage, the brat was built to last. Too bad we couldn't farm his genes before this stupid wedding, I suppose it was naive thought to think he would fall for such a trick, but it was worth a shot. I have confirmed our monetary gift to be above all of the other gifts the other cage sent, be informed me, why was I interested in such information? Well, in peace times this was a power move, the bigger the gift the more power the village was showing, and Kumo was not about to be outdone by anyone. Good, keep checking just in case we have to add some extra money to the gift, I ordered him, it was no secret Mew, and Jinjetsu were trying to outdone each other and me, so I would stay vigilant, because even though they were not here, their representatives had clear orders to not let the others outdone their villages. As you wish, B nodded, walking over to the gift section. Breakage, that voice, here is in Saratobi, the third Hokage, I am happy that at least one of the cage came to the wedding, I had no reason to deny such an invitation, after all, we are at peace right? I replied. That we are, here is a nodded, well if you excuse me, I have to put my gift with the others. Hiruzen was a smart man, a troubling smart man, which is why he had unintentionally showed me how much money he was giving the couple before going to the gift section, the bastard knew I wasn't going to let anyone outdone Kumo, and had intentionally started a conversation so that I would inspect him and notice his gift was twice as big as ours. That bastard if the Hokage wanted a gift war, he would get one. Weeks after the wedding, my life returned to its normal pace, with the difference that I was now living with Tsunade, which made my mornings quite interesting. Hormonally speaking, I was dealing with a lot of stuff, but beyond that, it was fun to have a roomie. Outside of my completely sexless married life, I dedicated myself to crafting and finishing my racial quests, to burn time. It was a good time burner, and it gave me the chance to improve upon different things, like my ceiling and other similar things, like how I had discovered ceiling and inscription could be mixed together, I had yet to find a practical use for this. But at least I knew you could mix the two. As for crafting, well. I had finally crafted a gun, bringing the very first gun into the shinobi world, which was, in short, a very powerful weapon, infinite ammunition with explosive power, it basically made my gun one of if not the most versatile weapon in the shinobi world, of today that is. Now the hard part was, to adjust my fighting style so that I could use the gun without hurting my power. 
which after some deliberation, I came to the conclusion that I would use the guns as I used shurikens and kunes, only in long distance situations. Raiden? Or should I call you honey? Tsunade, who was loving the teasing material the marriage had given her greeted me, as she entered my workshop. Me, who was by this point immune to her shenanigans shrugged, I am cool with whatever. It's no fun when you don't give a reaction, Tsunade pouted, sitting on one of the chairs of my study. I adapt, that's my thing, I said, as I continued working on my ceiling. So wanna train? I knew it. I suppose, I sighed, closing the scroll I was working on. Today, I will fight you without the weights, I want to show you how fast I have become. Tsunade grinned, and for some reason, I didn't like the sound of that. I regretted many things, not watching the entire Naruto series which would have been nice now that I am here, I also regretted not playing Dark Souls and other stuff, but none of those regrets came even close to what I felt about telling Tsunade about training weights. I was stronger than Tsunade, by a lot I was also faster than her, but the moment she took her weights, her newfound speed shocked me, and for that brief tenth of a second that I resisted, she broke my arm and all of my ribs with a light tap. Before I heard people in the back of my head crying, allow me to explain, the shock froze me, but not enough for me to take the full hit, so at the last second I tried to dodge, and she brushed my arm with the tip of her leg, that alone was enough to pulverize my arm and shatter all my rips as the force of the impact dispersed into my body. Holy Jesus, I whistled as I healed my wounds with a flash heal, realizing Tsunade was on her way to become the strongest Sanin of the trio, well she already was. How was that? Tsunade oblivious to the fact she had crushed a good part of my body inquired happily as she continued to try and attack me. You broke my arm and ribs with that love tap, I chuckled as I dodged the onslaught of attacks she was unleashing upon me, never again I would let her hit me again. I did, but you barely flinched, Tsunade muttered. Of course I didn't react, I have exploded myself multiple times and have lost limbs during battle, breaking a few bones is a spa day for me, I can handle pain quite well, I winked, flickering behind her delivering a spinning kick to her side. Tsunade in pain from my attack, chuckled, I suppose I need to work on that too then, it would be beneficial, I nodded. I'm not gonna win am I? Tsunade sighed. Nope, I grinned playfully. Well honey, let me break a bone or two before dinner. Tsunade giggled, dashing towards me, foolish little girl, that love tap was more than enough to mark in my head, the unshakable fact that I had to dodge or redirect her attacks, never tank them unless. Grinning with curiosity, I casted all my armor buff spells, bone armor, devotion aura, iron fur and others to increase my natural defenses, let me take it. And that I did, and this time, I felt nothing. I am fucked am I? Tsunade chuckled nervously. Yep, I grinned, continuing our sparring match. Black Zetsu POV piece was slowing down my plans, and it was time to act so with the connection to Mother Madara had, I planted the idea he had to start the Second Shinobi World War by making the villagers think one of them broke the treaty, something easy to accomplish with the help of White Zetsu. Nothing like a good disguise and a bit of blood to start up a war, after all, no matter how much time passes, humans remain the same, unchanging animals waiting to be farmed by mother. Soon, soon I shall free you from the shackles of isolation mother soon, I had waited eons, and the time was drawing near, in a few decades all my plans would finally give me the results I so much desired, bringing back the one who had birthed me. Madara will send 20 clones of mine to start the war, they already have the disguises they will need White Zetsu informed me. Good, now how is the plan to plant spores on Raiden going? I asked, that brat while inconsequential to my plans, had unique powers, and the potential to be my plan B should Madara fail. I haven't been able to get close to him, White Zetsu admitted, besides, I don't think it's wise to do so I have a feeling he can see more than he should at a jutsu? Intriguing, do you think it's a dejutsu, during my time spying on him he didn't showcase such power, but he did show the odd skill to sense my presence. I don't think so, White Zetsu sighed, 
I think he has the ability to see beyond facades, like he did with the females you manipulated the third rakage to send under your guys oh great Kumo elder, he snickered. Then keep an eye on him from afar, if he does have the power to see beyond our disguises, I think it's best to avoid direct contact, for now. I don't know how it started or why, but a year after my fake wedding, some ninja from our village attacked Iwa, breaking the peace treaty. And now we were once again at war, what had me in doubt was that this incident happened all over the country, and we were the protagonists of this in every scenario, Iwa attacked Suna, Suna attacked Kumo, Kumo attacked Kiri, and so on, nobody knew who threw the first stone, only that we were at war. 17 years old, and I was at war again, two wars in the span of my short life, it almost seemed premeditated somehow. But I had no proof or leads that hinted otherwise. Raiden, here is in greeted me as he entered my house. That was an odd occurrence, normally he would summon me. What do you need here is in, I am enjoying the last few moments of peace we have before I have to go and fight this war, maybe my response was harsh, but I couldn't help it, I was angry with the world for how things were turning out. I know how you feel, here is inside, his eyes showing the weight all of this was pushing on him, I came here to ask you a favor. A favor? What kind of favor would he need right now? I need you to take a genin team under you, Hiruzen said, send you Nawaki, Ichihafu Gaku, and might die, are you out of your mind? I practically hissed, I am a frontliner, my field of expertise will put them in danger I know, but I also know you are the only one able to protect this team, I see, he wanted me to keep the only other descendant of Hashirama safe. A few years ago, I offered you something something to protect the kids that Kanoha shoves into the battlefield, and what did you do? Nothing? I growled at his face, had you helped me get the materials and the money, our genin would have a better chance of survival, but like always you did nothing was Danzo right? I was starting to think he was. I know, I should have focused on that, but I didn't, here is an admitted, his tone sat and full of regret. I will take the team, I sighed, if I rejected this Tsunade would hate me forever, and so would Nawaki. How old are the rest anyway, I know Nawaki is 12, but the rest? Ichihafu Gaku is 10, he is similar to you a prodigy, then there is Mito Dai, he is 14 years old, and is also the dead last of his class for 5 years in a row, he repeated the graduation exam multiple times and in the end, managed to graduate only using Tejutsu, but even on that his skills are below the average, here is an answered, giving me their files. I will need a month at least off the field to give them some basic training, I informed him. I will give you the time you need, Hiruzen said. Very well, I will go and see them in person, I sighed. They are at the academy, waiting for you. Old bastard, he knew I was going to accept the professor my ass, more like the manipulator. In the shinobi world, everything could be numerated, for example in the data book I had the following scores. Ninjutsu equals 5 fifths to jutsu equals 5 fifths Jinjutsu equals 4.55 Intelligence equals 5 fifths Strength equals 5 fifths Speed equals 5 fifths Stamina equals 5 fifths Hand Seal equals 5 fifths, those were my shinobi scores, according to the Konoha databook, and they gave me a score of 39.5 out of 40, now these scores were well. It was best if you didn't rely on them, but they gave you a general idea of what you are dealing with and how strong someone is in general. Might die genin 14 years old. Ninjutsu equals 05. Tejutsu equals U Jinjutsu equals 05. Intelligence equals U Strength equals U Speed equals U Stamina equals 1.55. Hand Seal equals 05. Mito die total score equals 5.5 out of 40. The Chihafu Gaku genin 10 years old. Ninjutsu equals 3 fifths to Jutsu equals 3 fifths Jinjutsu equals 2 fifths Intelligence equals V Strength equals V Speed equals V Stamina equals V Hand Seal equals 3.55. The Chihafu Gaku total score equals 17.5 out of 40. Senju Nawaki Genin 12 years old. Ninjutsu equals V to Jutsu equals W Jinjutsu equals U Intelligence equals U Strength equals W Speed equals 2.55. Stamina equals 3 fifths hand seal equals V Senju Nawaki total score equals 17.5 out of 40. 
might die, it almost sounded like Guy Sensei, maybe he will father the green beast of the leaf. Alright time to meet my genin team Yi, I was not excited. As I approached my genin team, I could see Fugaku arguing with Nawaki, while Dai tried to cheer them up, with youthful stuff yeah, he is the father of Guy, hello brats, my name is before I could finish Fugaku interrupted me. Send you Raiden, the undead calamity of the leaf, you are well known across the nations, it is a pleasure to be under your care, Fugaku bowed, hm I didn't know I had a Cheha admirers. Nice and Nawaki grinned trying to hug me, but only received a kick to the face in return. I am not your family on the battlefield, I am your sensei, and your direct superior, on the field you will call me sensei, is that clear? I asked, and he nodded. A pleasure to meet you. Dai smiled, giving me a firm handshake, I know I am not the best at anything, but fear, not I will try my absolute best to help in every way I can, for I don't give up. So count on me. Okay, yeah, he is Guy's father alright. Now, how about you introduce yourselves to me, like this my name is Raiden, my favorite food is pizza, I love to read, and I hate wasps my dream is to stop wars and live a long boring but peaceful life. Training children was a complicated thing, especially with a team like mine. Nawaki had a god complex thinking himself unable to die, Fugaku was too proud to accept he was outmatched, and Dai was too optimistic, which made their personalities clash when it came to training. But with effort and some beatings, I managed to nail down the basics that Aburama had once taught me on them. Now my problem was, how to prepare them for war, the bases only helped if you had something over them, with nothing above their bases, my team was cannon fodder. They needed power, something special to survive, but what? And this is where it occurred to me what if I taught them something from my list of skills. My techniques, although coming from World of Warcraft, used chakra which theoretically indicated that they could be taught, of course, this assumption was based on the supposition that my abilities were not considered by the laws of this universe. But if this was as I thought, and I could really teach them something then, I could help them to survive, now, in this case, the question was. If I could teach them, what would I teach them without putting myself in harm's way? Resurrection and other such techniques were off the table, which still left a wide variety of powers that I could teach my students. Nawaki had the attitude of a paladin, Fugaku that of a rogue, and Dai that of a monk I think. This is all very good, but. Don't make plans without knowing if they are going to work, I mused to myself, my whole theory was based on the possible fact that my abilities were not unique to me, which I didn't know yet. Creating a clone, I began to test my theory. My clone would watch me use an ability and help me map the course of my chakra, to see how the technique worked internally with my chakra paths. Then, I would try to see how to translate the chakra map my clone and I had created, into functional hand signs, signs I would then teach to my students to see if my plan worked. Now, if this worked and I could actually teach my students my skills, I had to think very carefully about what I was going to teach them, because while I wanted nothing more than to ensure their survival, I had to consider the consequences of my possible actions. If I taught them too much, they would become Danzo's puppets in the future, or worse, they would be kidnapped by the other villages looking for a way to get my powers. Which led me to think, perhaps my plan was more harmful than helpful. Although, if I could map my abilities, I could also modify them and teach them weaker but equally useful versions. This would prevent Danzo or others from trying to attack them and give them a secret weapon to survive. Though out of my three students the only one I had no problem teaching was Nawaki, who by law was my younger brother. Maybe that was the best, just teaching Nawaki, who because of my marriage to Tsunade and my relationship with the clan was my family, yes. I guess that's for the best, I sighed, acknowledging that this was the only way to avoid the wave of political bullshit that would come to me if I taught anyone outside the Senju clan anything within my arsenal. Now the problem was, that if I did this what would I teach Dai and Fugaku? Fugaku was a genius, not at the level of Arachimaru or Tsunade, but a genius nonetheless, which would make it easy for me to teach him anything else, but Dai what he had in willingness to learn, he lacked in ability and power. 
Even in Tajutsu, which was arguably his strongest skill, he was appallingly bad. Perhaps I could double his Tajutsu training, or give him some boosting items, Hirazin didn't find me the money to mass produce them, but I have enough materials to craft them a few pieces each, that would give Dai a much needed power boost. Now the question was how to ensure my crafted items didn't fall on the wrong hands, ceiling, I could make a seal like that of the Hyuga. To burn the clothes to the ashes should they be captured or killed. I guess that settles it, my clone chuckled, we will try to map our abilities, and if it works we will teach Nawaki some paladin skills. Pretty much what I have planned so far, I nodded, creating a few extra clones, you three go a work the kids until they pass out, I ordered three of my clones, you five start mapping our abilities, and as for me I will start bird boxing my crafted items. Might die POV out of all the possible senseis I could have gotten, I got the best of the best, the undead calamity of the leaf, it gives me goosebumps every time I hear his moniker, which is why I was giving my 1 million percent at every training session we had, I would make him proud. For I knew I was useless, weak, dead weight on his shoulders, a cripple in the shinobi world, but no matter how much all of this was true, I was not going to let any of that define me. I was going to do my best, even if my best was the worst of the worst, I would never give up, that was my ninja way. Die, that voice, the youthful voice of sensei. What can I do for you sensei? I greeted with a smile. Is time to train, like you have never trained before, sensei smiled, I will train to death, and resurrect your ass, so that we can continue training, so get ready, for I will make sure you become a fine shinobi during these coming months. Such words of youthful wisdom, he still had hope in me, he definitely isn't like the rest, he truly is a magnificent sensei yes sir. At this point I was crying, I was happy. After studying hard the weaknesses of each of my students, I created a training plan for each one of them, for Nawaki extensive courses of chakra control and tojutsu, for Fugaku endurance and speed, and for Dai the hardest training, 18 hours a day, in which I made him vomit and bleed with pure physical training. Dai. He wasn't going to become the strongest ninja, at most he would become an ordinary jonin if my training worked. He was weak in every aspect, stamina, chakra levels, and ability to learn or understand things, the only thing he had was determination, a lot of it. But with determination alone, he would get nowhere, so I would push him to the very limits of his body, to get the most out of him, which wasn't very much. Dai, I know I've brought you to the brink of death several times this month, I sighed, sitting down next to him. But this is the only way to make sure you don't die on the battlefield, I hope you understand. Dai looked at me, and with a broad smile said, it's okay, I understand. I didn't excel at anything, I graduated late time the worst of the worst, but even so you haven't given up on me, so no matter what you put me through, I'll do my best to make you proud of me. I was three years older than him, this was very touching and uncomfortable at the same time. Dai, what do you know about the eight gates of death? I asked him, perhaps that technique was the only way to make him go beyond the limits of his body, and while it was true the eight gates would harm the user at every use, potions would make such technique viable, at least until the seven gate. The eight gates of death? Dai muttered back. The eight gates exist in order to limit the flow of chakra within an individual's body. It is said that every human cannot use any more than 20% of their body's full potential, both in chakra and physical might, it's the brain's way of protecting us from harming our body through overexertion and such. I explained to him, as he stared at me in awe, with training, we can learn to remove these limiters, Aka opening the gates. With each open gate, we are given access to more and more power and flow of chakra, thus increasing our overall might in combat. Sounds like a powerful technique, Dai whistled. It is, and it has a bunch of cons, using one or two gates has almost no consequences in the body, but anything about the fourth gate brings a lot of stress to our body, I nodded, the eighth one that one brings death upon the user, but seven and below don't, I grinned. Dai gasped in realization, you want me to learn that technique? Yes, I nodded, in fact, I will learn it with you, unlike him, I could use the 8 gate as much as I wanted, thanks to my soul stone. 
I will learn a jutsu alongside you. Dai grinned as I nodded, count me in sensei, I will not disappoint. Such enthusiasm, his attitude never fails to make me smile. Yes, but. Know that this technique will make you dependent on some of my support tools, potions, elixirs, and such to ensure he didn't die for overusing the gates in combat. I understand, Dai nodded. Also this technique is a supplement to your own power, the stronger your base is, the stronger the result of the gates will be, so push yourself harder and harder every day. Only then, this technique would make him a ninja to be feared. Yes. Dai smiled with determination. Then let's meet up tomorrow at training ground 3, I need to collect the scroll from the Hokage's office, I smiled, flickering out of the zone. At Hirazan's office, I found myself face to face with Danzo, who greeted me with a dark smile, Raiden how is your team going? I sighed, good, I think I will be able to join the battlefield in a month with them, if Dai learned to open at least one out of the eight gates, that boost would help him a lot. Good, Kanohe needs you in the front, not here. But you know here is in here early thinks things through, Danzo said. We can both agree on that, I hissed under my breath, remembering how he had fucked the crafting opportunity I brought to him years ago with his sick negligence. So, what can I do for you? Danzo inquired. I need the scroll of the eight gates of death, I answered. You plan to teach that kid that skill right? Danzo commented. I suppose that would help his unfortunate situation. That's the plan, I nodded. Very well, I don't see why not, Danzo nodded, handing me the scroll he knew I was coming for the scroll, that bastard had been keeping an eye on me. Thanks and by the way, I turned to look at him, if I find any of your puppets spying on me, I will cripple them so keep them away from me. At this Danzo laughed. I am not stupid boy, Danzo smirked. I wouldn't dare to spy on you the future hokage of the leaf, no that would be bad for our business relationship, the ones I am spying on, are your students after all, I have to keep them safe in other words, he was keeping an eye on them, just in case I taught them anything from my list of secret techniques, so that he could use them. Do what you want with Fugaku and Dai, for I was not gonna teach them anything from my skills, but leave Nawaki out, lest you want to lose your precious root before it even begins Danzo. I glared at him, the mere thought of him using Nawaki infuriated me, and if he did, I would kill him. And there it is the darkness of a true shinobi, the remorseless intent within your eyes to kill me, should I go against your words, Danzo clapped, you are everything here is and should be good. I will do as you command, Yandame Hokage. The fuck was going on? With the scroll in hand, I began to train and master the technique, without teaching Dai anything about the eight gates technique, as he would first have to double his current strength, so that the first gate wouldn't kill him, in my case I didn't have to do that. The technique was fairly simple to master, in fact, all you had to do to master it, was to have a strong enough physique not to die when using the technique. Of course, the technique needed some training, but if you had a good body, mastering the first seven gates was an easy task, now the eighth one, that one was the tricky one. It required perfect control over your body, and years of training to open it. In my case, in less than two months I had managed to open five out of the eight gates of death, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth one were still out of my immediate reach, mostly because I needed more training to master them. But even then. I estimated that in a year or two I would have this technique completely mastered. Sensei, Fugaku bowed, I completed the training course you had me do today. Icha has always so formal and diligent. Perfect, now rest for a bit while I check on Nawaki, I ordered, as I flickered over where Nawaki was. Sensei. Nawaki smiled, drenched in his own sweat. How am I doing? His training? A comprehensive course to master chakra control, for it, was the only way I would be able to entrust him some of my techniques that I had already mapped, chakra-wise. Good, but you still need to focus on how your emotions affect the flow of your chakra, he still had a long way before I had the chance to teach him anything from my arsenal. Sensei. Dai greeted me, his knuckles peeled showing a gory sight, as always he was overdoing his training as it was the only way to reach the heights he wanted. 
You are getting closer, I smiled, a bit more, and he would be able to open the first door without imploding from the sudden power burst. Let me heal that for you. With a smile I used flash heal on him, healing all his wounds immediately. This is our last week here right? Nawaki asked. Yes, I have exhausted all of our options to try and extend our stay, but the battlefront needs me, I sighed, but this last few months have been quite good for us, you three are far stronger than when I first started teaching you. I can't wait to be in the front helping our forces. Nawaki smiled, and immediately after I slapped him. War is no game, so stop being a glory-seeking idiot, excitement over such a thing, I suppose this was the naivety of the young. I I'm sorry, Nawaki said. There is no glory in war, nor happiness, only survivors and the corpses those left behind don't forget that, a never-ending cycle of futility. We do what we must for the sake of the leaf Fugaku who apparently had decided the rest I order him to take was optional said, as I glared at him, I I am resting sensei, I assure you hmm, I suppose talking can be considered a way of resting, you are safe for now Ichiha. As my students talked, I felt as a chakra signature approached our location, one of Danzo's Anbu, Senju Raiden, you and your team have been summoned to the front lines. Mandatory quest you have been called to help with the raging war in the elemental nations, defend your home and allies from invasion, while ensuring your own survival. Objective survive the second shinobi world war without Kanoha being destroyed. You will get plus 7 million e xp e r i e n c e plus 100,000 reputation with Kanahagakur, one item of your choosing world of warcraft related mount system bonus objectives kill one of the cages huh i was wondering when that quest was gonna pop understood in the end it seemed like i wasn't going to be able to teach dai how to open the first gate you have one week to get your affairs in order with that the anbu disappeared out of sight a week he says, I smiled, maybe I did have the time to teach him, and more. Meet me in two hours in training ground 8, I have a few things I will lend you. With that said, I flickered back to my house, where I would craft some useful items. In my house, I started to craft items, a few dozen flask of the titans, to increase my genin's HP for a somewhat long period of time, a few dozen flask of distilled wisdom, to increase their chakra pools for a few hours, a few dozen flask of supreme power to increase their overall power, and few dozen flasks of chromatic resistance to increase their resistance, and a few dozen flask of petrification to save their butts in tricky situations. All of this was rather expensive to craft. Not money-wise, time-wise, mostly because the ingredients needed for such items were super hard to find, most of them were according to my gathering map in Suna and I was so yeah. I also crafted some potions both for HP and chakra, now, to craft some soul bond rings, the soul bond, something I thought I didn't have, was in fact there, but it was harder to craft that way, meaning a ring without soul binding properties was four times cheaper to craft than one with soul binding properties, something I had discovered after crafting my second set of armor. That was not soul bound because it would have been crazy expensive to craft it that way. Three deadly lestrite bands should suffice, three arguably strong rings, cheap to craft and easy to add soul binding properties, this should suffice to keep the brats safe and above their level power-wise, in power terms, both Nawaki and Fugaku were high-level genins, with Dai being low-level genin. With this they would all get to tune in levels at the least. For the past two weeks, I trained with my team trying to teach them as much as I could before we left to fight the war, giving them the rings I had crafted, to ensure that my little pupils would have a better shot at this, at least when I wasn't around. Like every moment of peace in this ever-changing world, the day to go fight for Kanoha had arrived, and today I was leaving with my team, from Kanoha to the command point. Where the tactical commander of the central attack division was waiting for us, who would be my superior for the time being, my students were prepared, at least better than I was when I went to my first war, which gave me a little peace of mind about this entire ordeal. My orders upon arrival were clear and quite simple. I was to go to Omegakur to assist the allied forces battling inside Omegakur. 
A megaker was a place or rather the place that was being devastated in a catastrophic way by this war, since all the villages had basically decided to fight within the small country in a way to prevent catastrophic losses. Remember, trust no one. A cynical comment perhaps, and somewhat obvious if you think about it, but I had to tell them, Nawaki and I especially, for they needed to engrave in their heads that no one but me was their ally, at least during this war. Don't worry, Dai smiled, as always showing a cheerful demeanor in the face of everything. Don't worry? How could I not? That was my mission, to worry about them, if they died I would be the only one to blame for their demise, even though our ages were not so different, they were my students, and as long as that was the case, I would worry about them. Nawaki stay alert, the enemy could be near. Nawaki with a smile tilted his head, expanding his sensory area. As Fugaku looked around, Sensei, Fugaku said. Yes? I asked. This ring you gave me, what happens to it if I die? Fugaku asked, clearly worried that the enemy was going to steal the ring after killing him. Nothing, the ring you all have is special, with a smile. I began to explain vaguely how I had planned about this specific scenario. The ring you guys have has a special seal that prevents anyone but you from benefiting. If an enemy were to take them off say from your corpses, they would go from being a weapon to a cheap piece of jewelry, so don't worry, no enemy will be able to use them. Fugaku sighed with relief, my clan wanted me to die for the ring you had given me if necessary, I am glad to know that if I die, I will not be dishonoring my clan by giving power to the enemy forces. Nawaki looked at me, and with a smile asked, can you create other things like this? Yes, and I won't. I need a lot of money and materials to do so, creating them without reason is stupid, especially when I have to make sure my creations don't fall into the hands of my enemy or some of my allies. And the scrolls you gave us to summon potions and the like? Dai asked. Those? Yes, but only if they have one of the potions out before they die, since the scroll only works on your blood and if I allow it. A summoning seal that had a permission to use seal above it, which I could authorize from a distance or deny, preventing or accepting access to my potions. Oh then I'll guard the scrolls with my life. Dai declared with such excitement that a beautiful rainbow and sunrise appeared behind him. We're almost there, ending the conversation I said, as I focused on the mission at hand. Expanding my sensory area, I could feel, one. 2. 1030 enemies, 10 kilometers away from us, they were waiting for us most certainly, in 2 minutes we will be ambushed, you 3 make formation 4, and fight as a unit while I take care of them, remember alone you are weak, united you are strong. Nawaki, Dai and Fugaku nodded in agreement. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, like the alarm of a clock, the shower of shurikens fell upon us, no less than a hundred shurikens I thought, with a sigh, I closed my eyes and sent the barrage of shurikens flying back at them with an air-style jutsu, then using blink, I moved to the center of the enemy formation as I whispered, arcane explosion, with a single use of my arcane explosion. 24 of the 30 enemies dropped to the ground dead, their skin scorched by the arcane power of my attack. This is impossible. One of the enemy ninjas who had survived only because he had been too far out of range of my blast, cried out in fear, slowly walking back. You flatter me, teleporting behind him using shadow step, I whispered as cutting his head off in one swift motion. The last five survivors trembled in fear seeing how the ambush was turning out to be, and in a last minute decision decided to flee. A wise decision I had to admit, but a little too late to be running, creating five clones, I looked at them the fleeing ninja with a dull interest, as my clones pulled a tanto from their backpacks and said, death grip. The attack worked as intended, pulling them towards my clones, without escape the last five enemy ninja died tasting the edge of my sword. So, how many you guys killed? I asked, turning to see my genin team. How many? We didn't even get to fight. Nawaki protested. Such power Fugaku muttered. Impressive it took you 20 seconds to kill 30 enemies die at it in awe. Soon after that, my poor genins started to throw up. I guess the awe of my power stopped their first reaction to seeing a human die. 
When I arrived in Omegakar I reunited with Tsunade, who hugged me tightly the moment she saw me arrive at her post. After that, together with my team, we began to help the allied forces in every turn to fight against the enemy, and. The truth was, it was surprisingly easy. War by no means is easy mentally speaking, but every ninja that I would face would die with a single attack, too if they were above average. It was surprisingly anticlimactic to kill enemies so easily, it almost made the entire ordeal feel unreal, like a video game you passed, and now have the cheats for, it was strange to say the least. As for my students, well, considering most of the enemies were incredibly weak compared to me, I let them fight some of the fights, with me closed just in case something happened, it was educational for them and safe, because no matter how strong the enemy was compared to my students, if I was near his only option was defeat. Most of the time, however, when I could, I would be with Tsunade, talking, fighting, and sharing stories, times like this made me realize I really cared about her, she was probably my one and only friend in this world, Hiruzen was at one point my friend, but now all I had was her, perhaps with time I would learn to love her beyond friendship. Nawaki has grown stronger, Tsunade said, looking at Nawaki train. It was my plan to make him strong, to ensure his survival, after all, his death was one of the many breaking points that drove Tsunade to her downfall. When do you think this war will end? Tsunade asked, her eyes distant and somewhat tired. I don't know, it always comes down to resources as long as the villages have resources, they will fight, even if they are losing, I answered, after all, war was a bloody business. Nawaki wants to be Hokage, Tsunade smiled, perhaps he will be able to fulfill grandpa's dream. Perhaps, I nodded, after all, him surviving could very well change the entire world. Raiden Sama. Sama, since when I get called Sama. Yes? I turned around to face the person that was calling me. Orders from the command post, you are to part west right now. The trembling Chunin informed me. What are people talking about me that they tremble by just talking to me? Very well, I sighed, standing up. As if predicting I was about to call my team, the Chunin stopped me, which in turn earned him a small glare, sorry Raiden Sama, but you are to come alone, orders from the Hokage himself. Hiruzen had broken our deal, that old bastard, I hissed under my breath flaring my chakra. How could he our deal was I was to decide if I parted with my team or not. It's okay, Tsunade sensing my inner rage, hug me, I will take care of the brats for you. At this, I snorted, thanks, please don't let Jureya corrupt them. Never, Tsunade winked. After saying my goodbyes, I ran towards the west post. Wondering, what kind of mission or plan did Hiruzen had that I had to do it alone, he had to know by now that normal ninjas were at best a nuisance to me, and that, so that's what it is, the old bastard wants me to fight a cage, after all, cages are the only ones that could possibly pose a threat to my team even with me around. Raiden reporting for duty, I said entering the command post, only to find Hiruzen was not there, which only helped to add more salt to the injury of our relationship. Raiden Sama, my name is Yumugi Yamanaka, I apologize for the sudden summon, but the Hokage said were he not to be available you were our best bet, smart of him, though his students together could take a cage too. It's okay, I sighed, so who do I have to kill? Well, we are not aiming for killing so much as for survival, Yumugi sighed, the third Rakage is pushing us back, and we can barely halt his advances on the west post, which is why we needed a cage level ninja. The third rakage, this was the point where I lost control of my chakra, so much so that several ninjas inside the command post fell unconscious, thanks to the sheer pressure of my chakra, I am glad you called me here, I declared, reining my chakra back to normal. I will help you deal with that man, don't worry. At last, my opportunity to kill one of the bastards behind the death of Tabarama sensei had presented itself in a silver platter, and unlike the wedding, I would be free to kill him, I was beyond excited with this unique opportunity, but even then, I would have to be careful, because bastard or not, he was a cage. Iisc, Yumugi shivered. I will wait for my orders, I informed the shaking Yamanaka, so please tell me as soon as the third rakage appears, I will deal with him my way. 
As you wish, Raiden Sama, Yamugi, who by now had recovered, nodded. Third Rakage POV they had sent send you Raiden to Kanoha's west post, it seems they wanted us to clash in combat, good. Only I could deal with the brat, according to the reports, he had been killing hundreds of ninjas with such ease he might as well be swatting flies out of his way, with this change of his post, I would have the opportunity to stop one of Kanoha's strongest weapons before it damaged us beyond repair. B. I shouted. Yes. B flickered beside me. Have our sensors be on the alert for Senju Raiden, if he appears my orders are clear, flee on side and wait for me. I will deal with him, only me, or B if he lets the Hachibi take control could possibly face Raiden. But considering the Hachibi would most likely attack us, it was best if I was the one to deal with him. As you wish, be nodded. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.